der Geruch von Motoröl in der Luft. Die vorgeheizten Reifen sorgen für die richtige Brise in der Nase. Und wir sind in der Eifel. Es ist ADAC, 24 Stunden Qualifying-Zeit. Und wir freuen uns ganz besonders darauf, dass Sie dabei sind, dass wir gemeinsam bei den nächsten zwei Tagen für richtig viel Rennaction in der Eifel sorgen werden. Ja, das 24 Stunden Qualifiers. Ich glaube, mich kennt man mittlerweile, wenn man den Kanal eingeschaltet hat. Bei die junge Lady neben mir, die ist neu bei uns im Team Weltem. Herzlich willkommen in der Eifel. Hallo Leute, ich grüße euch hier neben dem Master of Moderation. Mein Name ist Meltem und ich unterstütze heute den lieben Patrick und greife ihn so ein bisschen unter die Arme. Weil ich habe gehört, da muss man mal frischen Wind reinbringen und das ist heute meine Aufgabe. Wir sind mal gespannt, wie schnell der kleine Tornado neben mir die Boxengasse hoch und runter unsicher machen kann. Aber wir haben, um einfach auch zu den nackten Fakten zu kommen, 128 Autos, die heute Morgen schon ins Qualifying hineingegangen sind. 124 haben sich qualifiziert, zweimal Audi in der ersten Startreihe. Das war nach den ersten Metern. Also es ist ein Vorgeschmack für das, was uns heute und uns morgen erwartet. Und natürlich zum großen Highlight des 24-Stunden-Rennen dann hier in ein paar Wochen, wenn die Eifel, wenn die grüne Hölle richtig am Weg ist. Meldem, was erwartest du denn von dem größten Autorennen der Welt? Also ich muss echt sagen, ähm, ein Rennen mit so vielen Klassen auf einer Strecke gibt es nur hier. Und ich darf ein Teil davon sein, mit euch zusammen das Ganze begleiten. Also ich bin unfassbar gespannt. Das heißt ja jetzt noch nichts, das heißt morgen ist auch noch mal äh, Qualifiers und dann geht es ja am 1. und 2. Juni richtig zur Sache. Also wir sind gespannt, würde ich sagen. Wir sind gespannt. So nicht nur wir sind gespannt, sondern natürlich auch. Yeah, good afternoon, John, and everyone else. Uh, yes, indeed, and uh, for the first time ever, uh, John, the N24 qualifiers uh, now count towards that championship, which is, uh, you know, it's NLS, it's called now, but it is still organised by VLN. I think with some of the older schools still call it uh, to VLN, um, which is um, which is great for the first time. And it's I've always thought it a little bit of a misnomer, as you think of John, it's calling it the, when they didn't actually count for anything. It's just. Uh, sort of get your eye in, isn't it? Sort of staying match fit, ready for, for that big race in May. And these two this weekend, notably, we've got 1.1 more kilometres to drive because we use the full Grand Prix circuit to the bottom of the hill. Although we used to have Hook uh, rather than the full Mercedes AMG Arena. So the uh, situation is that our lap times are a, a little bit longer uh, than what we'll have seen for the early rounds. I've got a couple of house notices to come up. We had the, what was supposed to have been a two hour qualifying run to set the grid this morning. Uh, as uh, for, for this race, tomorrow we will have the top qualifying, which means we'll have cars going off one at a time, separated by a few seconds, and we'll bring that to you live as well. But in the qualifying this morning, there was a couple of incidents, which meant there was uh, an awful lot of barrier repair, so we didn't get anywhere near lap record pace this morning. Uh, and as a result... I'm afraid we have uh, lost one car, uh, that being the Hyundai uh, of 
uh, the Vilhart Rika Kim Drale I, Hyundai uh, i30N. They had a big off at Vipperman. You don't have small offs at Vipperman, uh, necessitating a lot of barrier repair. And that car can't be repaired, so we will not see that car this weekend. So strike off the number 486 from the, what is it, 130 that we had on the original entry list. Although I found a car this morning that I um, couldn't find on the entry list. We'll come to that later. A um, couple of slaps on the wrist. The uh, BMW, the uh, Family Prince Crawl car, the 207 disregarding a code 60 and also the number four mercedes amg gt3 same offense now they've been put to the back of the starting grid for disregarding the uh disregarding the code 60s we've also had a code 60 disregard the pro sport bmw number 178 that will have to do a drive through at the end of lap one so i presume that that will be, uh, that must have been a more egregious braking. And a couple of other cars that had their fastest laps cancelled, the 123 GT3 Cup 992 car, it's one of the Cup 2 cars, of which there are many, uh, speeding in the pit lane. Uh, so that lost its fastest qualifying. And someone got pushed back as well, uh, some positions five places back now this is the uh, very interesting there's an additional couple of drivers in this um in the number 55 ktm crossboard gt2 uh, which was quickest in its class i think it might be the only car in that class actually this morning and uh, that uh, has got sebastian fettel's brother in it um who has driven here before of course he drove for uh, get speed if i'm not mistaken so they've been pushed five uh, positions back great here so Patrick uh, down at the front of the grid speaking in uh, German at the moment to some of the drivers at the sharper end of the grid uh, Peter this as I said is uh, is absolutely crucial for teams to get a little bit of testing in as much as anything else testing on the Nordschleife well you can go and do some of the days etc etc but it's not like the um, it, it's it's not there's nothing like having 130 cars out there and some of these guys haven't driven for for quite a while I was listening this morning when um I think it was Chris Mace was saying he hasn't uh, driven here in a year uh, since the since the main race last year because not all of these drivers do the rest of the VLN. So, uh, you know, this is absolutely crucial for them. Yeah, but of the, the course they'll, they'll have spent the winter playing Forza Motorsport, won't they? Uh, learning the circuit. I jest, I jest. But obviously simulator work. But no, you're absolutely right, John. There's there's nothing like actual competition, is there, to, to be out there with it all around. We, you say you can do as many test days, as many simulations, and all teams do all sorts of variations and permutations of that, these things, these days. But there's nothing like physical, actual competition, the heat of the moment, the battle. Something going wrong in qualifying, as you say, just even, yeah. even something as simple as, as a puncture that you pick up and it costs you time. Because it's such a long lap around here, you know, we're talking you know, eight minutes is it always the, the ADAC's sort of magic time. They want that not to be beaten. Other people have other ideas, of course, because they're racing drivers. But you, know, you get a puncture at sort of, you know, let's say Hatzenbach, the beginning of a lap. You've got an awful long way to go keeping out of everybody else's way with a car that's, that's you know, d disabled, as it were, and needs to get it back. So it, it can, there's nothing like having that real-time experience. And I think Bruce and I have said it many times, I'm sure you have, John, on, on this on this program, of it's data collection. It's data gathering. It's information all the time. It's experience. 
Did you, in, in your times racing here, and you raced here several times in the uh, the 24-hour race, was there a test stroke qualifying type weekend then, or did you just jump in uh, to one of the, the VLN stroke NLS races earlier in the season? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you, if you look on the, the internet, you'll find all the photographs of that, and they're, they're in black and white, of course. Uh, some of the earlier ones are sepia. Uh, but no, there, there, there was I like the nice watercolours. <laughs> uh, exactly, exactly, yes. Yes, 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 yes. hand hand. Tinted, yes, I know the yes. ones. Um, but yes, uh, I think lithographs and more of them. Um, but no, there, there, there weren't test days in that way. Um, you know, and, and of course, there wasn't also then the advent of, you know, I jest about Forza Motorsport, but you know, you, you can go, you can get an idea of a circuit, of a layout. You, it won't teach you lap times or bumps or bits and bobs and all the, the real greater depth, but it will get you to know what's coming up next. So you can have that mind map of knowing what's coming up next, but it, it's nothing like the, the real thing um, so no I mean my my first ever session here was a, a qualifying session for a 24 hour straight yeah. in it was and bear in mind in those Chris days John it was long ago we yeah. had I believe I can't remember the exact figure we need to look it up but it was over 260 over cars I think 240 or 260 cars the, the first one I went to to do commentary uh, was 2007, and there was 200, I think there was 230 cars by the time we got round to the start. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, and remember also, John, that in those in those those, those halcyon days, and I'm, I'm going to leave it for the back when I was doing it, you... Um, You'd go and qualify, and that there wasn't quite the ring permit and you know, the DMB license you have now. Uh, but you would you would be allowed to start the formation lap, okay? And cars that didn't make it around the full GP circuit for whatever reason, if you were on the cusp, you got to take part in the race. And basically, where it's now. So you were sitting in the pit lane just in case. No, no, no. You went you went out in the field as well at the back. And we, we had this once, we had an issue in qualifying, but we'd done a sufficient time, but we hadn't done enough uh, laps, as it were, so we'd done a set of time, that was fine. So we were told we could start the formation lap at the back, and basically when you got to what is now Sabine, Sabine Smith's curve, where you go right and go back into the pits, or left, you go on to Hats and Back, there would be a marshal there who would have a message from radio control, uh, race control, and it was on a radio, and he would literally point left or right as to which way you went. And you, in the world. we got to it, and he happened to point left, uh, which meant, right, that's it, go and join, you're in the race. Otherwise, you do the formation lap and go home, have an early bath. <laughs> can, you, uh, can you imagine that? And that's only, yeah, okay, it is 30 years ago. I'll shut up. I'll get my coat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello to James C.H., who has got in touch with us via at RSL underscore studio, which is the best way to do it. We're using the uh, hashtag... RSL underscore N24 this weekend. Hello to James. He said, I'm visiting the Nürburgring for the first time, loving every minute of it. Um, I see what you mean about this re region and took your recommendation from the other year to come in the back way. Genuinely never had a better weekend. This is on a part with Le Mans Classic last weekend. And driving down there is great fun uh, as well marvellous stuff hello to you all who are joining us uh, via uh, radio-show.co.uk and all the other official channels this is world feed and tv and audio together on once again we have our philosophical discussion at the start of these events if i can't see the cars are they actually there grid is just starting to be cleared however there's an awful lot of people on the grid in beautiful weather we uh, have started earlier um or uh, yeah earlier i think than ever before in terms of the season here and last weekend with those two races we got through those uh, pretty well unscathed in terms of weather if you were watching last weekend, by the way, Robert Wiggins had a very nasty incident at the end of the lap where his Hyundai Elantra ended over the barriers. Ten-minute board being shown at the front of the grid, by the way. Uh, 
Robert was taken to hospital and given all the usual checks. Very important for those of you that don't know, uh, Robert uses hand controls after his big Indy car accident. And therefore, of course, it's very difficult for him to explain if he's hurting anywhere because he doesn't always have the feelings in the parts of his body that might have been injured. So extreme care taken. And he was kept in over the weekend for observations. Now back in the US and recovering. And Brian Hurt at Autosport keeping us all updated last weekend and thank you to the team uh, for that the uh, cars in the second group just starting to line up there will be three minutes between each of the groups so effectively a staggered start if you're new to all this and i can uh, see that it's already starting to clear the grid. All right, Peter, you're starting the race. Um, what's going through? Your, you'll, you'll be in Group 1, of course. You would have always been in Group <laughs> one, 1 at the sharp end of, of the field. What What's happening with the driver and the team at the moment? Uh, initially, it, it's, the, it's the age-old thing we say about uh, sports car racing, isn't it? Stay out of trouble and stay out of the pits. Um, you, you do get your advantages. One, one of the advantages of this circuit and the nature of it in that starting group order you get, that the the SP9 cars, so the GT3 cars, I think we've got 28 in this race, John? Um, yeah, only 27 went 27, out this okay. morning. All right. Yeah. Um, what they do have is, though, they have the opportunity on that first. They get about a lap in before they start to yes. catch traffic, a lap and a half. So if that is the only time they're going to get to do that. So it's that age-old balance, isn't it, John, of the driver wants to get as far up as you can. You get the opportunity on the first the first corner, make a good start, etc. But you, you're amongst your peer group for the only bit of the race. So about, about 10, 10, 12 minutes, roughly, of the four hours, you're amongst your peer group. Everyone else is in the, in the same, same position. After that, you're in traffic, and then you've got huge speed differentials on a very narrow circuit. Just very quickly, John, I'll have a bit of news in just for us. Um, they're a bit late getting the update on this, but the um, onboard cameras, I've uh, just got the list of who we've got. Um, so we've got number four, uh, Mercedes AMG Bilstein. That'll be starting from the back of the lead group. Indeed. After that, uh, after that penalty. Always popular. Uh, we've got 16, the Shearer Sport PHX Audi with Frank Stippler, uh, Christopher Mies. That's the pole sitting car, isn't Ricardo Feller? Yeah. That's got a, a camera. Falcon Motorsports, one of their Porsches, uh, number 30. Both of them, actually. Yeah, number 33 and 44. Uh, correct, you're absolutely right. 33 and 44 both got cameras on. Always worth watching. Uh, 72 is the um, BMW uh, M team with uh, Daniel Harper, Max Hesse and Charles Wirtz. Daniel Harper and Max Hesse, of course, being part of the now disbanded um, BMW junior team. Junior team, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we jump a little bit, a few classes. Then we've got uh, 227, which is the um, E-Fuel team Greisman uh, Toyota GR Supra. That's got it on. On board, um, and there were just a couple more, John. Which I'll just uh, just so we know uh, what to look out for. They obviously, spread it down the field. Um, Did I say the Glickenhaus had one on? Uh, I didn't. Uh, eight or s what do they run normally? Eight or seven, don't they? Um, no, I haven't got that. Um, I've got it on eight three zero eight, which is Mark Bassing, Bassing, uh, Manuel Luke, and uh, Mikel Zacona in the uh, Hyundai. Elantra, TCR, and I think that's that's it for on board. It is, as I've got notified so far. Uh, so, our defending champions from last year making history, Frigadelli Racing Team. Uh, they have added Nico Varone and Luca Ludwig to their team, adding uh, those two to Daniel Kylvitz and Felipe Fernandez Lazar. Now, it's only the latter two that are showing up on the entry list at the moment, but uh, we're told from the team that it will be uh, Nico and Luca Ludwig who will be running in this race. Uh, three BMWs, two from Rover Racing, one from BMW Team RMG. That's the one that Pete has just mentioned. Rafa Marcello coming into the number 98 BMW with Max Martin, Marco Wittmann and Sheldon von der Linde, Dries Van Tor and Augusto Farfus in the 99. The guys we've mentioned uh, in the other one, AMG, five factory supported entries this weekend. Haupt and Get Speed split them. Maxi Goat, uh, Daniel Honkadea, 
Arjun Miney and Lucas Stoltz are aboard the number three. Miney also listed on the number four car with Michele Bretta, Frank Bird and Yusuf Awega. Uh, Mick Grenier and Adam Christodoulou uh, are double-ended in the Get Speed cars. Grenier alongside Lucas R and Christodoulou in the eight car with Phil Ellis and Fabian Schiller uh, in the ninth. Uh, he's also... Uh, Christodoulou also listed behind the wheel of the number 30 with Mauro Engel and Jules Gounon. Uh, SP9 Pro Class Falcon Motorsports Dynamic Manti and Herbert. That's the Porsche entries. That's Julian Andlau, Klaus Backler, Sven Müller and Alicia Picarello will be taking turns across the weekend in the number 33 Falcon, where Müller is also uh, with the 44 alongside Tim Heinemann, Nico Mensel and Martin Raginger in that number 44 machine, both having on boards. DTM teammates uh, in the same car this weekend. Uh, Ian Chan Guvin and Thomas Prining are in the 911 Manti EMA Porsche. And Herbeth have got Dennis Olsen, Vincent Kolb and Robert Renard between the wheel. Now, this interesting, um, that's Olsen back in a Porsche, of course, um, although he's a, fa he's a factory Ford driver now. Uh, and he will be racing against uh, some of his uh, Ford teammates, of course, Chris Mace and Fred Favish, who are both part of the Share of Sport Phoenix lineup. John, um, just a little thought for you about the Ferrari, yeah? Yeah. That obviously won the 24 hour last year. Um, yeah. It's missing, of course, David Pittard, as part of that lineup, who won it last year, who's moved over to the yeah. number 34. Aston Martin Varger, the new GT3 yes, Evo. Uh, yeah, now. Yeah. Trin Solutions and Vulcan Horse running that car. The driver lineup in that, John. Christian Krohn's, Jakob Gomeziak, David Pittard, Nikki Team. Nikki Team. Yeah. Now, is that, I would have got strong... to that. I was going sorry, my apologies. Sorry, I was, sorry. I was just being a little late right. to the Ferrari bit, but what a lineup there. And there's a little project yeah, that uh, David Pittard uh, he very kindly sent me. Uh, a voice note from the paddock last night, can you believe? Uh, uh, saying he would do, then for Paul Rush doing it late and forgetting. Um, and he's got a little project called Back to Back. Go and figure out what that might be. Okay. <laughs> Two different cars. Um, it's Chris Harser and Dennis Marshall behind the wheel of the number 15 Audi. Uh, Mies also listed in the 16 with Frank Stippler and Ricardo Feller. Five Aston Martin entries. The one that Pete's just mentioned is the 34. Uh, that is an Evo. So that is the new shape car. Um, that, as I would think you would say that was their lead car. Um, Fanatec GT World Challenge America, powered by AWS race winner Chandler Hull, is aboard the number 35. That's in the Pro Am class. Lamborghini's got a couple of cards. Cars. Conrad Motorsport have one car in, as does the Abt Sports line. Kelvin von der Linde, Mark Lomapelli, and Jordan Pepper, who were on the wrong side of the 0 0.041 of a second finish last weekend. I suspect they won't be uh, lifting off at any stage. Uh, lap records here. Um, now, this, although it's qualifying, the, I reckon this counts uh, as a race. Oh, I'll just pause for a second because we have got the national anthem play. So the car's fired up and ready to go. Uh, as I say, I reckon this is a race. So the lap record um, has been, has stood for quite some time. Um, I reckon this goes, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you don't mind, uh, Peter, but as far as a lap record, I think we're still at uh, the 817, aren't we? 
Well, um, it's a very good point, but there was... A, on, there was... on this one, 25.378. Right, that might be the point then, because Nicky Team did a sub eight minute didn't he in that was a qualifying in VLN so that was the, that was that's 1.1 mm. kilometers shorter was it well, didn't he do one on the last lap of the race when he crossed the line with about 30 seconds to go and typical Nicky team rather than rather than uh, blending it out a bit and he did another lap and just to prove the point he set the fastest lap of the race uh, I will I will check I, you, I, stand by call yeah because I've got those listed in a different file the only sub one that I know of um, is the 757 um, 4, which was the Audi on pole position in 2014 for VLN 37. That's the only one that I've got on the official list here. Okay. Um, however, I've got um, Estra, actually, it's going to be Estra, isn't it, in the McLaren, the 8 to 10. No, no, it's not. It's not. It's Raffaele Marcello. I knew that. I was talking about that the other day. I'm an absolute idiot. It's Rafa Marcello uh, back to 19. Uh, 8 or 9 or 5. My apolog apologies. Um, I was looking in the wrong list there. That's the fastest race lap that I have on this configuration. Cars are rolling, by the way. You probably worked mm -hmm. that out. We run all the way down to the Goodyear hairpin. That's where the extra kilometre and a half, rather than cutting through at turn three, what's called the Ravenel Corner, in deference to the main sponsor of the ADAC 24 hours this year, Ravenel ADAC 24 hours of the Nürburgring. Uh, beautiful weather conditions could not be any bonnier um, if it tried. Norbert Howe down in the pit lane with uh, Patrick Simon. I think that might be the first time that I've seen Norbert Howe without a black boss leather jacket on. John, as a matter of interest, we say how things have changed in time. Do you know what the original lap record was? Oh, <laughs> on, on which circuit? That's the problem. Well, well, the, 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 20, the 27 to 39 original track, 1927 oh, right, to 39, okay. yeah. A, a day and a half. It's only 11 minutes 48. Yes, I know. Yeah, and a Bugatti yeah. Type 51, a Kili Vazi, 1931 German Grand Prix. Um, it's nuts. It, th this place has changed a lot uh, in terms of the, the layout of the circuit and also uh, more work and infrastructure done over the winter with some more new tarmac, smoother tarmac being laid down through the Foxhall and that was always quick anyway but it was scary quick and bumpy now it's uh, scarily quicker and less bumpy um, amazing um, the sim racing bar steward says how easy is the N24 to do for those of us in the UK compared to Le Mans are there official campsites yes there are there's places to stay around sometimes you've got to go out a bit but there's you know in this day of, of renting places out and it's a great drive down. It really is. Daniel Priest says, I was glad to hear Jimmy Broadbent on Midweek Motorsport this week. Hope his team's presence in the series brings more eyes to the NLS and to the 24 hours. Uh, if you go to RadioLamont.com, uh, Jimmy was on right at the end of a very, very busy, it was very good. He hung around for us because he stayed at the Nürburgring this week. And he... had a chat with us down the line he's in car 150 which is the pool sitter in gt4 and they won last weekend with a uh, his teammate steve with a fantastic last lap overtake in a place where you normally don't overtake and it was uh bite Kavisa that he overtook as well so very experienced driver Steve Brown at the wheel for that. Um, Mikhail Sharadin with Jimmy Broadbent and Manuel Metzger as well in that team for the Nürburgring uh, Ravenol 24 hours. So the starting group uh, two has already started moving. And here are your starting drivers then in the 
number one, it is Luca Ludwig. Frank Bird in the Mercedes number three. Lucas Stoltz in the Mercedes number four, coming from the back of the first group, remember. That's good. We'll see a lot of Lucas Stoltz's on board, I fancy, for this. Back in uh, Porsche overalls for Dennis Olsen in the Herbeth number five, which also has owner, driver, well, Robert Renard, isn't it, who's in that one. Uh, and Hubert Haupt will start the number six, AMG, the Lamborghini Huracan, number seven, it'll be Danny Sufi, Adam Christodoulou in the number eight Mercedes, in the number nine, it will be Fabian Schiller in the Mercedes. Um, some odd numbers now from other groups. Uh, number 10, it'll be Emi Sari. That's one of the Golfs. We get back to the GT3s. Marcel Markovic will start the number 11 Mercedes. The Audi R8, number 15, it'll be the Rabbit, Christopher Hasse. Ricardo Fella will start the car she has with uh, Chris Meese and Frank Stippler, the Audi R8. Number 16. Number 17, as that just jumps away from my eyes. It'll be Nico Bastian in the Aston Martin. Patrick Kolb will start the Lion Speed number 24, the very pretty red and white uh, 911 that he shares with uh, Patrick Niederhauser and Indy Donji. Uh, Jordan Pepper will start in the Lamborghini number 27. That's the dark apt coloured car. It will be Julian Andlau in the number 33, Falcon Porsche. And the 34, Aston Martin, is David Pittard, winner last year, of course. Patrick Assenheimer. Patrick Assenheimer will start the number 35, Aston. And Anders Burkhardt. Uh, will start the number 36. And I'll just pick out a couple of the more major ones. Uh, the second of the Falcon car, Sven Müller, will start the 44. Arno Klassen will start number 50 Audi. Marvin Dienst will start the number 54 Porsche. Max Hoffer will start the KTM Crossbow. It's the leader in its class, the number 55 car that starts from P25. Um, I'm just going through a couple of the others, see if there's any ones that are out of kilter there. Uh, Augusto Farfus will start the number 99 BMW and Mark Wittman will start the 98. And now going into the final part of this to see if there's any of the big numbers. Do we do the clicking house? I can't remember seeing the clicking house on there. Uh, Baitskavisa will start the BMW GT4 G82, the 146. And Manuel Metzger will be starting the Paul sitting car in GT4. It's the number 150. So some big names. Uh, in the cars at the start of the race, as you might imagine. Hello, if you are just joining us, I'm John Hindoff in the Global Broadcast Centre for Radio Show Limited at RSL underscore studio, hashtag RSL underscore N24. And Peter Snowden is alongside me. And right now, you're out on the Nord Schleifer, Peter. You're in that lead group. Are you talking to the pits? Are you just immersing yourself in what your job is and what the track conditions are? I think probably the other way around. I probably think the pits are talking to you more, just giving you conditions and whatever. But you've done so much prep now. In some ways, some teams are pretty quiet now. They'll just let you get on with it. It's, this is when the when the talking stops and the action begins, isn't it? So a little less conversation, a bit more action now. Um, you just mentioned the clicking house, John. Um, I'm not wanting to uh, ring any alarm bells, but I can't see it, it anywhere. Um, no, that's I not to say it's either. not there, and I, I say I'm not trying to, but it's just, it's eluding me at the moment, uh, and I'm either being very dumb or um, I just can't see it. And unfortunately, until the, it goes green, we don't get the sector times out on... Exactly. 
uh, out on the out on the track. They qualified. They're the only car in SPX, but their their qualifying was good enough for the second row. So they should be right at the sharp end, Peter. Um, so keep an eye open for them at the front end of the field. They're running that very distinctive light blue colour. Um, so that's the car to look for if you're around the circuits listening in as well. I've just checked oh, on my tracker as well, John, as well as just a printed entry list. I've actually gone onto the GPS tracker yeah. we have, and I can't see it listed there either. Okay. Uh, and you say Norman's distinctive 90-something, one of its numbers, isn't it? 906, yeah. 908, 907, around about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're normally right up the top end, aren't they? Um, yeah. Of the numbers, uh, I'll... It's 702, isn't it, that it... Uh, no, You're it's right. not 702. It is, it's there. Uh, no, it is. You're right, 706. So it is, it's listed, 706. Right. Well, it, I, is, I, it is listed, and I'm just going to have a look. It's on. The, it is. In, it is there. It's in the group. Okay. So it's out okay. on track. That's it's going to take Cashel Shen now. So there you go. Okay. We can all, we can all stand down. Glickenhouse fans, you can relax. Phew. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, however, and, and this will hurt Peter with his Aston Martin um, connections. Uh, we have lost another car, and it is the Pro Sport Racing. 176. So the Pro Sport BMW, Pro Sport still running, um, I think, three different manufacturers with the Hyundais in the front wheel drive class as well. So that's uh, the GT4 BMW, entry, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. 176 uh, oh. has withdrawn after an accident in qualifying, too badly damaged to be repaired on site. That was the other car that was in trouble at uh, 25.378 miles and Malagato have got a green hell 25.378 there are a few of those left Peter Kate who I am sure will be driving in the die Nürburgring Nordschleife die längste Rennstrecke der Welt eins der top rennen was wir in unserem Leben einmal gefahren haben das 24 Stunden Rennen ist für mich persönlich das härteste und auch schwierigste Rennen der Welt. Die größte Sportveranstaltung Deutschlands. Die Hütte ist brechend voll. Das wird eine ganz große Party. Die Ampel ist grün. Es geht los. Es geht rein in die grüne Hölle. Sport vom Allerfeinsten. Und ich glaube, der, der wird sich jetzt entwickeln. In jeder Phase des Rennens geht es um jede Sekunde, um jedes Detail. Und diese Bilder immer wieder faszinieren. Oh, da verliert das Auto. Achtung, der nächste Einschlag. Mann, oh Mann, oh Mann, oh Mann. Lecco mio. Ich zuck da immer zusammen. Also ich habe ja im Motorsport schon alles erlebt, aber das habe ich ja noch nie erlebt. Und hier, das sind die Bilder, auf die wir gewartet haben. Das ist der absolute Hammer. Also ganz im Ernst, die Fans auf der Nürburgring Nordschleife sind ganz, ganz, ganz besonders. Blutdruck, würde ich sagen, ne? aber ansonsten geht es mir gut. Was für ein Moment hier in der Boxengasse, alle liegen sich in den Armen, es wird gefeiert. Und jeder, der bis jetzt rausgekommen ist, war begeistert und spricht davon, was er hier Tolles bislang erlebt. So the build-up to the 2024 Ravenol ADAC Nürburgring 24 hours is officially underway. We've had qualifying this Saturday morning, and as we come on to 25 past five in the afternoon, a four-hour race that will take us, if not into full darkness, certainly somewhere near it. The, there's no lights around this circuit, so it gives the opportunity Hello to Dave in Cincinnati, Ohio. 
who's got everything running on his big screen. Uh, hello to Phil Anson, who's in the UAE in Dubai. One of our team tuned in. Good to have you listening, Phil. You'd love this, mate. You'd absolutely love it. This is right up, right up your street, as it should be for any red-blooded motorsport fan. The leading group beginning to make the turn for home from the furthest part away from the circuit. And it's going to be a lot of work to do for some of these drivers who have been demoted, not least that number four that we keep mentioning. But uh, that is, Peter, not the way they want to start their uh, the, the way that they want to start their preparation for their build-up to this great race. They, I doubt they'll do the full championship, so this is very much uh, very much zoning in that Mercedes AMG Team Bilstein car uh, on the 24 hours itself. Yeah, I think they've just got to make hay on that first lap, 12 minutes or so we said that I described earlier, but they've got some free time, if you like, amongst their peers and just try and make up as much as you can. And it's often the case, isn't it, John, with somebody that starts at the back of the grid there, the car's, the car's quicker and you get through the first bit and you sort of, you get on a wave of almost euphoria uh, of being able to, you know, pass car after car after car and then you suddenly all just levels out, but it's a levelling up and you get to about your right level and it's suddenly, it's hard work. But... That's what you've got to do, part of the driver's mindset um, on that on that first lap. The leading pack, John, are at Schwalbenschwanz uh, uh, now. The order, by the way, according to the track mapper, is, of course, the it's the Shearer Motors, uh, Motorsport uh, Audi at the front. And, of course, with... No, it's just, they've just changed order, so it's then the... 44th, the fastest motorsports car, and then the, the car that we couldn't see, the Glickenhaus, is currently third on the on the track at the moment in that formation lap. It should be on the second row. Yeah, which is where it um, is. Yeah. So that's yes, indeed it is. Yeah. It sits in fourth position at the moment behind the first. Now we've already got already Falcon got a stoppage, Porsches John, that uh, are weaving from left to right down the Dottiger Hur, Peter. We've got uh, 491, the Mertens Motorsport uh, Hyundai 130N. Uh, well, I'm not sure whether it's Daniel Mertens, probably, at the wheel, or uh, Joshua Hislop. Uh, that car is currently stopped at Exmoor. Uh, so it hasn't actually made the formation lap from the, the second group there. It's actually, that's where it's stopped at the moment. So there's no indication of flags or codes or anything at the moment, but that car is completely stationary just before Exmoor. Well, that's something to keep an eye on as the Cupra safety car brings down the leading runners. They are wavering from left and right. Open tyre formula, uh, remember, and there are usually a good handful of tyre manufacturers. I think we got up to nine in the main race last year. You should also mention as well that the race this year for the first time is a round of the SRO Intercontinental GT Championship, um, but only for the registered teams and manufacturers. It doesn't affect the race at all. Uh, effectively, Stefan Rattel and the SRO cars uh, are uh, guests within it, and they will race to the same regulations and sporting code. Uh, what is interesting is that SRO have waived the necessity for their championship runners to be on Pirelli tyres when they come back here for the race. So that is just a, a little bit of interest. SRO piggybacking on the success of this race, as they have done, have done for a number of events, of course, notably the, uh, the Bathurst 12 hours, and really a good opportunity to get one of the big blue riband races in for them to be a part of it. The Cooper pulls off right-handed into the pit lane and the first of two four-hour qualifying races for the Ravenol ADAC Nürburgring 24 hours is underway with four hours counting down on the clock and the first group go through 
and roll down to the first corner. Glickenhaus trying to go around the outside. One, two, three, four across the track there for a moment. But it's Audi in the lead. In fact, Audi's first and second with the better placed number 44, Falcon Motorsports. That's got Muller behind the wheel of that car, trying to hold on. Staying in third position, then the Glickenhaus. Aston Martin coming through is the Valken horse car with David Pittard trying to make up a position and making up a position. Pittard then down at the Ford corner. Turn three, Pittard in the dark coloured Aston Martin already having made up a position. Here's Grello as well. The 911 of Thomas Prining, the Manti EMA car. Can't miss that one, goes to the outside of the Glickenhaus. As they're climbing the hill, Frank Moyer taking the start in that car and just bringing it up to temperature and pressures nicely behind the Grello car is the Herbert Racing Dennis Olsen red and white car. Now, John, we lost number 11 straight away to the pits. That's the Schnitzelalm Racing Mercedes. Uh, of uh, Marco Markovitz uh, straight into the pits that just didn't even take the start so that came in straight in and it's uh, it's in its box already and it looks like they're working on the front left uh, so some kind of uh, sort of braking or suspension issue for that car straight away a lack of brakes on any motor circuit you don't want around the Norberg ring definitely not advisable so the two share a sport Phoenix Audis at the head of the field Ricardo Fuller from Chris Hasser 16 from 15 then the number 44 sitting in third place it's been a fairly so far undramatic run for Sven Muller all the action in the pit lane there that looks to me is that they've made, there may have been some side-by-side -side contact as the mechanics are working on the front left yeah bonnet off that corner it wasn't a um an event for the second of the two Falcon Porsches there going down the Hudson back on the on the sweep of that bit I would describe as the roller coaster John there getting completely wide and totally onto the grass and I've often said that bits of this the first part of the Hudson back uh, there is uh, not much more than the width of uh, grass a uh, width of car width yeah. either side and uh, oh, it was that. very very close to the barriers but got away with it and that's the car that I think is running in I think it's seventh at the moment the second of the two uh, Falcon Porsches having a, a little bit of a grassy moment on the opening lap and joining the Nordschleife. That will have got his so attention. He, here comes the next group coming through Tiergarten onto the start-finish line behind another Cupra. And they will be released in just a second. So 29 cars were released in the first group. Here comes the second group to the line now. As the green flag is being ready, being started by two of the Cup 2 cars. We've had two fantastic Cup 2 races. In fact, the front of that grid dominated by the Porsche 992 Cup class. Two fantastic races culminating in uh, Last lap dashes in the two races last weekend, as described by Johnny Palmer and Bruce Jones. Across the line then. And the Muller car, the blue and white car, moves to the outside, but it's going to be passed. The second Muller car down the inside, though, disputing it rather more. Remember, they don't go all the way through. So staying on the outside of the normal turn in there, that becomes the inside line for the first left-hander and the two black Falcon cars right in there as well Peter Turting in the Muller 124 and Mori Krantz in the 122 for the two Mullers and they've dropped into third and fourth position but it's the two black Falcon cars that lead out headed by I think that's the 103 the golden red from memory a chance to look at those cars when they were out on track this morning coming up to half past five in the Eiffel welcome along if you're just joining us start group two getting underway on the Grand Prix circuit at the head of the field Ricardo Feller leads for a 1-2 for Shara Sport P HX the Phoenix and Shara combination 
Fulton Motorsports a third with Sven Müller, then David Pittard for Aston Martin, who made up a position at the start. Frank Moyer has got back into fifth position, going ahead of Luca Ludwig in the Frikadelli Racing Team Ferrari. Uh, as we said, uh, Felipe Fernandes Laza and Daniel Calvitz entered only those two names, but it, it is um, Luca Ludwig this weekend doing the starting run. Amazing to think, Peter, that we've still got the third group to go and the leader, Ricardo Fuller, is halfway round the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Well, that's what I was saying, wasn't it, John, about how little time they get, as you say, that start group three just arriving at uh, Tiergarten. Now, very quick update on the 491, John, that I said stopped on the warm-up lap. It appears it was actually a GPS issue because it's in in its track play, grip position in that pack, so it looks like it was actually a GPS issue. Hence, there was no flag or code 60 to go with it because it wasn't actually stopped on track. Copy. So, the second group heading up to the top of the hill. Uh, we've gone through Flugplatz. Here is the third group as they head to the start line. Down to the first corner, and that is a lovely jump away by the car that was on pole position. It's one of the older BMWs. I think that's the, the dark blue one. I think from memory that is the... Is that the 70... 72? Oh, no, it's the, I apologise. It's the STI Subaru that's gone to the front using its all-wheel drive as uh, an advantage. And heads out in down to the bottom of the hill and the Goodyear hairpin. This is the category with the front wheel drive TCRs in it, or the group with it, with them in it. So we've had 76 cars in the first two groups and this will take us, this last 50 or so will take us up to the 130 or thereabouts. at RSL underscore studio, hashtag RSL underscore N24, if you want to get in touch. 660 going through the very distinctive orange and black BMW. And that car mired right in the middle of the battle for position as they make their way out for the first time onto the Nürburgring Nordschleife. And of course, for some of these drivers, they're getting as much practicing as they can. That 660 is the car that wasn't on the entry list. One of the cars that weren't on the entry list that came out yesterday. Some news on that as it comes back round. Battle for second position now as the Porsche from Falkland Motorsport has a look at the second placed share at Audi. So you're a PHX, so that is Christopher Haaser being hassled by Sven Muller. We've said that plenty of times down through the years. And from the slow lead in, an 8.26.5 for. Ricardo Feller, who leads his teammate. Haza Muller, then David Pittard for the first of the Aston Martins. Frank Meyer, top of the class in SPX. As I say, that's the only one. And the top 27 cars. Oh, sorry, no, there is another SPX car. There's the um, there's a Porsche in there as well. Top 28 car, 27 cars at SP9s. John, we were saying about how quickly the cars uh, catch the, the, the third group. As you said, it barely seems possible, but the, the leading cars have just uh, completed that first lap. They're just going through the Grand Prix circuit, as it were, onto Shabin Schmidt's curve now. Uh, that's the leading uh, Audis there, the Shearer Sports cars, and 
just exiting the hats and back already is the tail end of start group three so they'll be inside very quickly so as i said that not quite a lap and a half before that that uh, they've caught up with they're in traffic already straight away so the next the next four hours or three hours uh 50 odd minutes of it are in traffic now the question i wondered how long this would uh, take to come in from Matt Slighthorn. I noticed important cars were listed, didn't hear the Foxtail Manta. Is it racing? It isn't here this weekend, which means it won't be racing. I believe it means it won't be racing in the 24, but it has, we were told it had been rebuilt. And actually I was quite surprised not to see it in the two races last weekend. Um, but, um, it wasn't listed. Uh, no, I did also hear, week. John, that it had, there was, I'm not sure this is correct, don't quote me on this, but I did hear that there was uh, special dispensation for that car uh, to run in the 24 hour. Whether that's true or verified or not, I don't know. I'm not, not doubting the authorities, but I did hear that that was a possibility. Um, I think it's probably got lifetime membership, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, grandfather rights, literally. Yeah. Yeah. The car, um, it, it had a couple of, I mean, it's Trigger's broom. I'm not sure if any of the parts of that car are, are original um, now. Well, it, it's down, it's down to do NLS 3 and 4, and four certainly, John. I think it's, it's down to do 3 and 4. Correct, yes. Well, that, this is 3 and 4. But it's down and to I do it. See it. Yeah, I, I, I saw that. I, I can't find it on the timing screen, and I couldn't find no, it on okay. the, the entry list. It had that big rear end incident where... Um, a couple of years ago, in the, in, I think in the 24, where they took a, a sledgehammer to, to straighten it back up again. And then, of course, they had the fire in the garage, um, in the workshop, which all but destroyed it. Just uh, a thought, John, it might it might appear at the N24 in the classic race. Well, yes, um, in the in the three hour young time. Correct. Yeah, just a thought. Yeah, that would be, that be, a, would be a, good, um, a good fit something. for it, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Just indeed. thinking, John, look at these leading cars going down uh, to different parts of the circuit there. Of course, there's some, some changes to the circuit over the winter uh, in terms of quite a bit of resurfacing. Certainly, hold the entire length of a foxhole uh, has been resurfaced. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if it gets some reduction in lap times. Um, not by massive amounts, but the surface is going to lend itself to that. Uh, and the weather conditions right now are absolutely perfect. So uh, they're going to complete, I mean, they're halfway around, they're just at Bergwerk now. So we're going to you know, halfway around the, the lap, their first flying lap of the race as opposed to a standing start. So I'll be intrigued to see what happens to, to the lap times, John. Yeah, that, uh, um, I, I, I was looking at that um, on some of the onboards last weekend when Johnny and Bruce were working and uh, we didn't get the conditions in terms of green flag laps uh, to really get super quick there always seemed to be a bit of uh, a bit of cord 60 or yellows uh, and therefore the lap times never really came down to the sort of areas we might have hoped and that uh, Rafa Marcello uh, race lap time. So at the front of the field then, let's just remind you, and, and by the way, for those of you who keep uh, notes, I reckon 122 cars started. We had 130 on the entry list, um, actually a bit less than that, but we had 130 on the timing screen expected to start. The Schnitzel Arm Racing AMG was a leaky brake caliper, and that car is in the pit lane still. So Mark Markovic's uh, has race hasn't got underway. I'll be having Schnitzel uh, later. You just have to, don't you? Uh, when it's the quality weekend. It's the rules. Uh, it's, it is the rules, absolutely. So uh, I reckon, as I say, that in 20 different classes, we had 122 starters, and the Dacia Logan uh, is out on the Nordschleife. The rebuilt, reimagined Dacia Logan is out there at the moment. Our best lap was the first lap from Ricardo Feller from pole position, who put in an 8.26.5. Expect to see that come down by eight or 10 seconds. This lap, this is the best lap 
for Ricardo Feller. Yes, he's full of race fuel, but he's got pretty decent tyres on the share of sport Phoenix Audi, and he's setting absolute bests uh, coming out onto the Nordschleife uh, in sectors two and three. That's on the Grand Prix circuit. But it's Sven Muller who has been quick in the early part of this second lap round the North Loop. Toyota GR Super GT4 in the AT category. Uh, the team Griezmann, alternative fuel. And last weekend we had a number of Toyota Lexus drivers getting their permits. Uh, Kamui Kobayashi among them, raced in GT4. And the word on the street from those guys is that they expect to bring something for the 2025 race here on the Nordschleife. There are lots of people. Jack Aiken was doing his um, permit in a Hyundai as well last weekend. And he, being a Cadillac driver, well, they, of course, got the GT3 and GT4 GM half. have got the GT3 and GT4 Corvette. And that will give them the opportunity to come here in years to come. And the Blue Oval Ford with GT3 and GT4 Mustang now, of course. Mustang making its Australian debut this weekend in Phillip Island in the Australian GT4 Championship. What a championship that is uh, shaping up to be as well. Stop and go penalty for the BMW G82. This is the Schmidt Simon Wenzel machine, the 147. That was ignoring the code 60 in qualifying that has now been uh, th that has now been served uh, the Glickenhaus coming under quite a bit of pressure now uh, John from the uh, from Preening in the number six Porsche um, Thomas Preening yeah yeah Thomas Preening apologies Brining, yeah yeah. Uh, Brining, um, yeah that's uh, my, sorry, number 911 Porsche, sorry, sixth place, my apologies. And they're the, the, really giving that uh, Glickenhaus a very, very hard time. Of course, this is the opportunity we're trying to get now through the traffic. Glickenhaus really get very nice going up into the Schumacher S there, down to the left-hand side. The Porsche, though, just that little bit of elastic attached to the back of that car, John, just pulling it along and just, you know, ebbing out a little bit under acceleration, back under braking again, but uh, not able to, to shake off there. Uh, and that's what the Glickenhaus will want to do through the traffic there before they get down to uh, the North Slifer, where it gets... Uh, this, this is still one of the best opportunities to overtake the GP circuit because it's just so much wider. So, you know, if I say it's a normal circuit, I'm not suggesting no is abnormal, but it is because it's an extraordinary uh, place and it's so narrow and there's so little opportunity to overtake and you've got to read all that traffic and uh, get through it. But these two are uh, absolutely nose to tail as they get to the end of that lap now and are about to start. Uh, the North Slifer through Speed Schmidt's curve. The Porsche having a little look down the inside, not quite ready there. Traffic in the way, so the starts the roller coaster of Hatzenbach. Can they do anything with it at this moment? Doesn't look like it, John, but uh, they're also not dropping that far behind from Greno either. Yeah, Chris Harzer had two tenths of a second on Ricardo Fuller, his teammate, as they went across the line, and the traffic now is beginning to play its part as they work their way past one of the uh, GT tyres BMWs. So Ricardo Feller will know the part number on the back of that rear wing of Christopher Harzer by now. Heading up towards Flugplatz. Nothing to do with the cars getting airborne, all to do with the fact that there used to be a Flugplatz on driver's left at the top of the hill and airports where the rich and famous would fly in from the big cities of Germany to watch the races in the early part of the late 1920s through into the 1930s. Now up to the top of the Foxhall, turning right. It's the newly repaved area. And now dropping under the bridge and down into the Foxhall. Much, much smoother, much darker tarmac. Every time they repave here as well, it potentially takes away some of your brake markers where you say, right, you brake just on that change of surface. Well, you can't 
and something's happened just behind the leaders at, as the yellow flags have come out at Schwedenkreutz and uh, that was as I said just behind the leaders in the second pack in the second pack as they head out into the countryside it's still Sven Muller in third with David Pittard in the Aston in fourth so it's Audi Audi Porsche Aston Porsche Glickenhaus leading the SPS Glasgow and sixth overall then two more Porsches, Porsches in the shape of the red and white Dennis Olsen driven Herbert Motorsport car and then Fulton Motorsport Herbert have revived the F18 Turbo livery which people with long memories or just old <laughs> people like me will remember was the famous livery on the controversial winner of the 1994 Le Mans 24 hours when Dower basically converted an old 962 into a road car and I use the words converted and road car very liberally <laughs> they did virtually nothing to it they had to build um, and show a road car as well so they did and it did have the places to put the standard size luggage uh, in the car and therefore they were allowed to race it and effectively with the change of regulations think of it as a racing car that was to the previous regulations but the SEO had been trying to show, slow them down and that was the car that won that year in that FAT turbo red and white colours and Herbert have revived that colour scheme and it looks brilliant on a 911. Sorry, Peter, go ahead. No, sorry, I was just going to say how, how it can change in the matter of, of half a third of a lap round here, which, of course, is a few minutes on this circuit. Uh, Dennis Olsen, that was chasing that Glickenhaus so, so closely on the GP circuit, I described going on to the Nordschleife. The Glickenhaus has had a little bit of a run of the traffic and got away and started to give chase to the, uh, the Grello car again now, the 911 Porsche Manti car. However, that's now brought into play number 33, Julian Andlauer in the Falcon. Porsche, who's now glued to the back of its similar Porsche red and white one in front. They're just approaching the um, carousel now. In fact, they're just right through it as we speak. And uh, Julian Andlauer has had some uh, some traffic there where, honestly, how he did not connect with the back of Olsen's Porsche is a testimony to the professionalism of these drivers. Some of it, just watching the onboard there a little bit, John, I'll just try and explain, it was just so close. It was, uh, I thought there was gonna be an insurance claim, never mind Never mind a respray. Uh, but it was just so, so close, but just nothing happened. And no avoiding action needed. So the point being absolutely judged to perfection. And it's, uh, it never ceases to amaze me what a joy it is to watch the, these, these guys do this. So the Dacia is in the pit lane, the number 318 in its blue co colour scheme. So let's see why that car's in. Patrick Simon is there talking to the starting driver. The starting number 318, by the way. <laughs> so I think, I think that's Oliver Kreiser behind the wheel there. Well, they're just talking about uh, uh, an issue with the electronics and that and, uh, and having to reboot the system, John. Reboot the system in a Dacia. Oh, my goodness, it's got, say, a full, it's got a full, full digi GG3, isn't it? Stat. Yeah. It's fantastic. This is not the same chassis uh, that was written off, and there was problems getting um, parts to replace it. But they now we've got a very slow GT4 something. BMW coming up through. Now we talked about punctures, John. Uh, right rear puncture, the place to get one. Uh, if you're going to have one at all, is at Tear Garden, where you can actually limp the car in. But there's some body damage there as well. Uh, it's the Pro Sport car. Yeah, that's going to limp its way into the pits, John. Coming through Tear Garden now. This is the G82, the newer version of that car, and there's damage to the right rear valance as well, where the tyre has been flapping around, and that'll just get pulled off. But he's made it into the pit lane, 60 kilometres an hour in the pit lane. 
be looking to do 60k uh, with that tyre. Well, 60k would be too quick, Peter, wouldn't yeah, it? Exactly, just break. That, that's exactly the problem, John. As you say, it's the it's the collateral damage, isn't it? Getting it into the pits, and it's uh, it's it, it's difficult to teach racing drivers to go slowly. But you're going to have to do that to get that car back sensibly. Hopefully, it's in, and it should be no more than a charge. The tyre chains will be a, a quick scout round when the mechanics get the the rim off and have a look around and see if it's anything else. It's it's brake lines, cables, other bits of things that it, it can damage on the way with a, a flailing tyre and do so so much damage. We think, you know, there'll be people going, hang on, it's just a bit of rubber, but it's not just a piece of rubber because there are steel reinforcements in tyres and the carcass obviously is extremely, in the sidewall, extremely durable normally. And when that starts flapping around, you're basically, at that point, you're in the lap of the gods because there's nothing you can do to affect what is going on other than go as slowly as possible. It was uh, Stuart Hall who once said to me, no matter how slow you are going, it's not slow enough. Simple as that. You're watching and listening to race one of two this weekend in the qualification weekend for the Ravenel ADAC 24 hours of Nürburgring for 2024. I'm John Hindorf. It's Peter Snowden who is alongside me in the Global Broadcast Centre. And after three laps, about halfway through the first stint, we'll see six or seven laps on the first stint, and then sevens or eights after that, uh, as we go through this first four-hour race. Going into the darkness tonight, it's still the Sharer Sport Audi, uh, Phoenix Audi Twins, 15 from 16 in number order. I'd like to see that side by side BMW action as an F82 goes past the G82 on the line as they go down into the first corner. And uh, that is the battle right inside the top 100. And in VT2 rear wheel drive, that is, I reckon. That is the, it is the 504, which is the SRS Team Zorg Rensport car, that's the white and green car. And the 505 is the Schubert driven 328i, so it's a 330 and a 328. And behind them, another couple with the GT tyre car just going down the inside. That's the number 502. GT tyres have long used this event at the Nürburgring as an opportunity to test and develop their wares. Just actually, I think, lost a position there to the 510 going through. That's the Malinowski driven. Oh, and that's listed as an Audi. So what was that? Was that an Audi RS3? So I thought that looked like another BMW, if I'm honest, the red and white car. I'll have to have another look at that now. Now we're going to have to so our Pro Sport uh, 178 entry is uh, is back out with um, uh, the tyre fitter, but it's, it's got its rear lights, which will lead for later on when it gets dark. But a lot of the rear wing aft of the of the tyre is missing now, John. But uh, as we said about that speed coming into the pits, as you know, Stewie Hall said, never never quite slow enough. But it appears uh, at the moment, fingers crossed, they've got away with that, and it's uh, it's done some damage to that rear wing, and they've got rid of that. And, I haven't bothered with gaffer tape or anything like that. just torn it off and got rid of it. It's got the bits it's required for legally for lighting later on and more importantly, a wheel and tyre carcass intact uh, on that. It looks slightly strange at the moment, though, with that little bit of a... Uh, it won't be quite as aerodynamic at the back. I don't think it'll affect it too much. So that car then with a bit of ground to make up... Uh, in the classes, let me give you some class leaders as we're uh, coming around to the first 30 minutes of racing. It is the 15 Shearer Sport Audi that leads overall, and in SP9, SPX, it's the Glickenhaus, Black Falcons, Porsche leads Cup 2 in 29th position. That's the 103 car. The 55 Door Motorsport, uh, what is that? It's the KTM, isn't it? In SP11, that's in 36th place. In 43rd place, it's Team Bilstein by Black Falcon. Uh, number 150, that's the Jimmy Broadbent GT4. 
effectively. 44th is the first of the TCRs, and that's the number 830 Hyundai N Motorsport entered uh, machine. E Fuel Team Greisman, the AT leader, that's the 227 that uh, we were talking about early on. In Cup 3, which is for the uh, uh, car Cayman. Club Sports, that is the Avia W and S Motorsport 962 in 46th position. SP10, Black Falcon again with their number 166. The SP14 is... SP14, excuse me, not 14. Uh, is a car with a number 13 on it, which is... Um, oh, what's, what's that? Is that number from Martin Class? Which car number is that, John? 13. 13. Uh, odd... Yeah. yeah, one three, the White Angel uh, New Beetle. Oh, okay, that's yeah. the Beetle RS. That's correct. RSR, RSR. Yes, exactly. Yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, BMW leads, uh, as you might expect, in the 240i class. That's the Adrenaline Team Up Sport with um, Manhattan Wheels, the 650 car. Also, Adrenaline um, Team in the V6 category. It's number 396. The Plus Line Racing Team, number 80, leads SP7. Adrenaline again. Uh, the VT2 rear wheel drive class with their 500 car in 89th. Team Mertens Motorsport lead the VT2 front wheel drive class with their number 492. In V5, it is the 443. It's not a team name next to that one, so give me a moment. Uh, that is a Porsche Cayman for Alexander Schmidt and Sebastian Schemer, both German drivers. Uh, then we have Hoffer Racing's SP6207 leading in that class at uh, position 102. 106 is the V4 leader, which is the aforementioned 702. Uh, that is the BMW 325i. The Jorgen Huber, the lead driver there. And finally, BMW class uh, is being led by the 885, that being the M2 Racing Cup offered by Bonk Motorsport Car. And the Dacia, Logan, uh, despite its problems, in 121st position uh, is, I think, the sole car in SP3T, given its engine size. So uh, there we are. That's all of your class leaders for you. Just joining us maybe sorry, this afternoon. Sorry, uh, sorry, Peter. <laughs> you football on. is football is ending all over the UK this afternoon, so I suspect quite a few will be uh, joining us now here on our live coverage uh, through till local time half nine this evening. That's half eight in the UK. So settle yourselves down with a, uh, a beverage and perhaps something warm if you've been out watching local football or following your team. And we are just over 30 minutes, 34 minutes into this four-hour contest. Contest. I'm John Hindoff. The other voice you'll hear in a moment is Peter Snowden. And it's still after the completion of another lap as we head into lap number five. The two share a sport Phoenix Audi R8 LMS GT3 Evo 2s. Chris Hazer has got ahead of Ricardo Fella, and that's a change of the lead, despite the fact that Fella actually put in the fastest lap of the race last time around. And for all those uh, football fans and uh, bringing in the, the completing the two as you do with motorsport very well, John, is uh, there's a little, I've just noticed a little uh, post uh, on Twitter X uh, from Tiffany Dell, obviously known to us all of them. Hello, dramatic, Tim. dramatic last second win for Saints, his favourite team. Uh, so one, fun, yeah. one for all those, I can't say the next word, that walk out early blocking my view. It's never over until it's over. Until it's over. Exactly. Well, listen, and how right it was, and wasn't that proven last weekend? Here. Well, exactly so. Exactly so. Battling in oh. the middle of the SP category <laughs> with the Aston Martin, uh, the uh, green Aston Martin, just coming down to the uh, bottom of the hill. And 
I'll tell you what, talking about the bottom of the hill there, John, I think Julian Andalau is in the market for a Glickenhaus because uh, he's certainly getting close enough to talk about a, a pre-buying inspection and buying signals. He couldn't get much closer to that Glickenhaus. Uh, still, as I said, on this GP circuit, the best opportunity to try and get past somebody. And it's uh, he might have a run into the chicane. He's got the last bit of the, the, the fastest part on the GP circuit. Again, a good run through there. Can he dive down the inside? He's looking for it. I don't think he's quite got to this. Yes, he's gone for it. He's got down the inside of the Glickenhaus at the end of the chicane. The chicane at the end of uh, the the GP circuit, which takes him up a place going into the hats and back onto the north side. So that's the job done for Julian Andler. He's been setting that up about the last 10 minutes, I have to say. Superb manoeuvre there uh, from Julian Andler in the number 33 Falcon Motorsports and 911 GT3. Meantime, the number 72 BMW Team RMG chasing down that green and white Aston Martin. So that's Dan Harper. And that Pro Sport Aston ahead of him is the number 17 car with Nico Bastian, the starting driver from Mannheim, which is where I was on Monday and Tuesday. It's a very nice one, Porsches. In fact, one in that colourway of that BMW in uh, the old shell colours. Very important car, actually. The first Porsche race prototype race car to be fitted with the PDK, the double clutch Porsche, double clutch. So it's number 17, Shell Dunlop 962. Hans Joachim Stuck among the drivers of that car. It seems a very long time ago. And people were talking about it. It'll never catch on, I remember people saying. <laughs> never catch on for race cars. You have to have the control of being able to shift down yourself. And uh, these these flappy paddles, they'll never catch on. Oh, really? Well, do you remember the, the first Grand Prix winner for one of those with Mr. Mansell in uh, in the Ferrari? The 640, wasn't it, at Buenos Aires? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, famously, the car was so unreliable in testing uh, he famously joked that he booked a flight home for halfway through the race on the basis of the car was never going to get to the end of the race. And what did it do? Got to the end of its race and won. And it, won. Yeah, unfortunately, it did flatter to deceive a bit um, and it didn't do a lot for the rest of the season, did it, in terms of reliability, sadly. But what, what, a, great way to, what a great way to start your, uh, your career with Ferrari, eh? I wonder if Mr Hamilton can do the same. Anyway, back at the Nürburgring. Il, Il Leone part <laughs> two, do you think? <laughs> Well, we'll see. They loved, they loved Nigel. Didn't they at, just? Uh, well, he was a racer, Ferrari. wasn't he? He, he, got the, yeah. he got the car by the scruff of the neck. He was the same sort of mould as, as a Villeneuve. He was a racer, almost. Well, I don't think Villeneuve worried too much about points and championships. I think it was just the... I forget. I think it was Schechter that said of him, his teammate, that uh, if, if the car... If he wasn't going to get points and it wasn't going to finish particularly well, Villeneuve would go into the pits and have a new set of rubber put on to come out to set the fastest, yeah, lap, the fastest lap. Just, just so he went home that night knowing... He was the fastest Grand Prix driver on the planet. It's Battle in the VT2 front-wheel drive category. Two Team Mertens cars. The 491 is the blue and orange car. Uh, and that is uh, one of the Mertens driving that car. Uh, the 492 is the leader, which is the black and monthly coloured car, which is about 50 metres further up the road. Now, John, we've got and our first, that uh, first code 60, John. The moment by Ashke Gupta. Peter? We've got our first code 60 of the race, which is at the carousel of all places, and that's for car uh, 476, which is the um, VT2 uh, front-wheel drive class of the VW Scirocco of uh, Tino Berth, uh, Jürgen Nett and Akim Nett. That's, uh, that's parked on, uh, according to my GPS tracker, um, actually I haven't got eyes on it, on the outside of the sort of two-thirds of the way around the carousel, but it's uh, it's caused a code 60. So that very, that very very fast run up through Kasselschen, Klostertal, and the big sweeping right, and then that run up the hill to the uh, the carousel itself. And the run up the hill there becomes a 120, goes into a 60, and then it just clears after the carousel. And that, to be honest, it won't make that much of a difference, to be honest, John, because um, it will, you, you don't do much overtaking around the carousel anyway. And I've just seen a bit of onboard there it's with the Julian Andlau going through. That's it, yeah. And it is that 476 Scirocco is parked on the right hand side of the track, and there's an intervention tow truck vehicle with it now already. So I would suspect it will be cleared very, very shortly. 
they uh, I'll be, I, I, I was wondering why the GT3 Cup car oh. it, that is in the SPX class isn't in um, it, sorry isn't in Cup 2 and is in SPX um, if you drive in Cup 2 you have to be on the standard Michelin tyres for Porsche GT3 Cup uh, it is a Hankook test vehicle so it is a GT3 Cup car exactly the same as Carrera Cup and Super Cup around the world um, but Hankook are trying out some tyres so it is starting in the and running in the SPX class so that is why a number of you tweeting us here at RSL underscore studio using the hashtag RSL underscore n24 that's why that car asking what the difference is nothing with the car all down to do the tires and that begs the question then Hankook must be thinking about doing either Carrera Cup or Super Cup somewhere in the world wasn't there if they are doing tires for that car very interesting Gagler cars going down to the first corner which includes the red and white number 969 the Porsches in the Cup 3 category there and that is a battle for position I believe 969 is the yes it is in fact it's second third and fourth in Cup 3 the Adrenaline Motorsport number 930 and two SRS team Rensport cars in fairly close proximity there as well they've just gone past the Hyundai Elantra uh, the A31, uh, which has got Mason Felipe at the wheel. And that's the car that Harold Kortsacker, Mark Wilkins and Robert Wiggins should have been driving that car. But um, I don't believe he's made it back from the US, still recovering from that nasty accident. All of those drivers, Harold Kortsacker, Mason Felipe and Mark Wilkins, two Americans and a proud Canadian, they race for Brian Hurtner Autosport in IMSA competition in the Michelin Pilot Challenge in IMSA. And in fact, uh, Hyundai sent a couple of drivers over last year, didn't they? Because Taylor Hagler was here. I think Mark Wilkins might have been here as well with that. What it does go to prove, though, uh, Peter, is that there are class battles going on everywhere. And... Yes, people are, uh, are looking for a bit extra testing here before we get to the 24 hours. But really, the, just having the privilege of being able to drive a racing car on racing rubber around the Nordschleife, you just drink that in any time that uh, anybody offers it. Well, you'd be mad not to, wouldn't you? I mean, and, uh, uh, I'm sure if you were given the opportunity, John, you'd love to. Have you, have you ever driven the Nürburgring? Uh, a, not in a race. Not in a race, no. I can't say, I can't imagine you're not doing it. I can see you out there on your bike, actually. No, uh, never. That's the one thing. <laughs> correct I, answer. I, I correct do. answer, yes. It's why I don't want to drive on the road, particularly, because uh, I'm, I'm not sure about everybody else. Um, so we just got uh, we're our Mercedes into the pits. And I think well, that's one of the get speed cars, is it not? Uh, it's the Tim Bilstein number four, Peter, number four, that started at the back yeah. of the class, if you remember. there got pinged for not respecting code 60 in qualifying started from the back of the lead group and Lucas Stoltz has brought the car in to hand it off uh, if again if you're not used to this type of motor racing but you're watching and you're thinking well there's not much going on here they're taking their time there is a mandatory pit stop time here and it's not for anything else uh, other than the fueling that is going on to the right rear of that blue and yellow number four Bilstein AMG GT3 is from a standard pistol grip pump there's one in between uh, every couple of pits and one of the reasons there's two major reasons for the, the mandatory pit stop times but um the major one being that all of those pumps pump at slightly different flow rates. So it's not fair to uh, somebody, because you know all of these teams would go and measure them 
and then ask for which pit they wanted because they'd get the faster one. The other reason is safety <laughs> because there's a lot of teams here that aren't works teams and a groups of friends together. Debris flag on the middle of the Dottiger Hur, by the way, for some tyre debris and uh, some dirt on the side of the road, just uh, on the exit from the tourist foreign uh, entry point there. Um, so that's the reason that things look to be slightly slow. There is a complicated table uh, that says, depending on how many laps you do, is how long your pit stop. Basically, the longer you stay out there, the longer your pit stop has to be. Um, until we get to round about an hour and 10 minutes before the end of the race. And then it switches to how much time there is before the end of the race that um, determines your mandatory pit stop time. I did think there, John, though, you, you, that uh, that Mercedes pit stop was, it was actually did seem very, very casual. You're absolutely right about, of course, to being that, no, as in that, to, compared to normal. Um, I know they started at the back of that uh, that start group because of that infringement, um, but they, there's normally a little bit more haste about a pit stop, even though there is a, a mandatory time, because they like to be in and settled and have that time spare at the end of it, like not run up to the end of it. And I did, I did think when Lucas Stoltz got out of that car that it just, it seemed, uh, I wouldn't say lethargic, but it seemed casual. There didn't seem a lot of urgency uh, compared to normal. But maybe that's just because of where, where they've started, and it's back to what we said just pre-race, John. If it's you know, it's a, a a data collection exercise. Could be. Um, I think those guys. I think they're already qualified into the top group for qualifying for the the Ravenol ADAC 24 Hours of the Nurburgring. Hello to Harry Chandler at Tour underscore Do underscore Mons. Uh, been playing football this afternoon. Hoping for a, another good result from the number 150 BMW, the Jimmy Broadbent car. Uh, if you're not a regular listener to Midweek Motorsport, first of all, why not? 8 o'clock UK time every Wednesday for two hours of motorsport chat and interviews. Uh, Harry is one of our listeners who has decided... I, 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 I don't think he was forced into this remarkably. He's decided to uh, commemorate the uh, 1924 entry of Bentley to Le Mans, because he works for Bentley at the crew, to ride from the gates of Bentley Motors in crew to the gates of the Circuit de la Sarthe in France, just before the race. Um, as you can imagine, it's quite an undertaking. He's not doing it for fun, although he says it will be. <laughs> the youth of today I really don't understand <laughs> uh, uh, he is raising money for CRY um, Cry which is a charity that helps identify unknown cardiac issues in young people and uh, he and a couple of his friends have been uh, touched by that personally um, and basically, it's to provide a couple of days of screening. Uh, so he's looking for £13,000. He's got two and a half grand on his GoFundMe at the moment. Um, and uh, all the details. If you search Tour de Mont 2024 or at Tour de Mont, uh, Tour underscore D U underscore M A N S 2024, have a look at it. The collective have been. Uh, supporting him with a few quid here and there. We've had some really nice donations in from the uh, from the industry. So please try and support him. Let's head down to the pit lane for, uh, I think this is going to be an English interview. No, it's not. Uh, my, my boyish enthusiasm. Uh, so, yeah, check that out. To uh, underscore... D-U underscore M-A-N-S. All the details of his GoFundMe, etc. Uh, on his X page. It's a great, great, uh, a great, great charity there that we want to support at RSL. As I say, the industry's getting behind him. He's going to call in at some pretty cool places. Progressive Motorsport, where they've got a couple of Le Mans Bentleys. Uh, Silverstone, I'm going to let him ride a, a lap around the track. Uh, uh, 
at the home of the British Grand Prix and the Tourist Trophy, of course. And he's also popping in to see the Mazda Heritage Collection at uh, Mazda UK. Just those three are the ones I know about. A great thanks to everyone who've already helped out. Uh, I know Be A Mountain are featuring it rather heavily, so Steve and the rest of the team, thank you. And uh, travel specialists, now travel partners here at RSL, first tickets have uh, donated a crossing as well uh, for Harry and his support vehicle. If you have a motorhome company and you would like me to mention your name, um, get in touch with him because it would be really nice for him not to have to do it in a van, to do it in a motorhome. And then he'll have somewhere to stay when he gets to Le Mans as well because he's going to stay in the race, as you can imagine. So, uh, splitting strategy at the front of the field there, Peter. It's the 16, Ricardo Feller car that comes into the pit lane. If you're watching the World Feed TV and you're a little bit worried about what appeared to be, that looked like an Opel Cadet uh, two-door that was going round the inside of the track there. That is the slalom that is going on at the moment. Um, the 49th running of the ADAC slalom Munchen Gladbach on the Mercedes Arena and that's going on there at the moment so if you get a flash of cars going around that wee part don't don't panic uh, also coming in a raft of SP9 top class cars including Julian Adler in the 33 Fulton Motorsports Porsche Amaro Engel for Team Get Speed 130 Fabian Schiller in the second of the Get Speed so they've pitted both their cars together but the Phoenix Sharer guys, Peter, have split their strategy. Interesting. Yeah, do you know, what? I, was, I was just watching those two and just about to say as they came down the dotting of and up through uh, Tiergarten to Hohenrein at the end of the lap there, just saying these two, you know, pretty settled down and got a formation, you know, rear gunner type situation. And of course, just as you start to think it didn't compose your thoughts, as you say, they go and split the strategy and bring one of them into the pits. Uh, so it's, uh, it's Christopher Haas in number 15 leading still, as you say. That puts the Muller Porsche uh, into uh, to second place. Grello in third. Pittard still holding on to fourth. He hasn't progressed any further, has he? Jumped a, a place at the start, didn't he, John? On that, uh, the, the very first couple of corners, actually, onto the GP circuit, and there's a uh, settle down there. Um, fastest car on the circuit still is our leading car, Christopher Haas, number 15, Shira Sport, PHX uh, Audi, with an 8.15 dead, or, or 0.27. Um, His teammates quicker than that, Peter, 8.14.6. Struck on my point, of course, down the order on the, on the list. My point, you're absolutely right, John. Yeah, he, he was the leader when he set that, though, yes. so you're absolutely right to yeah. say the car that was leading because he yeah. was leading. That was that lap that he got early on, I think. Uh, it was either lap two or three, yeah. So, four, four tenths quicker, isn't it, between the two teammates there? And then, bizarrely, he set that fast lap and he lost the lead. <laughs> so, Julian Andler. Oh, Indeed, the 33 Falcon has just reached a ball. Didn't sound very healthy, wanted to go away there. Just, I think, just on the limiter. Uh, probably a few too many revs, just against the limiter and just those straight cut gears as it pulls away. But it's it's back out on the pit lane, so that's that's all good. You say quite a raft of SP9 GT3 cars in, uh, so it's going to be a little bit of settling down at the end of this lap. But I suppose we're going to have a few more in now. Uh, after this, so I'm just trying to see how much time we've got left. Uh, how, how many we've got? Three hours, six, haven't we? So we've done 50, 54 minutes. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's about right in terms of uh, yeah, six laps, five sort of five to seven laps tends to be the order. So um, yeah, that's about right now. So I expect we're going to see quite a few more coming in this the end of this lap, John. Remember, dear viewer and listener, that um, getting six and a half laps isn't any use here um, and, and you've had the run to the grid and then the formation lap so you albeit not at speed generally speaking you'll see one lap fewer in the first stint than you see in the subsequent stints now the joker here is that pit lane timetable and uh, that pit lane time grid and everybody last week 
who stopped early got a benefit from it. Number one, because they were stationary uh, 20 seconds or so uh, less time in the pit lane, 20 seconds fewer uh, to be standing still. Uh, and secondly, you have the advantage of new tyres on your outlap, just as the car that you were driving alongside with, just in front of, just behind of, just behind, um, is coming in on the lap. Now, if you will, what could spoil that is having a slow zone on your outlap, which is exactly what's happened uh, on the Grand Prix circuit. Uh, Martians post 19, which is turn three. And that has, uh, is the number 477 car that is at the side of the road there. And that is that Scirocco again, who caused us problems earlier on, the Christian Kroger and Thomas Alpiga, two German drivers there, it's one of the VT2 cars. And actually, that car, John. I think it's a different one. I think the other one was four seven oh. six. You know, I think. Oh, you're right. It was four seven six that stopped at the carousel, and it's four yes, seven it seven that's now stopped at turn three. Yeah, yeah. You spot on, Peter. Um, so that is. It's not a day for a Scirocco then. Uh, well, <laughs> and just going back to your aggregator you mentioned there, John, about the uh, the, the times and the pits, etc., which will come into play much more at the end of the race. Uh, of course, ordinarily, that doesn't apply to the lower classes of the races, because they just have a, a time time of uh, over eight minutes. But it does apply for this weekend to all yeah, classes. Correct. So that's another yeah. another new feature for this weekend. One, two, one, and one, two, two. Our second and third in the Cup class, Cup two class, heading on through the Grand Prix loop now. Uh, and that is the K Kramer Racing Urget in the, the one, two, one, that's the gold and sort of camo colored car, gold and black car. The light blue and white with the yellow mirrors is the one, two, two. That's one of the Muller cars. And that is sitting in third. That's Maury Kratz driving that one at the moment. And as Patrick is interviewing, I'll give the driver of the car uh, ahead his due deference second place it is Michele Di Martino who is driving with Chris Bluk and the leader in that class is not that far up the road actually but another 10 seconds or so is the Black Falcon number 103 and that car is being driven by Gabriele Piana who lists although uh, as lists himself as Swiss, uh, lists themselves as a Swiss. Moispath is where they are domiciled. Now, now we've got another that, slow car, John, into the pits. Eight three one, which is one. The of, that's the Hyundai, exactly, uh, and that is the second in the class of course, at one stage. Yeah, yeah, that's just very slowly come down the dotting of hoa. I couldn't see any anything evident like a puncture or any kind of damage. Uh, it just, it's trundled its way into the pits at sort of, yeah. you know, 60k already on the track, as it were, long before it needed to. And the number 13 that you mentioned earlier, the, the Beetle RSR, um, that's also in its pit box. That's got uh, further troubles. And uh, you mentioned about 13, but you couldn't see it on the other, it's an odd number. It's not normally issued as a number 13, superstition-wise. And it's, it's actually, yeah. as my understanding, normally, if it is issued, it's by the team's request. It's actually normally goes 12, 14 on an entry list, if you see what I mean. And, and also it's right in amongst the numbers that are normally the <laughs> SP9 cars. And yes. Mason Felipe, by the way, which is why I was slightly uh, put, put off by uh, the class that I was looking at there rather than the the number. Gaggle of cars coming Ooh. in. Mason Felipe, by the way, was the TCR Hyundai driver in the 831. Everybody hard on the anchors. Uh, that's the 44 Falcon Porsche being followed in by Grello, the 911. Then the Aston Martin of Volkenhorst, and they were all in behind a lower class BMW, which I think might have been the 150 car. Indeed, but I just ahead of that was the Shira, um, out of the Shira car as well, John. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It was indeed Manuel Metzger 
in the team Belstein by Black Falcon Car. So that is that is the leader in SP18, GT4. Uh, that was coming into the pits, followed by that gaggle of cars. Fricadelli in the pit lane, the defending champion, the number one, where it being won proudly on that car. That is the Luca Ludwig and Nico Varone driving that car today. And their two teammates who were listed will be in the car tomorrow. So we've now had the top 13 into the pits. The first car not to have pitted is Hubert Hout in the Advan Mercedes, Team Advan and HRT, the number six car. And he's about to come round. Who's the best car that has pitted then? That's Chris Meese. Chris Meese about to come uh, into the last three sectors. So the car we've got to look for here, Peter, with these cars making their longer stops because they went one lap further. Got to look out for the number 16 in 16th position in class. That is the Chris Meese driven share of sport PHX Audi. He'll be coming onto the Dottinger Hur any second now. And there's a yellow flag on the start of the Dottinger Hur. Oh, dear me. So that's exactly what he didn't need as he's trying to do what F1 commentators would be calling the undercut. Basically, he's done the shorter pit stop and he's got the advantage of the new tyres. And he's heading back towards us now. Yeah, I'm just trying to see because uh, there's. Um, there's repair vehicles, instant vehicles on the Dottinger Hoa, but we've just seen on board with uh, the battler driven uh, 33 Porsche now, having stayed left there, those those intervention vehicles. Well, that car stopped as well, yeah. so that's the second car that has stopped, so th th let's see how well they get on. They were first and third when they came in. Let's see how they get out. We're waiting for the sign to be given to all those cars who have just come in. Haas, Muller, Priding, Pittard, Olsen, Ludwig, they've all jumped out of their cars now. But that's the cars that we are waiting to see. Engines are firing. And the 44 car is rolling. And Sven Muller brought that in. That looks like, is that Martin Raginger behind the wheel now? Oh, no it isn't because he's not in that car. He wasn't listed in that car, so that is Tim Heinemann. My apologies. He's going out. So there goes Meese, there goes Backler, and there goes Vavish rejoining. I reckon those front cars have kept their positions. And in fact, in effect, Klaus Backler has jumped up a position I've in that 33. He's jumped and split the two Audis, hasn't he? Yeah, exactly, exactly that. so. Yeah, yeah. So that's worked out very well for them. There's a 7.4 second gap between them as well, so it's worked out very nicely. Well, that's exactly what didn't happen last weekend, if you see what I mean. Klaus Abelin down in the pit lane with Patrick. What an emotional run to the chequered flag for the ADAC Ravenol 24 hours last year. First win for Ferrari, first overall win for Frigatelli. There was a very, very big party. Ferrari immediately came round and knocked on his door and said, please, can we have the car back? We'd like it for our museum. So Klaus, being a very good businessman, said, not until I get a replacement and some compensation, please. <laughs> <laughs> Wiley old fox, I think, fits the phrase, doesn't it, any too well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So we've got... Um, with those yellows on the dotting a hoe, of course, John, they were just for the um, uh, instant vehicles coming back from the carousel repairs. They're bringing that Scirocco oh. out. So that's what they were just returning back. So that's why there's only yellows and not coaches to say they're coming back to their, their positions. Um, but we've also got 178. We've still got a yellow at the moment. And I think it's... Uh, I'm just trying to find which car it is. Just bear with me, John. It's, uh, my track is not playing at the moment. So we've got a one, code 120 at Schwalbenschwanz. Yeah. And the Stefan Belloff S has yeah. got a problem there as well. So it's the same sort of area. Cracking battle for fourth position at the moment with Tim Heinemann and Thomas Prining. Falcon, Porsche and Manti EMA 
it's the light blue, almost teal blue and green car. And following in that, the Grello car and Jules Gunon, uh, Alpine A424 sports car reserve driver this year. Um, Jules back with Mercedes AMG as well and in the get speed, number 130, not that far away from that battle at the moment. Was battling for fifth, uh, check that fourth, fifth, and sixth position. Then it's Maxi Goetz, who's another half a second back, and Marco Wittmann for Rover Racing, and Christopher. Uh, no, uh, 72 is the BMW of Max Hesse behind the wheel. I was going to say Chris Hesse, that's Chris Harzer, Max Hesse. And that code 120, Peter, that you were talking about has been upgraded to a code 60 in the Schwalbe Trans. Oh. So that's going to slow lap times down again. So by my calculations, and correct me if I'm wrong, dear listener, I reckon the top 25, I think that actually the top 26 now, so all of the best placed of the SP9s and the SPX Glickenhaus have pitted. Uh, the Cup 2 cars just they go a little bit longer and they don't quite burn as much fuel. This Lance David Arnold has just gone past Antares out. Glickenhaus on Lion Speed Porsche position on the track but not in class of course there and we've gone through the first hour of course we've slipped through that almost without noticing peter that's uh, doesn't time fly when you're enjoying yourself just to cruise well, we'll if you're in these cars <laughs> <laughs> you'd hope so wouldn't you you definitely would hope so uh, i'm super impressed by falcon and never they're never far out of it are they john they're, they're always there or thereabouts in in some form or other and they're just one of those teams that they they don't seem to have bad luck uh, and that's purely down to i think just just superb preparation and experience um and they're just always up there in the mix and you can never never discount them no matter who drives for them to be honest they've got a very good strong uh good and strong driver lineup but it uh, they just it's it's just a, such a great team and why wouldn't you want to go and drive for them let's uh, take a few quotes from drivers after their first stints ricardo fella said i wasn't able to pull away quite as i'd hoped in that number 16 uh, phoenix audi uh, share a sport phoenix audi he said, uh, so it didn't quite work as well as we'd hoped at the beginning. Then it was Christoph's turn uh, and was able to slip past in the slipstream. But it's good, consistent pace. The car's working well. The guys are doing a good, jo good job. Traffic's exciting, really. Uh, a few times I felt I, felt I had to uh, smoothly slow down, but you can tell everyone is still a bit cautious. And uh, that's pretty uh, much a good thing. He said, uh, Danny Sufi out of the Lamborghini Huracan, number seven. Start was wild, but I stayed out of trouble in the first lap, but I did get stuck behind a car and lost a lot of time. It's a learning experience for everybody. She gained information at every lap. The start was stupid, <laughs> said Lika Ludwig in the Ferrari, the Frickadelli car. Got held up, had the worst start in years. After that was okay, we're somewhere in the top 10, so. That's all right. Sven Muller thought the start was fun. First two laps was able to match the pace of the two Audis. After that, we caved a little bit. Grip is still there at the moment. Not easy to read traffic, but with more driving time, you get back into the swing. Uh, the start was fun, said Chris Harzer. At the beginning, the tyres were too cold, but things got better and better. The traffic was pleasant. And the car worked very well. We've still got to do a bit of fine tuning, but we're close to top performance it appears our car is bulletproof you see that could come back and haunt you chris and that really could the rest of the team have literally got their head in their hands at the moment as they are uh, hearing me read that out we're on lap eight at the moment uh, we are uh, down to 70 minutes completed so two hours and uh, 10 minutes just on two hours 10 minutes still to go i'm, I'm just on the ground I'm just fascinated, okay. John, by the 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 the, um, the the drive was pleasant. Quote. That's brilliant. 
the traffic was pleasant. Is the traffic, what he said. Thank you. Awesome. The traffic was pleasant. I know. Just... That's even more. <laughs> does, does he mean they were waving at him as he went by? <laughs> he meant, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure that that maybe that hasn't translated quite as it, it should have from the German. Chris Harzer is pretty cool. Um, in fairness, uh, so let me give you then after another half an hour of running, you know the top. Uh, positions but I'll run them down very quickly the seven and a half seconds after those first pit stops between Sheriff Sports Audi number 16 and the number 33 Falk and Porsche uh, in second that's Chris Bays and Klaus Baxler Fred uh, Vervich is with the second Sheriff Sport Phoenix car in third place that's the number 15 he's uh, actually that that timing has come down and we've got a spin on the Grand Prix circuit so I'll come back to that run down in just a second I think that car's just left the pits um, I have a suspicion that that might be the triple four car but bear with me um, and we'll wait for that to be identified by race control was that a Cayman? is that the corn car or was it was a 911? just caught uh, the look of it as it was spinning come back to that in a moment uh, I think it's getting going again as we've now got a green track at Schwalbenschwanz so or whatever the problem was there that has been sorted uh, so where did I get down to? I got down to Fred Favish, then Tim Heinemann then Thomas Prining, so three seconds between first and second, four between second and third, ten between third and fourth that's the second of the four cars, the four and four then Manti, uh, just half a second further back, that's still a cracking battle and as I suggested, the Mercedes team Bilstein, so get speed and Bilstein, Mercedes Hassel and Thomas Prining, the fifth, sixth and seventh, nine, eleven, one, thirty and four it's Max and Goats that's been a really good first run then from the Bilstein guys. They have made up by positions by stopping earlier because they, remember, were right at the back of that start group after their infraction. Top 10 made up by Rover Racing's BMW number 98, Mark Vittman, now behind the wheel. And he is in eighth. It's Max Hesse, the team RMG BMW, the 72, in ninth. And they're having a cracking battle with just six seconds further back. Nico... Varone behind the wheel of the Frigadelli racing team. Uh, Ferrari, that is your top 10. In the classes, Klickenhaus leads in 24th position in SPX Club 2, Black Falcons Porsche. It is Gabriella Piana in the number 27 in Cup 2. In Cup 3, Avia W and S Motorsport in their 962 numbered Porsche. They're in 40th. In 46, Dua Motorsport has the boss man behind the wheel and uh, that number 55 leading SP11 in 46th position it is Hyundai Motorsport in the 830 Mark Bessing leading TCR in 50th position uh, Schmickler Performance powered by Ravenel uh, Ravenol in SP10 uh, leads that's the 165 car and that's 51st 52nd Door Motorsport in SP8 T um, that's a change then because that was the 150 that was leading there earlier that's uh, Jimmy Broadbent's car we'll keep an eye on that then I'll go and find out what's going on with that SP40 is the Subaru the number 88 there in 55th in 68th is the best of the alternative fuel car that's the triple three Max Cruiser racing machine the BMW 240i Adrenaline Motorsport with Manhattan Wheels that's the 650 plus line racing team lead SP7 uh, with their number 80 car in 79th position in 80th position is our next class leader uh, and that is another adrenaline car to number 502 that's the rear wheel drive vt2 v6 has another adrenaline car that's their third of four class leaders this is the 396 in 83rd position team mertens motorsport lead the front wheel drive vt2 category with the 491 in 87th and 89th the 702 is the leader and that is v4 uh, leader in v4 hoffer racing sorry v5 is the fourth of the adrenaline motorsport teams the triple four car is uh, leading that v5 category in 90th three more to go uh, 109th position for the hoffer racing sp6 leader with one of the princes in not sure whether it's alex or chantal and it is Hoffer Racing by Bonk Motorsport in the BMW class, the, the 
885 and 115th, and in 119th, it is the Dacia, which is running again, the blue and orange 318. It is currently sitting at the bottom of the timing screen in 123rd position. Actually, I think it's higher than that now because I think that car's uh, passed some machines. I think that is. Uh, up in, no, it is. It's in one. It's in uh, 118th position. That car. So it is. Uh, it has moved up. It still doesn't look particularly speedy, though, if I'm honest. As all the Cup Two cars have come, top seven Cup Two cars have all hit the pits at the same time. From the bottom end of the top 20. But there will be people who will be delighted to see that Dacia Logan back again. And it looks like they've got some sponsorship on that car this year as well they struggled a little bit in the previous years but uh, now peter is that a right rear puncture on the dot uh, left rear puncture sorry yes and that's the that's the aston isn't it is that uh it's certainly one of the astons and it's smoking a lot you're absolutely right john that's definitely definitely a puncture uh just coming up to tear garden now it'll come to into our view that we get to see of that very shortly but it's uh, you've got to get that all the way back that's the the falcon Hall's car of course that's the um holman size assenheimer and autumn car number 35 car uh yeah left rear puncher that tight the carcass is still on the rim uh, which means it's not going to do too much damage and uh, uh, as you mentioned earlier john about uh, Stuart hall saying you know no matter how slow you drive it as a driver it's never slow enough and the team will never thank you for that and it's it's that, that collateral damage you can do with that car that tire all the way around but it looks like it's it's cost a lot of time but uh, it's getting it in slowly and hopefully no other damage to it is that the 36 do we think or the 35 the 35 john Oh, really, the better placed of the two cars, Cuba and Gear Maziak, at the wheel of that car, then that car was 13th in class after the pit stop. Um, Cuba uh, listed in, sorry, that's the, no, that's the 34 car, the pit start, yeah, yes. 30, 35, then it's Ben Matt, uh, Matt, in that car, Matt Zatist in that car. Uh, apologies, that's the one that he shares with uh, Chandler Hull and Patrick Assenheimer. Chandler, the Texan. A very bad look for them. And that happened at just before the Schwalbenschwanz, Peter. So coming down the hill uh, through the one of the very fastest parts of the circuit. If that went there as he was uh, heading down the hill, and he's kept it out of the wall. He's done a really good job if he's come through Flansgarden and it's gone coming down to the uh, Schwalbenschwanz. That is another part of the circuit, as Peter was talking about earlier. There are parts of this track that are like a straight track. I, I, know, it's a, I know it's a road circuit, in inverted commas, and it, it isn't a public road, but it's a toll road. Um, absolutely no runoff in some of these places. So in the meantime, uh, pit reporters are down at Black Falcon. And that's Gabriele Piana, who was leading the cup class for Porsche 992-type GT3 cup cars. Heck of a battle going on behind him. Uh, they've given up that lead uh, to K. Kramer Racing now um, after the pit stops. And second and third are two of the Mulner cars, the Peter Turting driven number 124. And the 125 in third place is Hans Wehrmann. And in fourth position is the Hankook competition sponsored car. That's not running on Han Hankook tyres, that is just the sponsored car. That's still running on the control tyres in class. Uh, and that is Stephen Shaw. He's just got in that car to go from uh, Ricardo Bruins. I know that. Excuse me, that is the car that's running on the Hankooks. My apologies. That's the SPX car. 
So fourth is the Black Vault at number 103, which Gabrielli got out of. And he's handed that car, the number 103, over to his teammate, Mustafa Nemet Kaya. Kaya. Fourth for that, ahead of their teammates, the Black Vault at number 148. That'll be a battle all the way to the end, that car, that class. And it'll come down to who has the shortest last stop. A um, couple of quotes here, Peter. Uh, the Karsten Knechters uh, out of the, B, B, the VW Beetle RSR said, it's interesting to be on the track for the first time with this new car. We did a performance test in Mendig. The chassis can only be adjusted here on the Nordschleifer. That's what we're working with, getting the chassis to work properly. We've got a few clean laps under our belt now. We'll try some different settings tonight and tomorrow. Uh, and if you've been wondering what's going on with the number 711 BMW 325i, the Eiffelkind BMW uh, hasn't been able to do any meaningful laps. They are having their transmission changed in that car. Done some hard work for those guys, but hopefully Müller Müller and Landsnitsch car will be back later on today or tomorrow. Uh, RSL underscore studio, by the way, if you want to get in touch with us. It's me, John Heindorf, and him, Peter Snowden, with just under two hours and 40 minutes to go. And already, Peter, we're seeing the guys at the front of the field. The pace is uh, is pretty close. Nobody's gone quicker than that lap set earlier by the number 16. Uh, 114 6. Uh, Chris Mace in that car at the moment. Well, so it was that, uh, that clear lap, wasn't it, at the beginning, where it's the, the best opportunity to do that? And well, they're still going to get much of it because it, it's a rolling start. You don't actually get that clear lap that much, do you, really, in terms of a, of a lap time? So, no, it just it doesn't quite work that. I was just looking there, John. I wasn't very familiar with I have to confess, and I've, I've done the, the old um, research in the background, uh, so I'm quiet for a moment, of um, this, this Beetle RSR, which appears to be based on an RSI. Uh, road car. Yes. Yeah. Which Very are, fair uh, cars. Though, what exactly? Which I, I had heard about, but I have to say, forgive me, and I, I, I'd kind of forgotten about. Um, but it's um, so it's a 3.2 litre V6 in it. In it. Yeah. Um, it, it's basically a wide-bodied, like a little mini Porsche. Hence, I guess the RSR bit, isn't it? Um, well, yeah. Except the engine's in the front. Remember. So basically, remember, it's running on a Golf chassis. So it's yeah. basically like a Golf G60. So yeah. it's all-wheel drive. Um, as, as I remember, um, they've been around 2020. at least a couple of years. Yeah, 2022, you're right, John. Yeah. Yeah, that's when it came there out. Was start, there was, they've got a sort of ducktail spoiler. Uh, yeah. And, and basically, they, um, they built these. They were a standard They had just over 200 horsepower. Um, but they were a brilliant, brilliant piece of... of of engineering, um, 250 were sold because um, now that's a number that you might recognise um, because it is a homologation number. But as yet, they hadn't really done anything with it. So this, I think, is the first time we've seen a, a full racing version of it. It, it was, as far as I'm aware, I mean, there was an RSI. Um, Cup Series, if I remember rightly, but I can't remember what happened to that. Why? Wow. I, I, I was not as familiar with that as, as perhaps I should have been, but yeah, it's um, it's quite a little thing, isn't it? I went to look at um, trying to find one, and they are they command pretty high premiums nowadays. I think there were sixty-five grand new. What was that? Certainly was built, was yeah. built in Mexico. Yeah. The things you learn, hey? There you go. Well, there's always one car at the end of a weekend that you go, I haven't seen that all weekend. <laughs> um, so that'll probably be, you know, half an hour to go tomorrow. We'll see something that we haven't realised. The Beamers, 
I was going to say having a battle, but I don't think they are. There was a flash of the indicator from the GT Racing, GT Tires Racing, BMW, to the cars behind. Uh, now, let's get back to Cup 2, where K. Kramer Racing uh, is leading. And the, they're just coming to complete a lap in 27th on down. So the number 121 leading that with Christopher Brook behind the wheel, a man from Cold, Cologne. And in behind the familiar blue and white and the H&R colours of Mulner. And there's a couple of Mulner cars right up the sharp end of the field. It's one, two, four in second from one, two, three in third so that'll be peter turting who's taken over from moritz krantz and in the one two three in third it is now who is it in that car for mark Mulner? it's uh herr hofmeister who wasn't listed to be in that car so now i'll have to check their other cars to see um if he's transferred across. Uh, so let's have a look at the one, two, three. And that was, should have been Tobias Vasquez and Marcel Hopper. And it's Marcel behind the wheel. Okay. Well, we happen to know Marcel Duke, who is engineering those cars. Now he'll be busy at the moment, but we'll see if we can find out how um, and who is in that third car but the battle for the lead coming to the end of the Grand Prix circuit through the Vidal chicane and turning from the middle of the road left through was effectively an uphill hairpin onto the north loop down through Sabine Schmidt's curve named after the first lady of the Nürburgring Nordschleife Anton Ruf down in the pit lane being interviewed at the moment. That's the German you can hear in the background. And that is because their Cayman MR, or RS should I say, is in the pit lane. They're looking under the right rear. That looks either exhausty. Um, there's an engine under there somewhere. I've yet to see um, an engine in a, in a Cayman or a Boxster. It sits a very, very long way down. Flat six or flat four in the 718 models. Uh, this is from Dave Oldcock, Peter. I'm going to ask you this because um, you've been talking to some of the drivers. Um, it, is, it is a bit of a movable feast, the answer to this question, but Dave Oldcock's tweeted in using the hashtag RSL underscore 24 to RSL underscore studio. How does tyre wear over a one hour or thereabouts stint at the Nordschleifer? compare with other tracks long tracks maybe the four hour four mile lap of road america or sebring is this track a high tire wear circuit um, i would say not so in mean, time it's time it doesn't matter what's going on it's not i mean it's pretty technical on various bits of it but it's not massively certainly with some of the resurfaced bits now um so pro probably not, but you, you do have to manage it. And it's, I think, I think the, the thing that's different for a driver around here, uh, John and Dave, is, is that you, a, a lap is so much longer, it's, it's different lap to lap. Whereas yeah. ordinarily you sort of have two or three laps where it's sort of, it's one bit, then it's a bit less, it's a bit less as the degradation comes in. Here it's, and Drivers tend to use that because we tend to drive by numbers because we're, we're pretty simplistic beasts and we like reference points and turn-ins and all that kind of stuff and you know, signage at the side of the track and things we can see. So you get used to taking a corner a certain way or a certain pace and you can't do that here. It's something else that's different again about the Nürburgring because next lap's different to last lap because you've done so many more Ks in between. It might be 35, 40 kilometers difference and that, that's a lot. Third different leader of the race now as Klaus Bachler has gone through for Falcon Motorsports in the number 33 Porsche so we've had both the Scherer Sport uh, 16 and 15 cars leading for Audi and now Klaus Bachler as they come to the end of the hats and back 
is leading by a couple of tenths of a second. The last bit I can answer of Dave's, he says uh, he's doubled stinting possibility with a uh, little drop off. There's not really that much point in double stinting because you've got enough time to change the tyres. Now, what I've got to remind myself for the race, um, is there a tyre, a, a mandatory amount of tyres that you cannot use more than? I don't think there is uh, in the 24 at the Nürburgring. Uh, I, I think uh, you're right, John. I don't think there is, no. Um, and I'll... I'll recheck when we get into race week in, uh, into the technical specs dear but I don't think there's much point in double stinting if you're coming in at the end of a race um, and you've only got two or three laps to do there might be advantage in leaving on a set of warm tyres for two or three extra laps and then basically just taking the time in the pit stops that it would take to put the fuel in rather than risking a cross thread or something like that. Battle for the lead, by the way, going past uh, one of the Seats and heading through Adenauer Forest and now climbing up towards one of the higher parts of the circuit on the uh, western side of the track. Great part of the circuit now, starting to plunge down here, look all the way down to Brideshite, which is where the uh, the road crosses the high street of Adenau and that I think is probably one of my favourite parts of the circuit as they go down uh, the hill through uh, down to um, Metzgefeld and Kallenhardt Versaifen, Breischeid at the bottom of the hill then Exmuller, Bergwerk between Exmuller and Bergwerk, that's the Nicky Lauda accident spot. Bergwerk's super important because it, it's all uphill there to the carousel, pretty much. So you get that one wrong at Bergwerk and you pay for it for the next couple of miles. It's also an incredibly, incredibly fast part of the circuit, isn't it, John? If ever you see some of the onboards that uh, we've seen or witnessed some of the some of the driving, we often get it with uh, some of the Porsches up there, and it's it, it, it's where these drivers come into their own, sort of through there and up to uh, Kastrichen, all the way up to the carousel, that super, super fast section of the track. And when you see them weaving through other traffic or just making those split-second decisions with which way to go and hoping that the driver in front will stay exactly where they are yes uh, that's that's the key bit is and you know don't, don't change direction don't change speed of direction we've got faster car class cars approaching you um in fact we're just right on cue now we've got uh, uh julian backlet in the in the 33 falcon doing exactly that run and just matt he's got a clear run to have just maximizing every little bit of you know not necessarily runoff but you know a little bit of curb a little bit of flat tarmac area uh, and that's the job done. Big right-hander, big break, and then up into the carousel where I just love that still. I mean, it's, it's, it's the NLS uh, logo still, isn't it? That the carousel. And it's just, yeah, it's just fabulous. The Caracciola well, carousel, as it should be called. Yeah, and because Rudolf Caracciola was uh, legend has it that he was the first person. It was a drainage ditch originally. That concrete <laughs> yeah. on the the left-hand side the inside and Caracciola realized that, that by dropping down into it he could actually keep his speed up a little bit using the banking and almost a bit of rallying uh, there as he um, ditch hooked it in, in some respects drivers uh, will be drivers that, that's right and uh, Klaus Backlet uh, doing is it close in that, in that car at the moment yes it is Klaus yes. Backlet doing exactly that in the lead number 33 um Quick note, and this again is not good news for Peter. Uh, we've had the Kuba Gimaziak number 34 Aston Martin from the Valken Horse Motorsport team. It's been a bad couple of minutes for them. I'll come back to the battle at the front of uh, Cup 2 in a moment as there's a positional change there. And that is Peter Turton going to the lead of Cup 2 as he heads onto the Grand Prix circuit. Uh, but Kuba Germaziak has had contact with the barriers in Sabina Schmidt's corner. It has, however, continued. I'll see where that car drops down to. It was sitting just outside the top 10 uh, for Kuba Germaziak. But a new leader in Cup 2. 
Marcel Duc will be delighted, as will plenty of our collective, as that blue and white car with Peter Terting at the wheel, very experienced driver, Peter, uh, takes the lead of Cup 2 from the Kirk Kramer Racing Machine, the 121 gold and black car in second. Um, so I had a Sorry, Peter, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to ignore the Aston update, thank you. Uh, uh, we've got another code... Sorry. That's all right, I know. I know. Uh, we've, done another, we've got another code 60 uh, just between, well, the end of uh, Verschiefen and before Exmuller. This is for the uh, 651 Adrenaline Motorsport uh, BMW M240i uh, car. You can, that's obviously in the 240 class. Um, and that's, that's just stopped literally just before Exmuller. Exmuller is a sort of a, a left-right kink coming out of Verschiefen. So a right-left kink. And it, uh, it's just not... Uh, it's just parked there at the side of the road at the moment. Whether it's had any connection with the barrier is not, I don't know. Um, don't know what's happened. Uh, the, you said the 34 Aston has continued, John, but uh, do we know how much? Because I was watching some of the... There's a there's a camera angle we get sometimes, John, you may have spotted, that uh, is looking back. We've got more cameras than uh, ever uh, this year. Looking back uh, from the top of uh, hats and back towards the north, yeah. towards the uh, Sabine Schmitz curve there. And I noticed there, I've always said that that was a, a defining part of joining the north side because it's really narrow, and that's when they focus you off the wide GP circuit onto that bit. But the drivers have been running past the end of a barrier there and then almost moving over to the right slightly to use a little bit of tarmac there, which would be actually the area where you pull the cars back into where they park. Uh, retired cars to get a run down to hats and bikes. So I just hope he hasn't clipped the barrier there, which would suggest if he had, it'd be, be rear end damage, which means drive trains and all sorts, doesn't it, if you don't look out? And it looks as though Brook has got back ahead of Turting. So Keir Kramer racing back to the head of Cup 2 uh, in the battle for overall 27th and 28th. But that is a class lead going backwards and forwards as they were getting to the end of the hats and back. Keep an eye on that. We won't, I doubt we'll see them till they come back through. Neither of those cars with the onboards on. Meantime, BMW versus AMG versus BMW with the uh, Rover racing BMW of, uh, this is for eighth position, Mark Wittman, Matty Gertz and Max Hesse all together, the black, yellow and white BMW, the Bilstein yellow and blue AMG and then the Shell BMW. And behind them, I think that's Phil Ellis in the next of the Team Get Speed cars. Uh, yes, it is. The number nine in the highlighted yellow car. So that is shaping up to be... Is that Phil Ellis or is it the... Is it the Schnitzelheim car, which is a little bit of laps down? I'll get a better look at that as they come off the Grand Prix circuit. They've got traffic ahead of them. As they head down the hill towards the Vidal chicane and then ultimately turning left onto the circuit, onto the long circuit. It's very tight indeed, particularly for that ninth spot. Maxi Gertz has got his mirrors full. Oh, and there was a vehicle, there's several vehicles there, Peter. That was a good spot. And uh, just going on to the Nordschleifer and then turning into the Sabina Schmitz curve. So this, I think there's barrier repair going on and that's what they're trying to do. Those guys there who were battling for 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th barely lifted off there and that's covered by waved yellow. So they may get a slap on the wrist for that. Yeah, indeed. I was just looking at the number 34 Aston lap time there with the Gubu Gamaziak at the wheel. That's done, as I say, it's in 14th position. That did an 8.17 on its last... Lap. So it's not it's not out of out of sync with timing with everybody else. I mean, uh, lost yeah. one place. Yeah, that's all. Uh, which, if he's had a little bit of an off there, Peter, and given the so little runoff, to have lost one place, he's still running. I think you'd take that. He's got away, hasn't so he? Take that. Ah, uh, no, my apologies. Sorry, it's 8:17. It's his best lap. His last lap was an 8:30. Now, there you go, that makes yes, sense. Yes, that makes more sense, yeah. So it has, has lost a bit of time there. That said, uh, Van Tour, uh, in the a couple places behind in the M4 BMW, that's done an 8.29. Uh, 
Beretta in Mercedes. He's on 8, 828, so it's a little bit out to me where it was running up for fourth place with Debbie Pittard that started that car, a bit different. Yeah, but Mick Grenier, who went past him on that lap, did it at 822. Yeah. So that's interesting. Eight seconds uh, going quicker. On to the, yeah, going on to the Grand Prix track is the number 150. This is the car that won on Sunday in class last weekend. Uh, currently running in 40th position, uh, 46th position, sorry, second in SP8T to the Door Motorsport Aston Martin GT4, the number 169. Now, at the moment, that's got at MG Sharudin behind the wheel, races uh, under his tag. It's that car that's right with him. I don't think that's a battle for class. That is the Avia uh, leading Cup 3 Porsche there that's right behind him. So that is not a battle for class position, although it is a battle for 46th and 47th. Fifty, then um, it's Mikhail Sharudin, along with Steve Brown and Jimmy Broadbent, who drove the car last weekend. Manuel Metzger is drafted into that. Uh, Anglo, German, and now Swiss team lineup for the Ravenol ADAC 24 Hours of the Nürburgring. Now let's get back to the sharper end of the field and the faster cars the Audi Share Sport PHX at the moment going through the Caracciola carousel second place for Chris Meeks you can see just ahead of him the distinctive Fulton tyre coloured Klaus Bachler driven Fulton Motorsports Porsche Porsche, Audi, Audi, Porsche, Porsche, Mercedes for your top six, separated by 43 seconds. And if you go down one minute, you're going to take in the top dozen. All SP9 cars. Klingenhaus's pace has dropped away just a little bit. Let's bring you up to date with what's going on then. Falcon leads with the 33 car from the two Shearer Sport Audi, 16 and 15. And uh, then it's Tim Hain. Heinemann in there, Falcon Motorsports, number 44, Mansai with Corello in fifth, sixth, 130, get speed, Shilkun on behind the wheel, Nico Varone getting his first taste of the Frigatelli Ferrari, although he has driven a 296 before, the number one runs in seventh, Rover Racing in eighth with their BMW number 98, uh, then it is, where are we, a 72 BMW for Team RMG, Mercedes Bilstein in fourth position, having started from the back. Team Get Speed in 11th with the number nine. The 27 Ab Sports Line Lamborghini in 12th. Mick Grenier for Team Get Speed, number eight Mercedes. Then Vulcan Horses, number 34 Aston. Then Herbeth in the red and white, the Fat Turbo, number 15. Uh, position 15, sorry, for the number five. And the top 20 made up with the 99 BMW for Rover Racing. The number three Mercedes for Team Bilstein. The Dynamic GT Porsche, number 54. The Team Advan and HRT. AMG number six. And Conrad's Lamborghini Huracan make up your top 20. Uh, in the classes, Glickenhaus leads for SPX in 22nd. Cup 2 is the KK Racing car, but it might have changed three times uh, since they come across the line, probably has. Door Motorsports 55 leads SP11 with uh, uh, KTM. Um, they also lead in SP18, GT4, TCRs, Hyundai's, works 830 in 41st position. Schmickler. Powered by Ravenol, lead SP10 in 43rd with their 165. Avia WS Motorsport, that's uh, yellow and gold, or gold and yellow. Cup 3, number 962, that's the Porsche Cayman, 46th position. The blue STI Subaru leads SP14 in 60th. Max Cruiser Racing has the alternative fuel lead with their number 10 car in 63rd. Adrenaline lead 240i class with their 662. Plus Line Racing lead the SP7 class. Adrenaline in V6 with the 396 in the 80th. Adrenaline in VT2 with the number 500. 
Uh, Mertens Motorsport VT2 front wheel drive for the 491 is an 85th. Back to Adrenaline for their fourth class leader. Their team sponsored by Manhattan Wheels this year, the triple four leads. V5 and 89th. Hoffer Racing have just gone to the lead of SP6 with either Chantal or Alex Prince driving that 207 car in 102nd. Uh, ahead of Kevin Sports and Racing 750, who are now leading V4. That's a change in 103rd position. Hoffer Racing by Buck Motorsport lead the small BMW class with their 85. And the Dacia is still running in 119th and leads SP3T. That's how it stands with two hours. 15 minutes to go. Uh, I am getting a... I am getting some information that the BMW M240 number 651 has had an incident at Versailles area. And if I'm translating it right, um, it says has rolled over. I was just about to tell it, say, say it exactly the same, John. I've, I've got the same reports. Um, I think it's possibly a little bit further Aramberg, maybe. Um, but I'm just going to, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch the, um, I've watched a bit of onboard here, which I've got on the on the GPS tracker with the number 33, which happens to be our lead car, of course, the Backler uh, uh, Falcon Porsche, and see if it goes past that ever eagle eyes, if I can see anything, if we want to see anything there at all. He's just gone past the RSI BMW, and he's got Chris Mace right with him as they go around the far side of the Cup 3. Porsche Cayman now coming to the end of the hats and back. And Mace is all over the leader as they ride the curb on the right hand side. Don't touch the curb on the left there as you come to the end of the hats and back. And then starting to go downhill across the bridge. Just reprofiled a little while. Here comes Chris Mace starting to climb now. Heading up to this tricky right hander. The Porsche staying to the right of the road. Right in the middle of the road. There's no way by there. Maybe at the top of the hill that there's an opportunity as they go through the Swedish cross left hand and that's where they're coming to now the Porsche pulls away two or three cars lengths brake just a tap a dab of the brakes coming into that left hand and more to keep the car on the ground now Arenberg top of the foxhole all newly resurfaced here and a clear track ahead of the battle for the lead this is marvellous stuff as Klaus Backler Dives down, left, right, left, right. Just as you get to the bottom of the hill and start to climb, get the car balanced. Dab on the brakes, down one gear, turn in. Dab on the brakes, down another gear. Dab on the brakes, down a third time and get the car right to the right-hand side and punch out of Adenar Forest. Slight climb there, you can use the left-hand side and the block paving over the top of the curbs and Mises right with them now as they're climbing Again, let the hill do your braking. There's just a little lift off through these two left-handers. No brake from the leader there. Now over the top of the hill. Heading down towards the sweeping right-hander. And now down into Vipperman. And there's traffic just when the leader didn't need it. Chris Mace goes to the right side. Ah, yellow flags. Yellow flags. As they come into that area, now where's the green? That's what Mies will be looking at. There's track vehicles on the right-hand side. So he moves to the right, to the left, excuse me. Down into the siphon, which is the tricky first or second gear left-hander. But it's in a little bit of a ball and there is a car upside down there. There's a, I reckon, Peter, there was a car upside down to the right there of the leaders as they head down the hill towards the lowest part of the circuit, just before they cross the bridge that goes over the main street. That's where they are now, the alternative entry to the, for the tourist laps on their right-hand side. This all repaved a few years ago, so you can't use the change in tarmac as where you lift off and turn in. Now to up towards Bergwerk. Super impressive run there. So I think, Peter, we can see it then that we have seen a car upside down. Yeah, I would agree. And that was, I think it looks like the 240i. A bit difficult to tell from that angle. I'm not used to seeing it that way. But that would tie in with it being the 651 Adrenaline Motorsports uh, 240i. Um, 
So I'm not sure whether it was Annick, uh, Yannick Hemmels or Marvin Marino at the wheel of that. Uh, as long as they're I okay. Marino I, I, yes, I'm, I'm guessing it's him at Hemmels. Um, it was swapped by now, I'm sure. Um, was it six, 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 five, six, five, one. So I'm just trying to, uh, I'm just scrolling all the way down to get to find that. Six, five, one, Marino, it was. It's actually still Marvin Marino. Is up listed on the timing screen. Okay. Eight maybe laps he's completed. doing half the race. Yeah. yeah maybe he's going yeah. to do half the race. Yeah. Under the half, got under the 20 odd minutes to go or 10 minutes to go, and then they were swapped over and done two hours. Um, oh, could have done that. Uh, Toyota Supra coming down to start the lap. This is the Toyo Tires 171 machine. Uh, Toyota with their GT4 package now. And a brand new, it's uh, Michael Tishner, by the way, at the wheel of that car. Toyo tyres with ring racing. Sitting in 50 watt position. Uh, uh, 52nd position and second in SP10 to their team car with Andreas Gulden behind the wheel. They're in 42nd position, so a little way up the road. A new GT3 car coming from Toyota and Lexus. Uh, they've been strategically le leaking pieces of video footage of it driving around the Mount Fuji circuit in Japan. We don't know what it's going to be called yet. Of course, they are running the Lexus RCF in IMSA and in FIA World Endurance Championship. That car would be eligible to race here in SP9, uh, SP9 yeah, in GT3. Um, and as we mentioned earlier on, if you weren't with us, number of Toyota drivers, works drivers, completed enough laps to get their permit last weekend. The permit regulations changed this year um, to allow drivers to amass enough time in the car in just the two four-hour races last weekend to get their ring permit. Double wave yellows get a chance to have another look, maybe from the on board of the I 30, which is going a little bit slower as they come down to Versailles in the pits from fourth in SP10. The Schmickler performance blue and white came in GT, GT4. Was that car back on its wheels there, Peter? It did look that way, didn't it? Well done. We've got a flatbed there as well, but obviously you can't put a car on a flatbed if it's upside down. Be back in the race, surely. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, before the questions start coming in uh, at RSL underscore studio, hashtag RSL underscore N24, uh, you are allowed outside assistance if the car comes back to the pits, either on the end of a tow rope or on the surface roads. Obviously, if it comes back, um, you lose on the surface roads, you won't get the lap that you started. Um, but fix it, get it back out again. The outside assistant rules, outside assistance rule that you have in other forms of motorsport, world championships, FIA, WEC, Le Mans, etc., uh, does not apply here. Formula One as well. It's basically uh, have at it, boys. Oh, are we already into our next set of pit stops? It we are. We are. As Chris Meese has come in from second place. And that means he releases Frederick Verwijs to try and chase down Klaus Backler. The gap between them as they went across the line was nine and a half seconds. The distinctive green and black helmet of Chris Meese getting out of that car. No rush because of the mandated, mandated pit stop time. So. I think that should be getting in, isn't it? I think you're right, yes, I think it is, John. I think that's Ricardo's helmet. Ricardo started the car. Number of drivers are listed in multiple cars this weekend. I think that's just in case things go wrong with one or the other. Or they wanted to get... Um, they wanted to get a few extra laps. 
Ah, oh, now this is interesting. Can't get the door net to clip back on. Now, Peter, what were you saying about having look or no look when you get a puncture? <laughs> well, exactly. That's, that's, that's the place to do it, isn't it? This is the uh, this is the number 800, isn't it, Scirocco? And uh, oh, very kindly there, just giving away out of the way of one of the Rover BMWs as going into the pit lane. He hasn't reached the 60k mark, so he's just moved across to one side, even indicating to the right, John, to let the other yep. car through. I mean, how gentlemanly is that at this level of racing still? Uh, so this is the uh, this is the 800, the uh, Florian Hadler Alpha. Alta car, uh, Golf 7. Seems, I, can't, I can't believe there's a seventh version of a Golf. Yeah, we, we remember the originals, don't we, John? We were, uh, at, school. We were at school, of course. Yeah, but, right. Yeah, yeah, OK, OK. Um, you might have been. <laughs> I'm, only, I'm, only, I'm only within a... I think we're within a school year of one another, John. Oh, are we? Yes. Yeah. It's Bradley the oldest than me than you, is Correct, it? correctly. It was Sebastian Shearman who brought that car in. Um, Florian Haller started the yeah. car, the um, man who lives in the very beautiful St. Leonhard in Italy. Um, oh, it's where he lives, at least. And out go those cars that have stopped first. And again, an extra lap for a number of the other cars. So coming in were the Shearer Sport uh, Phoenix car, and it was Stippy getting in, Frank Stippler. Uh, also came in uh, Max Hesse for BMW RMG in the 72, Maxi Goetz for the Team Bilstein number four. They've done well to have come through all of those SP9 cars, and Rover Racing, Dries Van Toor brought the BMW in uh, as well. Ian McCarthy says, it doesn't matter how many times you do this on the same or with the game pad, seeing people do it in real life with the same abandon is just breathtaking. I'm getting sweaty palms just watching the onboards, says Ian McCarthy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bastian Boost just got out of the 420. 982 Cayman GT4. He said, if you're actually used to a faster car like I am, this has been quite relaxing. Uh, for us, it's about getting our laps together and getting everything together for the permits. Tomorrow, the compulsory laps on the track are a good experience, especially when it gets dark. You can't really practice that otherwise. So he's in a car, um, the number 420. Bastian's got a huge amount of... Um, uh, uh, of experience. His teammate is one Philippe Nasser, who's doing his permit tomorrow. Meantime, the hun another Hyundai with a problem, Peter, on the Dottinger, moving slowly, driver's left. Yeah, and it's so often a place, isn't it, where we see cars, uh, that was, maybe it's just a camera shot there, but we just, uh, uh, it looks like a Hyundai again. It is a Hyundai. It is, it is. Is that left from puncture again? does look that way. It's certainly sitting down on that side. Of now, is it crabbing at the back? Oh, uh, good call. Good call. Uh, this, uh, the, the right rear is not, not as well. Yes, so it, you can see the right rear on the camera shot we've got at the moment, John, just looking down, back down the notching hoe, a slightly long shot, as it were, but slightly foreshortened, but it's seen that when he sort of lifted off or a little bit there, the, the, the wheel towed in around, so almost like a, a tow link issue or something. I, that. I think that's the 492. Um, which was in, uh, where have I just lost it? It was in fourth. That's the Team Mertens car. I think that was leading its class not so very long ago. And if that is the case, that is a disaster for that car. Um, let me just check that, 492. But certainly we had the Team Mertens car leading at one stage. So Alex Georg Sch Schneider at the wheel. Ash, uh, Akshay Gupta, I believe, started that car. So, um, unless they have a team car that's still further up the timing, which I'm now scrolling up to have a look. There's the Keevan car. Oh, no, 
No, it's the Hislop car that still leads. So that is the that is the teammate car to the leading VT2. But he's getting that car back nicely done. Best of the TCRs, by the way, just going out onto the Nordschleife at the moment is the very well placed 39th Mark Besseng driven Hyundai and Motorsport Elantra. He shares. Uh, well, I mean, he's got more. They probably drive around here in the in the dark with his eyes closed. Mark Besseng also very very good if the rain should fall. And that number 830 with a clear track at uh, Schwedkreutz and heading up to the top of the hill at Adena, uh, excuse me, Arenberg. And now he'll be dropping down. He's with Manuel Lauk and Mikhail Azcona. I think it was the Spanish driver, Mikhail Azcona, who started that car. I'll stand to be corrected on that. Can't believe, Peter, how much smoother it is through the foxhole and actually it allows people to move offline a little easier which is exactly what happened uh, as the uh, black um, apt um, gt3 car went through there on that last lap it is just so much smoother you through the foxhole it, it's a brilliant point john that, uh, that i hadn't thought of actually and uh, it, i've been watching it during the race and thinking how fast they look down there that sounds silly at one of those parts of the circuit but it just looks that bit more but uh, that bit the point you've just made there about being able to change direction and go offline it then presents so many more opportunities to do things uh with different speed differentials and different multi-class racing and that's that's fantastic that can only be going to be good for for the racing in general, I just I, I just would have thought lap times would have come down a bit. As you said look, quite rightly last weekend, it didn't happen then either. The two rounds we had here uh, then, and it, just, it hasn't happened. I just thought it would be. I thought it would have some effect, not massive. I just thought it'd be over a lap, one and a half, two seconds, and I thought it'd be worth. But the, the resurfacing of the different parts of the circuit, not just the foxhole, but it hasn't transpired yet. Peter Snowden and John Hindorf on duty today, and. Tomorrow, another four hours starting at one o'clock local time, we'll be on the air at a quarter past uh, midday for the race. Uh, and that's another four hours. However, I urge you to get up a bit earlier than that and get online because at, I think it's half nine UK time, we are going to be doing the top qualifying. And this is what happens in the top positions uh, in a few weeks' time for the Ravenol AC 24 hours of the Nürburgring. Cars being set off at uh, 20 second or so intervals to have two flying laps, should they require them, um, of the Nürburgring Nordschleife. So bolt on a nice set of tyres, get yourself warmed up and go for it. Absolutely incredible. And that is worth watching tomorrow. Check, go to RadioLamont.com, go scroll down to the bottom of the front page, and that gives us our on air time in British summertime. Have a quick look at that and make sure you join us for that. Uh, Tim Heinemann's leading the race at the moment for Falcon number 44. So that's the fourth different car, I reckon, who has led to another portion. Thomas Prining is in Grello behind. They've not yet made their second stops. It should be Klaus Backler who comes through the lead. No, he's Top in the pits. Three. They're in the pits. Uh, Backler's in the pits. Uh, so they've, they've just stopped. They're in the pits now, just handing over to Julian Andlauer, going back into their number 33, John. Right, so where is Stippy then? He's down in 16th. It's halfway round the Nordschleife. He is the leading car on the Nordschleife. He's done the second stop. So the share of Sport Audi, number 16, then the next one that's done a second stop is the Team RMG. That's now been driven by Charles Vets, number 72. And then I reckon it is... Uh, it's the BMW. No, it's not. It's Mercedes. Tim Bilstein car. Ajit Maini in the number four car. And again, reminder, that started at the very back of the first group. As into the pit lane comes... The Valkenhorst, Valkenhorst Motorsport, Aston. The yeah. White car. Stippler just coming up to the end of uh, dotting her through the tear garden, so onto the pit straight shortly. 
I tell you what, if they've had a spin and, and been off, oh, there's a slight, a very slight misalignment on the boot lid. But I couldn't see anything on the left-hand side. Kuba Masiak is out of the car. Battle for what is the lead right now. Stippler's, Stippler's through. Is he through? Yep. Right. He's through turns one and two already. OK, excellent. And Lau is just leaving the pit lane now. Just literally pit, pit the blend line right now. So Julian and Lau are back in at number 10. Just the two drivers there. So I, I reckon that that gap's opened up a bit between those two cars, the 16 and the 33. Share Sport and Falcon Motorsports. The two cars that are leading at the moment at Adenar Forst with the sun right in their eyes as they're... Actually, that isn't Adenar Forst. It's a bit further around there. Um, just coming down to Vipperman now. I love this part of the track. Yellow flags still out there for that remedial work that's going on uh, down at the hairpin, at the siphon. <laughs> I'm giggling because Thomas Prynan is so close to the back of the Falcon Porsche. Incredible. They're doing some barrier work and there's an awful lot of drying agent there, but the BMW that we, we believe went over, which was the uh, number 631? 651. 651, thank you. Um, that is now on the flatbed, so it's now just about getting the barrier repair done. I think that car's cannoned down through the barriers and done both sides before it's flipped on that car. Going out onto the Nordschleifer, the Pro Sport Aston with uh, what I reckon that's 11th position for that car at the moment, the green and white machine. That is the, uh, the Pro Sport cars we see. Uh, so that's the number, the number 17 car? 17, correct. Sorry, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. And uh, Pro Sport taking on Aston's. They've changed brands over the winter, desperate to get some. I think they were still building these cars towards the back end of last year, so they haven't had a huge amount of time with them. Yeah, it's just, just outside Yelma. the top 10, 11, John, yeah. I think they'll take that, Peter, for this. Yeah. They, it's Yelma Berman behind the wheel, by the way, I should have said that. Yep. Yelma's got plenty of uh, experience. He knows how a GT3 car should feel around here. And they'll be just wanting to make sure that everything's dialed in. Um, and if it is, maybe they'll try for a little bit more performance tomorrow. And I think that's evident in its times, John, because it's it's yeah. best laps an 8.22, uh, which is, you know, it's it, it, it's steady. And that's probably a very good thing to do as well, to just get dialed in. As you say, we said, didn't we, just pre-show when the cars are going out onto the grid, and that, that it was you know, data collecting. And that's what you need to, with a new car, that's what you need to do. Or, or, or get used to it. Exactly. It's exactly, exactly what these are, N24 qualifiers. It's getting yourself match fit for the big one, which is, I have to say, John, only a month away. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> the yellow and black Porsche coming down to the bottom of the hill on the Grand Prix circuit is the number 106, which is uh, Cup 2, but listed as a guest Cup 2 car for Mark Van Gramshorst and uh, Ralph Peter Bonk. Um, Morris Shearing and Florian Vahl have a similar car, uh, as do, oh, actually, um, they're both shown as guest cars, but it, it, that is basically Cup 2 um, Am, that car, but showing as a guest. Now, we've got more course vehicles out on a different part of the circuit. Is that still down towards for Siphon? No, that's still down towards Yeah, I think, Siphon. I think that run down to it, isn't it, John, there, where we yeah. saw it? Yes, of course. I think what you're saying about that uh, that BMW having potentially clipped the barriers left and right and basically rattled itself down all the way there would be self-evident that uh, there's intervention vehicles on the left and we're at the right, and there's all the that's damage right. on the right. And there, it's, there, there don't appear to be many wheels on that car. Just just, ah. just saying. That would, that, would be, that, would be, uh, that would be an impediment to it... Um, Finishing the race, moving. wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, moving. 
Yes. So we're coming down, in fact, we're beyond half distance now. So we're into the second half with an hour and 51 minutes to go. That was Peter Snowden. I'm John Hindhoff. We go back to green. The battle continues. Frank Stittler has got the Mercedes ahead of him, uh, the number six car, and this is not helping him. Stippy is an uh, effective leader of the race. And uh, at the moment, he's being held up a tiny bit by that black number six car uh, ahead of him. Uh, and that car is the Advan HRT AMG. Actually, that isn't that car. That isn't that car at all. My apologies. Just watching John there, some of the uh, little bit of a Julian Andlauer. Uh, I think it's at Bergwerk by the look of it. Uh, um, just, we talk about this multi-class racing. We so often say about uh, you know, drivers having to catch up with uh, somebody else and getting into somebody else's battle. And we just, it was um, Julian uh, Andlauer in the SP9 GT3 category Porsche Falcon car was sitting behind one of the GT4 Supras that in turn was behind something else of a different class. So the GT4 Supra had to clear that car, and back uh, Andlauer had to wait behind that and clear both of them. And it's not not just one other class you're fighting against. Sometimes it can be Correct. exactly. Exactly that, and it's and that's why you've just got to be on your on your top game all the time, and uh, it, it never ceases to amaze me these these drivers at, at all classes as well. And we always talk about the people sort of you know the front here in the SP SP9 GT3 cars, how well they deal with traffic. They can only deal well with traffic if they help as well. And it's the the other classes. And that's just why we have this great permit system, uh, and they and they help enormously. I really. Uh like this quote from Chris Meese. Chris now, of course, a uh, Ford Multimatic works driver. Uh, he's just got out of the number 16 leading car, the Audi, and he says, the Audi R8 GT3 is in some ways my ex-wife. Um, I'm driving in the 24 hour uh, in a few weeks time for Shara Phoenix. And then the Audi chapter is officially over for me. Uh, which he's been there a very, very long time, uh, Chris Mace at Audi, but obviously Audi um, still running customer cars and uh, very uh, successfully, but inexplicably, and I'm, I'm just going to say that, um, neither Audi or AMG have been given invitations to race in the World Championship in the World Endurance Championship, which means their cars can't race in the ELMS or at Le Mans, of course, although they make up about half of the entries in GT3 in the ACO's Asian Le Mans series. Although, uh, did I read this week, John, that uh, AMG are in discussions to to change that, to have their cars considered? That's for the, in fairness, that is for this year. Yeah. And I've, I've spoken to a number of people at the ACO and the FIA who've said it will be on constant review, there's a numbers problem with the WEC in particular. I don't think that exists quite as much in the ELMS. Um, and I, I honestly don't think, re really think that there's any reason that they couldn't be there. Um, meantime, Frank Stippler has managed to pass the black AMG that was ahead of it. Him. And it was actually the Team Advan car. I should have gone with my first uh, first thought. That car will be pitting this time around. There it goes, the red and black car. And heads into the pit lane. Uh, and I, that's a problem for Audi. They've, they've lost a lot of their good drivers because there just hasn't been anywhere for them to, to go and race. Uh, by the way, the number 36 Valkenhurst Aston Martin has received a time penalty of 160 seconds for ignoring code 60s. Uh, that one came in a couple of three minutes ago. Um, this from Marco Holzer out of the Porsche number 54. He said there was a heavy impact in the Versailles long code 60, driving in the evening, otherwise always cool cars. Good, good for testing that we have consistent conditions. And Klaus Backler, just out of the 33 car, was leading when he brought that car in. 
He says it's fun to race again here. It's my first one this year. Norge Leifert is always something special. It's quite busy. There's a lot of cars. I think the format of the qualifying race is cool. And I look forward to being able to get back in the car to bring it to the end later on. So just some little bits and pieces there as um, obviously we don't get the German interviews, but giving you some of the uh, comments from drivers getting out of the cars. Now, let's get back to the top of the times. Stippler has gone back through into the lead and been scored in the lead, Peter. So uh, that's the fifth change of lead, I reckon. I don't think you're right on that, yeah, yeah. So Stippler, Muller and Guven though, isn't it? So it's the Grello in third. 15 that's position mid. Yeah, 15 laps completed. So Stippler and Muller were, um, or their cars at least, the Falcon, um, the Falcon Porsche was leading before that set of pit stops. Um, and now it's five seconds behind. Um, I'll just check that when they come through the next sector. Mante and Grello, I reckon, have made up a position. The number 15 share of sport at each pit stop has dropped a position. Um, Falcons 33 is in fifth position. Nike Verona, Nico Verone has stayed behind the wheel of the number one Frickadelli racing car. And he's in sixth. Uh, the other big mover, Arjun Maini, in the Mercedes number four, that car started right at the back of its class, and there's now a genuine 14th position. So that's all right. Uh, Tim Heinemann, who also led the race for number 44, Falcon Porsche. There's a lot going on. <laughs> He said, but I've had a great fright. It was really fun. This is about refining the car further. We're racing drivers, and of course we want a good result, but preparation is the priority. We need more information, especially from the tires. Um, remember, they run Falcon tires, and the one thing that Falcon have as a slight disadvantage in terms of their development, not about how they go about their racing, is that their manufacturing facility isn't in Europe. Therefore, any feedback from here, if you want to change compound or construction, that's got to go back, be enacted, and then the tyres have got to get out of their plant in the Far East and get to, the, to Europe to be tested. Whereas most of the other manufacturers are building race tyres uh, in Europe, so they get thrown on a truck and get tested. And then the feedback can start all over again. So they they do know they have to work with that. They've put their hands up and admitted it. Uh, interviewed a couple of their drivers in the past. It's just a little bit different the way they do their tyre development. Let's go through the tyre list, actually, and find out how many we've got uh, this year. It's normally seven, eight or nine or something like that, Peter, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it, again, it's one of the things that appeals to me so much about this series is that it's it's not just multi-class and the most amazing ribbon of tarmac in the world, probably, in terms of a, a long-distance event. Uh, but it's 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 multi multi tires. You can you, manufacturers. You can choose different different suppliers. Uh, and that there's so many permutations, and yet it's all so close still. Um, and different teams have different ways of running the same car. They go and buy a product, whether it be you know, a Porsche or a Mercedes or a, a, an Audi or an Aston, whatever it may be, and, and they've all got different ways of running it. And uh, we've seen teams, as you say, quite dramatically switch from a brand they've been associated with years uh, and start again. And it's all that years of Intel have gone, but they still they still get to the front again quite quickly because it's down to that preparation. And it never ceases to amaze me. Um, you know, there's so much more to this that you know, the drivers relatively have a relatively easy bit of it. I'm going to get shot for that one, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Relatively, I think yeah. you get away with yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, just some more news about that uh, car that was turned over. Um, this from... Where were we? I've 
just lost which driver was it? Um, in the 651, John. It, no, no, it was one of the drivers who was saying he, he thought ah. the, the car might have been on fire. There we are. It was Maxi Goats. Okay. He said, but I did see the driver out of the car. He said, you can tell a lot of people have just got their race permit. Um, you're losing a lot of time on overtaking. But that's all right. We're going through the programme. And Chan Guven jumped out, uh, sorry, jumped in after Thomas Pryling. He got out with a big smile on his face, said it's great to be racing here again. My pulse has been constantly at 108 feet a minute. It's just a lot of fun. Um, adjusted for pit stops was second. Things are going better than we'd hoped. We're happy. There's a great atmosphere outside and a surprisingly large number of spectators. And he's enjoying the run through the Eiffel Mountains, or he was. He'll get in uh, later as well and share a sport now by 3.8 seconds so Muller coming back in the Porsche Sven Muller coming back in the Porsche uh, to the Audi uh, Chan Guven just got into that car the Turkish driver the number 911 the Grello he is um, in third, and it's Dennis Marshall who's behind the wheel of the number 15, the second of the Share of Sport machines. Audi, Porsche, Porsche, Audi, Porsche, Ferrari, Nico Varone starting to feature in the top six now, and gently, Peter, the Frigatelli Racing Team Ferrari 296 is just beginning to look like and a minute or so away from the leader. You never, it used to be like when Olaf Manti was on the pit wall. You never back against Manti, whatever <laughs> happened. You never, you never back against Klaus Abelin. He's no. forgotten more about racing round here than many people have ever learned. And he's just a definition of cool, isn't he, in terms of a team yes. owner. It's just, it's, uh, when I say he's from a different age, I, I mean that I, I, I celebrate it. He, he just, of a different, uh, different age, and that's just brilliant. Um, that win last year was just fantastic. And I was talking to Debbie Pittard last year uh, when he was at Le Mans, actually, just as a spectator. I think, I think he came to your booth, didn't he, actually, at one point? He did, yeah. yeah he did. But he, he was telling me in the paddock office, he said, but I, I can't use the term he used, but it was a very much a driver Anglo-Saxon term about the state of the dampers on the car. Uh, you'll uh -huh. leave the rest of it. But, and that was by about halfway through the race, but through the night. Yeah. And he said, but, but the, he said the car was so good that despite that, they could still nurse it. He put it to the end. And it's like, I, I don't call winning it nursing it to the end but he's it, a typical driver as in yeah they were um i, I think a, a bit more than second hand the dampers should we say uh yes indeed so it it's 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 new century old school endurance the cars are so uh, gt3 cars you know let, let's not forget gt3 um, and GT4 are based on road-going cars. GT3 is getting further and further away from the road cars. They are pretty much, in fact, no, they are purpose-built race cars. GT4 still bear a little more of a resemblance. However, the reliability that are, that are built into prototype race cars at Le Mans down through the GTs, uh, GT3, GT4. It's absolutely extraordinary to my mind. When I first started going to Le Mans at the end of the 1980s, a very long time ago, kids look it up, still had vinyl records. Um, and, you know, the internet was barely invented. And, well, I couldn't turn a computer on, I'll tell you that now. <laughs> um, the, um, you would see gaps at the front of the fields at Le Mans that were five laps, that were three laps, that were eight laps. Um, and you would have thought, and you, you went away from Le Mans thinking, well, that was a tight race. And, you know, I, I think Jeremy always tells the story in the States of how the first Daytona he went to was won by 85 miles, which is, <laughs> which is incredible. Um, so, you know, with, that's 10 laps at Le Mans, you know. And, and we, we still, 
we still thought we'd had a good time and watched some good racing. And then you'd read all the papers and the specialist magazines in the next week to find out who would be nursing which problem and who had lost third gear and who'd lost second gear and who had had something fallen off and was only running on eight, uh, seven of eight cylinders or whatever. And that was what endurance racing was like within my lifetime, without, in, in most of your lifetime. And those of you who are watching and, and listening, uh, leader, by the way, with a clear bit of track ahead, heading up to Schwedenkreutz at the top of the hill, turn and left. Just got a Toyota, uh, I think it's one of the GT4 Supers there with another puncher, but it was at Tear Garden that would have just dived into the pits. I didn't get to see which one it was, John, my apologies. Uh, I just saw it diving into pits. I didn't get to see see the number. Um, just something which you're saying there about John, you mentioned about earlier about um, cars I mean, outside the city and whatever. And of course, this is one of the absolute philosophies of endurance racing. Go back to when it started. You mentioned about the Nurburgring coming up to being you know, 100 years old shortly, um, and and the days of you know, at Le Mans, as as you will know, for the rules years ago. I think in the 20s, what maybe into 30s still. I think it was about was it two to four hours of the race. They had to run with the the, the hood of the car uh, erected because it was a touring oh, car. Oh, Le Mans, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and you weren't allowed to put any fuel fluid in for a certain amount of time. Uh, and, and that's it's what's about proving the car. Exactly, and that was the whole point of this endurance racing, wasn't it? Which is why we had 24-hour racing because it still goes back to uh, you know sort of win on Sunday, sell on Monday, and uh, in that. Uh, nice little message that Debbie Pittard left me uh, yesterday from, from the paddock about the car. One of the things he said about this new GT4 Aston, which is interesting, and it's it just kind of reinforces what you've just said, is that they what they've done with this new new car is they've it had a very small window for a professional driver to get the get the time out of it. It was a, a very very tight little window, yeah. In this new version, and I'm sure every other manufacturer is doing exactly the same, they've opened that out so that it's easier and more consistent to drive. Forget reliability now, that's not a problem anymore, for the Correct. amateur drivers. It's a very good point. And it's, it's a very... That, and it's a, that's what he... The, what, that's, they said, that's the feedback they're getting at Aston Martin AMR Racing, that the amateurs are now finding it even easier to drive it at a good pace than they would have done a, twi a twitchy car a year ago, its predecessor. And that's that's for everything, you know. Got to, and that's what they're doing, you know. You might have the Nicky teams and... Uh, and the likes of, of Pittard and whatever, you know, acing it up at the front. But it's no good if you can't sell another 100 or 100 more of them in the background to amateur drivers and support them as well. That's the point. You, you mentioned a word there, Peter, that is key for this. Uh, consistency. Consistency is the thing. There's no point in your non-pro driver, late starting profession, uh, professionals, as uh, Stefan Venton said uh, from AMG, which I, I rather like that, uh, that nomenclature. Uh, there's no point in them being, let's say on a quote unquote normal track, being a second off the driver, the, the top driver, the pro driver one lap and then two seconds off the next then a second and then four seconds and then a half speed and losing 20 seconds and 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 it's about consistency and feeling confidence with the car now when i spoke to adam carter who's the head of development for aston martin racing uh, in in the endurance uh, and uh, works very closely with the formula one team as well as based at, at silverstone with the formula one team and he said exactly the same that their, their new evolution for the new am advantage was all down to making it more consistent and giving it a larger window. I was absolutely stunned because the Aston was never thought of as one of the harder cars to drive. I think it was always considered that the, the AMG was probably the car that it was at least difficult to get a lap time out of if you were a non-pro driver. H however, I... I was fortunate enough to do some testing laps at Monte Blanco in the previous version of the GT3, previous iteration of the GT3, and I found it an intensely um, satisfying experience. And even on worn tyres, got down to a decent time. Um, Johnny Adams had, had set the benchmark time. I got down to under a second away from Johnny's time relatively quickly. And I would like to think that that's because that I'm the biggest loss to motor racing ever, but it wasn't. It was just the sheer 
confidence-inspiring nature of the car that allowed me to use the ABX, ABS right up to the apex. In fact, if you're not, you're losing time because that's how you rotate the car. To work with the traction control, to find a setting that I liked, that I could get enough drift coming out the corner without me spearing off into the into the undergrowth. And for them to still be working on on that sort of thing, for, with all the manufacturers are doing that now, I think is extraordinary. And, and what it says to me now, that the reliability comes as a given. You are expected to have a GT3 car that will drive flat out or near to flat out for 24 hours. After that, it's about, we want it to work in as many different conditions and at many different types of track as possible. So we're opening out the performance window and we're making it easy, just easier for people to get in and out, more comfortable for guys who aren't whippet thin racing drivers and you know who like me weigh 100 kilos and have got to get yourself in through the door bars and it's not as easy as it looks it really isn't as easy as it looks i i, I think it's great um I, I think it's absolutely great and i think what we're seeing with gt3 it has morphed into uh, and, I, and i have mixed feelings about it being at the moment if i'm brutally honest i always have had but you cannot deny it has absolutely dominated gt3 gt4 has dominated global endurance racing sports car racing in a way that we've never had before in terms of a global formula we've always talked about formula 3 formula 2 formula 4 and people kind of have an idea of how that is in the ladder of of competition in single seaters we haven't had that in sports car racing and and some of the you know group five group four group a group s group whatever gte gt le mans different names for things mm. now with gt3 these cars can be raced all over the world and I, and and that's what's bringing new people and new blood into the sport and it means we're going to have 120 odd probably we'll have I, I, I think we'll have 130 cars for the 24 hours and that'll be the first time in a long time we've had that many. More power to that elbow, I see. Right, we've had the next set of pit stops. Pit stop two is completed. Here's how they start, with an hour and a half to go. Frank Stippler leads for Audi and Shara Sport in the 16. Uh, he is, at the moment, three seconds, call it ahead of the 44 in second, which is the Fulton Motorsports Porsche. Then it's Ayachan Given in Grello, the 911, another three seconds, four seconds further back. Dennis Marshall for Sheriff Sports, number 15, is ten and a half further back in fourth. Top six made up by Julian Anlau, back in the Fulton Motorsports 33. He's only four seconds behind Dennis Marshall, and he is ahead of Nico Varon by half a minute, just over, who makes up the top six. And they're separated by just under a minute, 54 seconds. And we've still got one more pit stop to go. I think just uh, just one thing you mentioned there, John, going back to the, the, the bit you talked about, these, these GT cars for, for owner drivers, um, amateur drivers. Um, it, it, it's making the car work at so many different tracks. I think that that is, that is a science in itself. Um, I think that, that's extraordinary to make a, make a car that can do that. Uh, yeah, Nürburgring compared to somewhere like Monza or wherever we go, and Le Mans, different again. I, th I think that's just extraordinary that we, we can the, these manufacturers can make a car that will is, is drivable by by a relative amateur. And I, I, I never I never quite like. I always prefer the term gentleman than to, to amateur. Because amateur just always sounds a bit negative, and I, I think it's very a very unfair terminology actually. It's just uh, they're just not professionals. If you know what I mean, they're not actually making a living out of doing it. Still a great driver. Exactly my point. Exactly. Yes. Um, what I think one of the interesting things about making the cars easier to get comfortable with, um, or making the cars uh, in a situation whereby the, the drivers can get comfortable with them quicker in fewer laps. Quite a lot of the non-pro drivers um, have very 
high pressure, high powered jobs or are running their own companies. And that's where they've got the money from to go and do this. Let's, let's make no bones about it. They can't just be taking arbitrarily two days off every other week to go and do testing. So they have to come to a race meeting that they're already committed to, get in the car and be able to do an hour or half an hour and get comfortable with the car at the track straight away. Um, the other thing about opening up the performance envelope, uh, Pete, uh, the window, is that throughout different championships in the world, these cars are running on three or four or five different manufactured, manufacturers of tyres. And that adds something different into it. And you cannot now build a GT3 car that only works with one tyre. And some of the drivers that I've spoken to who drive the same car in several different championships. So, you know, here you could be on anything because it's an open tyre formula. In IMSA, it's going to be in GT3, um, GTD, it's going to be Michelin. In SRO, it's going to be Pirelli. In Krevendik, it's going to be Hankook. Um, the cars run in uh, DTM. Uh, the cars run in sprint series. The cars run in long races, medium races. They run in, in every, pretty much everywhere there's a racetrack in the world, every continent on which there is a racetrack, they run. Uh, that'll be hot, that'll be cold, it'll be wet, it'll be dry. It's an extraordinary thing to have a race car that are so sophisticated nowadays. These aren't just road cars. To have them do the pace that they're doing, 814 is, you know, uh, what what did we say? Eight, eight, so, you know, eight seconds off the lap record here on this circuit. But let's take off the Grand Prix circuit. You're still spending, um, let me see, a minute. So that basically is you're spending just around about six and a bit minutes on the Norge Lifer in a GT3 car that's based on a straight car. Just let that sink in for a second. That's extraordinary, isn't it? It is. There's, a, there's yet another permutation, John, which is, of course, that that car's got to be driven by a number of different drivers. Good point. So, are we going to have different styles? You, you know, you and I can go and share a car tomorrow, we wish, uh, and it, it doesn't matter what the times are, that's almost, almost academic. We're going to have different styles and approaches to how we get that time out of the car. Uh, and your four drivers in, in a car are going to do different things. You know, Pittard and team in, in an Aston are going to do something different to Andlauer and Backler in a Porsche. That they're all going to do things slightly different, and that the car's got to be not one size fits all. But it's it, 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 it's almost it's almost you know magical how they, how they do it. And uh, I always try and explain to people this: this is why this is so much more interesting form of racing than just single mate necessarily. Notes here from the racing bar, Stuart. Why are Falcon running with just two drivers? Surely it's a risk if one of them can't drive. Um, they're only running with the two drivers here for the short race, the four hours. They will run with more drivers when they get to the 24 hours. This is all about getting time uh, for the drivers under the wheels of the car. Uh, time penalty, by the way, coming in for uh, ignoring flag signals. It's the number 945, which is a Porsche 718 Cayman club sport um, I love this quote by the way um, from um, Salman Owega who was in that number six Mercedes that the leader was catching up to uh, that was breathtaking that was his first in the GT3 car he says it's an honour to ride here I'm looking forward to the next time the weekend is just about collecting data and further developing the tyre um, he said uh, and this from the, and this is another good one as well. It's from Michael Meyer uh, in the 885 BMW M2 Racing Cup. There's a lot going on on the track. Uh, the cleanup took some time after the accident. Uh, conditions fantastic, driving's a lot of fun. Mutual consideration is very good and respectful. It's very, very positive. In a small cars like ours, you obviously look behind you a lot, but it's still great fun. The 24 hours at the ring are great for me. I've done Dubai 24 and Q8 12, but it's not like the green hell. He's right there. He is right there. Um, Marvellous stuff. Sun beginning to sink down below the mountains to the west. 
and we've still got just on an hour and 20 minutes to go. Glickenhouse still lead SPX, Cup 2, Black Fault, number 148, are back at the front of that fantastically close battle. And it's Black Faultman number 148 from Avia 120. Those two have just pitted, starting the next set of pit stops. Kay Kramer in third with the 121. The best of the Mulners, Maury Krantz, in the 120. He's just pitting as well. Uh, no, he's gone through. So that's now the battle again for first and second between Di Martino and Krantz uh, in Kay Kramer, but they haven't made the pit stop. Fifth is the second of the Mulner cars. That will go through in, now into third and has done. So there's a split going on with uh, with those guys. So 148, 120 and 103, Black Falcon, Avia and Black Falcon are all in the pits. Then Keir Kramer's second car, the 112, is still out, about to come round and finish a lap. And then it's the Vasquez Garcia driven number 123, Milner Motorsport. These are all Porsche Cup car. And then the brilliant uh, uh, number 119, Click Versaikerug team uh, are still out there. It looks to me. Who else has just come in there? No, uh, Black Falcon's gone through. That's going to be a great battle, an absolutely brilliant battle all the way to the end. Both of the races last weekend went down to the last lap. There was an incident on the last corner of the last lap on Saturday, which the stewards got involved with. Hello, Dave Alcock. The conversation about evolution of GT3 racing is fascinating. I remember, he says, when GT3s were closely related to the production cars. The latest cars seem nearer to the GT1, GTE era. You're absolutely spot on there. Um, the, I know everything in Porsche is called GT3, but the latest version of the 992 GT3, the GT3R, has got the 4. Point, nearly 4.2 engine, 4.18, whatever it is which is the engine that came out of the LM GT car. The, the GTE car, as Isio called them, or as they ran in IMSA, the uh, GT Le Mans cars. So, yes, and if you look at the interior of the GT3 cars, they've got the steering wheel with the um, multiple sets of paddles. I think there's three different sets of paddles, four different sets of paddles actually behind the steering wheel. Um, so there's up and down for your uh, gears, of course, there's your brake bias and a variety of other things which they don't like talking about. Um, I think there are two thumb wheels and three turning wheels. Oh, side by side contact right in front of the leaders going through Arenberg through a slightly slow zo zone from Schwalbenschwanz. Uh, Code 60 now in the entry to Schwalbenschwanz and two of the slow cars actually making contact in front of the leaders as they go through the foxhole. And the fault at number 44 in second place is now back with the leader. That three seconds we were talking about earlier on, Peter, has completely gone. And Sven Muller has got Frank Stippler in his sights here. He's worked the traffic really well. And what was five, then four, then three, is now two cars lengths. Yeah, and that's... Um that Schwabentrans incident, uh, John, is for the uh, the 502 uh, entry, uh, which is now was stopped but now moving again very slowly, and that's the uh, uh, the GT tyre um, BMW 330i. It is on the move again, but not as much on the move as you say as Muller is in uh, in the Falcon car. You get a feeling that this one, that we've not written the headline yet because there's different, slightly different offsets on the pit strategy. There's slightly different car manufacturers. Now, still got the track vehicles doing barrier repair to drivers left at the siphon, being covered by one of the Seat Formento, sorry, Cupra Formento safety cars for men all the first solely cupra branded vehicles and the current transport of 
uh, Mrs. Damon. Uh, Rachel has just taken delivery of a, a Formentor and is thoroughly enjoying its sporty crossover nature. Meantime, Frank Stippler leads the race and for once has a little bit of clear track ahead of him. As the road curves away, climbing up out of Bergwerk and then those three left-handers, the last one tightening slightly on you as you head up the hill, but they're all flat, even in a street car they're flat. Do not hit the curbs as you are climbing through those areas. It completely unsettles the car. Now at the base of the... She's gone through mid curve and coming to the base of the run up to the Caracciola carousel across the Tal. Here at the end of the at the end of the advertising hoarding. I would normally have said aim at the portable lavatory, but that actually sometimes lo uh, moves. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to say to that one. <laughs> that's, that's your line as you go into there, you just straight line across, don't you, and then drop into there. It looked like in a custom 109 power, just, oh, or was it a Eurocopter? Just take it off. And the other battle for fourth place at the moment is Julian Andlau in the 33 Falcon Porsche uh, chasing the Shearer uh, Sport Audi of uh, Dennis Marshall in f uh, number 15 car. And again, it's another one all over the back of it. And they, these Falcon Porsches, they're, they're, they're just, they're like a rash, aren't they, over these cars? Unfortunately, they get close and they just seem to be able to stick with them. And just watching it again through traffic, John, just absolutely extraordinary. And this is for, this is for fourth place, not even for the lead. Not that it's any less important. Uh, it's for fourth place now. <laughs> Correct. Um, exactly I, I, so. I'll be keeping an eye on one of my 50 bazillion screens here. <laughs> uh, on the uh, on the stint lens. And nobody's done anything bonkers. We, we haven't... Uh, we, we've seen the odd eight-lap stint. Um, Rover Racing in the number 98 have done an eight-lap stint. Um, so it is possible. Um, the Falcon Motorsports number 33, Klaus Backler, last time he was in the car, um, before he handed over to Julie Andlau four laps ago, he did an eight-lap stint as well. We've had the Falcon 44 doing an eight-lap stint as well. Now, undoubtedly helped by those code 60s. So this is interesting. Herbeth Motorsport have done an eight lap stint. But not everybody when that code 60 out was doing eight laps. Their um Kerber Gimaziak only did a seven um, in the Valkenhorst Aston Martin. And so this is all still to play out at the end of the race and who is where when it comes into the last hour of the race. Now, in terms of where people are in their stints at the moment, the leader, team me, he's a battle for the lead, coming up to the end of the lap, and Sven Muller weaving left and right into Tear Garden. Aim at the red part of the barrier on the left hand side, starting to get dark now. The headlights actually playing their part. And you can see them on the road surface down towards the first corner, which is the right hander. Then directly straighten the car up because we're on the 24 hour version of the circuit, not the one we raced last weekend. So it's much less tight first corner. Muller swings out wide on the Grand Prix circuit, trying to take the attention of Frank Stippler. These guys are about halfway through their stint. Stippler's just completed his sixth lap. Muller only his fourth. So this is the point I'm making here, Peter, in a very roundabout way, because we've got action that I, I want to describe. But Sven, if Sven Muller can do another eight lap stint, then he's going to go three laps further that Stippy is. So Stippy is going to be in. And now Stippy will be in the window to go to the end. But quite clearly, 
the Falcon car will need less fuel to go to the end, and this could all yet play out for Falcon. And given that their 33 car is running very similar st strategy, again, those cars are going to be doing a shorter last stint. Well, that's all playing out at the very, very front, and I just mentioned there about Julian Andlauer, who did uh, manage to to jump uh, Dennis Marshall uh, there, just coming to down the dotting of Hoa, but uh, that was a struggle to do it. And the gap he went through and then tucked in, he actually used one of the uh, GT3 Cup car, one of the Cup 2 cars, the uh, the 124 Mula Motorsport car, um, and used that down the dotting of Hoa to get a bit of a side draft, up through Tier God, onto the pit straight, and then couldn't get past the Mula Motorsport car. We've said this many a time before, that those GT, those Cup 2 cars are as quick, if not slightly quicker, than a GT3 car on a straight line, just not overall overlap. But uh, uh, Julian Andlau is now up into fourth uh, overall. So Falcon Porsche's second and fourth. Stiffer leading, he said, in the Audi with uh, Bouvan at the wheel of the Grello in third, the Manti car, 911. Battle for the lead on the hats and back. Blue and white, share a sport. PHX, Phoenix. Stippler cutting his way through. Traffic and past another. Porsche Cayman. He has got headlights in his mirror. Meantime, the number four Mercedes still sitting just outside the top 10, 14th at the moment for Arjun Miney, the Indian driver in the Bilstein. Number four with a great battle in, in right in front of him. He's got uh, the Rover Racing BMW number 99 in front of that car is what's that one in front of the 99 that'll be Lucas R in the Mercedes team get speed number eight the green version of the get speed uh, livery and I've lost my mouse which is disastrous because it's what I used to scroll through my empty list no it's all right it's come back phew um <laughs> So that's a great battle between three cars uh, at the bottom end of the top 10, as we mentioned, or just outside the top 10. It's fantastic stuff that's going on. Gilles Gounon is about 30 seconds ahead of the battle as that three head out onto, onto the hats and back. Uh, cameras, by the way, if you're watching our live World Feed TV stream, making it look much, much lighter than it is. And Sheldon van der Linde, maybe a chance here with a bit of traffic. Can he make that manoeuvre to get past Lucas Auer? He's right there in the Rover BMW. Black and green Mercedes. It's Lucas Auer coming to the end of the hat and back. The yellow, black and white Rover BMW. Sheldon van der Linde, and then behind them, the number four. Blue and yellow, Bilstein coloured team, Bilstein AMG. That's Arjun Maini. And we keep jumping back to the lead as the Dacia gets put another lap down, down the inside to the bottom of the hill at the Arbor. Oh my goodness me, that is very, very tight and bright shite as they were going across the bridge. And I thought for a moment that Sven Muller was going to stick the nose in. We've still got an hour and eight minutes, an hour and seven minutes to go. I don't think it's do or die right now, Peter, but he certainly had a good think of it there as they were dropping down towards the bridge at Brideshite. But look at the psychology. What's he, what's he doing there? He, he's still he's flashing the lights. It's not to the GT3, GT4 Super in front. That was to the Audi as well. Just, just trying to distract that little bit of psychology. Just put him off. I mean, it doesn't take much at these speeds. Yes, of course, they're all very uh, experienced drivers, and you would say, surely that's not going to work. But all you've got to do is look up at the wrong point and miss your turning or miss your apex by six inches. Yeah, and, after and George that's Russell. That's all you're looking for. Yeah, well, well. Yeah, George has got a problem with concentration towards the end of a race. <laughs> He's starting to make that a bit of a thing, isn't he? Let's be honest. Down in the pit lane at the Bauman pit. 
and that is Horst Bowman, I think. Yes, it is, from the number 950 Schmickler performance, powered by Ravenel. And that's uh, one of, another one of the uh, Porsches, of which there seem to be legion. Uh, marshals have now been told to switch from the flags to the panels. And another Hyundai with problems, the 466i30N. And that has, and that's another left front tyre that has problems. And that car uh, running in VT2 for uh, Mika Stanley, John Christoph David, and Joseph Warhurst. Or probably uh, Warhurst, actually, because he comes from Barnsley. Um, so Joe Warhurst and that car limping back at the moment. Sure where that is on the track, but we'll keep an eye on it dropping into the pit lane. That again, the 466. I'll scroll down to find out where that is. Uh, it has made the pits, in fact, uh, and it's still fifth in class, but I reckon that's, I reckon that's just dropped a couple of places there. Lost a place to the team Mertens, Hyundai, the 492, which had its own tyre problem earlier on. And it would also have lost a place possibly to the Hoffer, to the Kievan Sports and Racing Car, another Hyundai. Bad luck for them, so close to the end. an hour or so to make that back up coming down to the last hour Peter one more pit, pit stop and by no means is this an easy cruise to the finish for any of these cars uh, at the front end of the field uh, everybody else is just looking to survive computer says seven laps to go that obviously is going to depend where the leader crosses the line at any given time and it's when it gets dark at the Nürburgring it it doesn't mess about does it Peter it doesn't unlike other circuits where it's it's, it's illuminated well uh, it most certainly isn't here uh, none of it not even in the pit straights I mean Le Mans pretty illuminated uh, quite a lot of way around uh, Spa less so but this this place just not at all and you can imagine the electricity bill trying to illuminate the the Nordschlaffer for a start it's just a just a cost thing isn't it um, but again this, this is something else that you know it's another permutation another layer that you add in that was suddenly driving in the dark but you mentioned earlier about uh, you know the, the GT cars and development and how much how much they've improved technologically reliably etc you know and, uh, the, the, compared to the wet candles we used to race on, you know, they've got proper lights now that, that's, that stay working. Um, that's, I mean, you, you, you quite often used to see in the, the days when I was doing this, you'd see what you call a cyclops, you know, a car with one headlight out. And yes. obviously any tail light out, you weren't allowed to complete the race. You, you were taken out for, for quite rightly for safety reasons. You were removed by the, by the race directors immediately and, and rightly so. Um, but, um, you know, I can remember doing, this is going to sound ridiculous, John, a Group C race at Spa at night. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Now, if that doesn't get your heart... mile an hour? Yeah, and the rest, yeah. If that doesn't get your heart rate up, I don't know what does. Yeah. 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 And the day, in the days when, John, if you can imagine this, the pit exit was at the bottom of Eau Rouge. Yeah. So yeah, it yeah, did, did, that, did, that didn't come until in. about 03. You blended straight in. So you'd, you'd come down hugging the pit wall, and all of a sudden there was a, yeah, there was a 962 coming out of the pits, and you were committed. Yeah. And it was still gravel on the other side as well. The, um, and and uh, to quote a line from the Italian job, <laughs> are they quarter iodine? <laughs> yeah. uh, you, yes. you, had filament, yeah. you had filament bulbs. Yes. You know, oh. I'm just in incredible to think. And 13 uh, amp fuses. Well, exactly. I, 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 I say that. My, my old 968 Porsche still has filament bulbs in it. <laughs> and on full beam with the driving lights and... The, the fog lights on, it's pretty good for an old car. And I don't have up, uprated bulbs in them. I, had, I have the, the normal bulbs in, and but it's pretty good. But it's not 200 mile an hour good. Um, it's fine at 60 miles an hour, 55, 60 miles an hour down the back roads where 60 mile an hour is the, the speed limit. As the Dacia comes in for what should be, I reckon, its last stop 
Um, it's uh, just having a look. Wow. Don't even think they're going to bother changing the tyres. So they have the uh, very. It's Oliver Kreis, uh, Kreis, Kreis uh, behind the wheel. They do, they, they're um, high tech driver. <laughs> I was just watching uh, that. Drinks bottle <laughs> is to have him unfasten his um, his helmet, squeeze it up a little bit, move his balaclava, and take a drink from an already used. Plastic bottle of Gerolsteiner, <laughs> which at least is local water. Uh, the fuel fill is through the boot into uh, a fuel tank that looks about half the size of the car. Um, how many pit stops have they actually made? Hindoff sort of asks to himself. Let me scroll. They're easy to find. That is only their second pit stop. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry. Stand by. Uh, where are they? Dacia Logan. That is their fifth pit stop. Apologies. Uh, they are in 117th place. Um, and I believe they are, yes, they are the only car in SP3T because of their engine size. It's dark. It is now properly dark and we have one hour remaining. One hour remaining. So, end of the lap that all of the cars are on at the front of the field now. Bear in mind that the leaders are just on to the Nordschleife. Um, the car that's the furthest way around the Nordschleife is in 17th position. That's the team Advan Mercedes GT3. So that car probably can't pit. It would be dangerous for it to pit now. Uh, and in fact, it doesn't, it goes through. But at the end of that car's next lap, this is the number six I'm talking about, um, that car could go to the end. So I reckon all now of the top 20, as they come across the line now, they would have the opportunity to come in and do their last pit stop. Now, whether they do or not, um, I've got another penalty, and it's a big one. And it's for the AMG GT, the Miney Bird Awaga Beretta car, uh, causing an avoidable accent, uh, accident. Two minutes, 30 seconds. And that's for and another Hyundai with a problem at Hoa Act for the number 499 um, I30N. So... Two minutes 30 for the number three AMG GT3. Uh, and here's an update on what happened to the Aston Martin of Cuba. Nicky team saying Cuba's made contact with the track barrier and the front was damaged. However, for us, the race is a test. That's why it makes no sense to continue. We'll repair it now and do a few laps again later. Okay, that's why that number 34 car uh, dropped down the field. Still in the pits now in 35th position, 25th in SP9. So that's you up to date with 57, call it 58 minutes still to run till the time elapses. Not a bad day for the Klingenhaus qualified fourth, Com Ledegar in the SCG 004C right now, sitting in 18th position. One lap pace, Pete, they're obviously there, and they have had pole position in the shootout before. And um, so we've we've known that. And this is a welcome return to motor racing for for Jim Campbell and Glick, Glickenhaus. Yeah, I, I, just, I just would have... It's pace is enough to be in, it come to be inside the top ten, isn't it? And it's just it's just a shame, shame that it's just not been able to do that yet. Uh, the the um, Ferrari's still up there, isn't it? I just bear with me. My screen just wanted to refresh itself. Ferrari's in sixth. Again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sorry, so that's just dis just disappeared from it there. So that's the. I just I just thought the clicking house would do a little bit more. Uh, and that's a shame to see it. Yeah, it's only just inside the top twenty. It's. I, it's got more... did it last race, though? That's what you've got to ask yourself. It's a good point, John. Yeah, it's a good point. I, uh, I think it probably, you know, Glickenhaus... Would it be uh, Le Mans last year? No, no, a different car. Yeah. That's a different car. This yes. Is, this is the GT3 alone. Of course, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, um, I, I probably think it was 
you know, at the Nürburgring last year. Um, did they do anything after the N24? Without looking at the results, I don't know, but somebody out there will know. Uh, at RSL underscore studio. Uh, hashtag RSL underscore N24. Um, Glickenhouse themselves haven't raced since part way through last season, three quarters of the way through last season. They didn't finish the WE. In fact, they've never done a full WEC series season. Um, so they've been off racing off road and using the Glickenhouse boot to race in Baja. They're developing an electric version of that car. They've been building, homologating and building their street cars. So there's been plenty of work going on at Scuderia Glickenhaus, Cameron Glickenhaus, um, but um, they haven't been in the white hot fire of competition. And, you know, they've integrated some new people. Com Ledegaard driving that car, racing that car for the first time this weekend. So I, if they get the 706 to the end, um, they're still on the lead lap. They are half a lap down on the lead at the moment. And given their one lap pace, I think I think they'll be kind of okay with that. Uh, in the air, 19 degrees, 19 Celsius in the air. Quite windy, actually, as... Now, here we go, that's the leader in the pits. Stippler into the pits with 54 and a half minutes to go. So this is the start of the pit lap. So what, what does everybody else do? Do they follow him or not? That was an eight lap stint from Stippler. Muller can go two laps more. He's just finished his sixth lap. So he can go two laps closer to the end. That's nearly 50 kilometers closer to the end of the race. Let's not forget, uh, as can uh, and Lauer will come in at the end of this lap. That's the Falcon number 33. Uh, Varone will have uh, one more at the end of this one. Who else has only done six? The apt Lamborghini. So he'll finish this one and do two more. Uh, that's interesting. Actually, that's the same with the Fricadelli as well. So Varone goes across the line now to complete his seventh. So he'll come in at the end of the next one as well. So we're starting to see in athletic terms, Peter, the stagger is starting to unwind, but we won't really see it all until everyone's done their last pit stop. Absolutely, and uh, that, that, that's going to be critical to that. What have we got? 53 minutes ago. John, I'll just have a very quick look back through the records, and it was, I've just found an odd why Jim Clickenhouse, they didn't, Clickenhouse didn't do the 24 hour last year. For the first time in nine years, they missed out because they said it wasn't logistically sensible. They did it in 21 and 22, but they dropped out last year. It wasn't logistically right, sensible to do the GT car and the WEC program, so they concentrated on WEC, so they didn't do it. So right. when it last right. ran, uh, I'm not really sure. So, so it would have been 22, probably here in either uh, yeah. a VLN race or in 22. All right, Mulder into the pit lane, and there's a problem with the front of that car, that car being the number 122. This is one of the cars that's been riding high in Cup 2 all day. Came in from, I think, third position, possibly fourth. And on the GT3 front end, it has a slightly different... Uh, and the cup cars are identical. They use the same carbon fibre reinforced plastic um, as the uh, as the street cars for the the luggage cover. And um, what's happened? And we've seen this happen on these cars before. It's an aero device on the street cars as well. And there's two little nostrils right at the very front, and air is channeled up from the front splitter of the car and over the top of the bonnet. And what happened there was the front part of the bonnet had folded up. It, it hadn't unfastened because the catch is slightly further back, but it was the front edge. Now, they're filling the car at that area, but you don't have to lift that cover to fill it. So they're just using about three miles of gaffer tape on that. Nick Damon would be very impressed <laughs> with that. Welcome back to the country, Nick back in the country uh, yesterday after he's done sojourn to um, where did he go to? He was out in Eastern Europe somewhere not riding his motorcycle for once he was up to get a
uh, run out today. Uh, the RSR Beetle just coming through the pit. Or is that one of the Golfs? Hard to tell. Uh, I think that's one of the Golfs, Mark 7s, actually, um, as that comes out of the pits. A very, very wide-bodied car, whichever one it is. Um, no, you're right, John. It is the RSR. just got a big rear wing. Oh, it is. Yeah. 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 Uh, what I could see that I thought was the grill at the front was uh, actually the light bar. It's a great looking thing, that beetle. And it, it needs, instead of the big wing, I think it just needs the, the little ducktail rear spoiler. Agreed. Right, down at Milner. What happened with the car is basically the question. And it's going to be the bonnety thing at the front fell off. Uh, meantime, uh, the number 98 BMW M4 GT3. This is the Raffaele Marciello, Max Martin and Wittmann car um, has stopped. There's been an accident with uh, the number 514 BMW 330i. So that happened at Wippermann and it was Max Martin driving the number 98. Uh, and another car in full, uh, sorry, that was the, yeah, so it's the Sorg Rensport BMW number uh, number three, number 514, the 330i, and the 98 GT3 car. And that's certainly the 98 car now has stopped. I, I'm not sure about the, uh, the other car, whether that's still running, the 514. Peter will be looking for it on the tracker now. But that is a major incident then for one of the well fancied cars the number 98 at the front of the field the car was uh, running in that big group of uh, the SP9 GT3 cars at the front of the field but has stopped meantime let's get back to the action at the front of the field where Frank Stippler is on a mission to pass as many cars as he can because he's done his last pit stop and he's the first car to be fueled to the end and tired to the end and he's in behind he's in behind the Bilstein car and it's the same driver that was holding him up before Salman Owega he was in the other car of course so Stippler in the 16 car, comes alongside the bright yellow and blue machine as they go into, where are they on the track? It's a hat of a pass, needed a bit of help. Right, they're over the far side of the track now, uh, dropping down. That was through Callan Hart. As they were going through there, so that was, very good pass halfway round the lap by Stippler, who is trying to hold on to this lead. Sven Müller is two sectors ahead of him, but yet to make a pit stop. But Sven does not have to stop this time around. He can, if he wants, go one more. They'll be doing the calculations on pit stop time to the end of the race now. 47 minutes remaining here, Peter. And this, the drivers always earn their money here, but this is the kind of situation where the strategists are working out how many seconds they've got to give. And that's why you, that's why you need the calmness of a strategist, isn't it? Talking to you on the radio and the driver responding calmly as well. And that's why that's where the word team really comes into play, doesn't it? I don't mean Nicky, I mean uh, racing teams, as in working together uh, and understanding how this works. I'm just thinking, Raffaella, Marcella, it's actually stopped that car as it got through Swarton Chance onto the dotting a hoa but it's now been pulled to one side according to the gps now we've had a few glitches on that gps uh, today john so just just don't take that as absolutely red but it does look like it's put it, put it this way it says it says car number 98 which is that car uh, is in the woods so that would suggest to me that it's been pulled off an escape road to the side of the track on the dotting hoa which there is one just there off the shoulder chance that's uh, peter snowden i'm john hindorf radio show limited providing the official English language soundtrack to Ravenel ADAC 24 hours of Nürburgring World Feed TV 
live and uninterrupted for this weekend with another four-hour race to come tomorrow. But remember, we will be on air in the morning for the top shootout, the top qualifying. And that all was very, very spectacular with uh, the cars. Let's, let's hope for decent weather. Um, the weather forecasts have been a bit ambiguous about tomorrow. Um, there is a saying in the UK, red sky at night, shepherd's delight. And it is a very red sky tonight. So let's hope that that does come through. It will be chilly in the morning. And uh, getting your tyres up the temperature for a two lap dash. You don't have to do the two laps. If you think you've done enough after the first one, you can pull off. Um, but if you come back around, you're not allowed to use the Grand Prix cutout and then go back out onto a fast lap. If you come into the pits, you are done. And last, so, into the pits, P3. All oh, right, OK. So that's the 33 that's in. And that is an eight lap stint. So that suggests to me that um, Muller will come in at the end of his next lap. He's gone through onto his eighth lap now. So Muller in the 44, Peter, with a 23 second lead over the Turkish Porsche driver and Chan Guven, Chan to his teammates. 23 seconds behind. And then Anla, Dennis Marshall for Scherer Sport and Nico Varone for Frigadelli Ferrari, now in fifth position by the way, but of course they're making their last stop. So now we've got to keep an eye on the start finish line. And fortunately we do have an ISO camera there. So even if we're not looking, we'll keep an eye on it because we must see where Stippy is. Frank Stippler, 12th position, but will leap up as the cars ahead make their final pit stop. It's going to be fresh tyres for all those cars. The Frigadelli Ferrari getting fresh tyres. The 33 Julian Andlau's car being spun around to a, around about a 45 degree angle on the dollies. That just lets them get out the pit lane. What is often a very crowded pit lane. Here comes Sven Muller onto the Hatzenbach. Oh, he's just going out onto it now, I think. Now, who's that just to come in? That's Phil Ellis has just come into the pit lane, the 27 Abt Sports Line Lamborghini. They strangely haven't been right there, have they? Mark Mapelli's just brought that guy at the pits. Looks like he's staying in after a great run on Sunday to what was ultimately second place, but that was a winning run, really. Let's be quite blunt about that. Waiting for Dennis Olsen to come through next for Herberth Motorsport. And he should be in at the end of this lap as well. Marvin Dienst for Dynamic GT Porsche have come in. So Stippy is the next guy across the line, I reckon. And who's moving? There's Backler. Klaus Backler is out of the pits. He's ahead of Stippler, I reckon. I think Backler is out of the pits in front of Stippler. What I can't tell you, well, as I say that, it, the Falcon 33 is on the Grand Prix circuit. And let's see who trips the first of the timing loops first. He's had to deal with the KTM, which is in an unfamiliar color of colorway of green and white. Boy, it must be tight. There's Backler, there's Stippler. I can't see Stippler ahead of Backler. I think we've just had a, a lead change at that last pit stop, Peter. And Muller has yet to make his last pit. So that's effectively the lead there. I think he could be right, John. I'm just trying to look on the GPS as to where they, where they are relatively. And... Um... By the way, driving that uh, KTM, Fabian Vettel. Fabian Vettel, um, younger brother of Sebastian Vettel. He's done a bit, quite a bit of racing in his time and has raced here uh, in the past. Uh, but not for KTM, I don't remember. He was in that 55. It's too close to call, Peter, isn't it? If we can't see them. 
it's a, exactly, exactly. You know, just, I think one thing's in the dark there. I was just, I'll just, I'll just watching the, uh, we were talking about technology and advancements of things we've had now. The, the Lumi rank system that's up in the corner of the windscreen that rotates yeah. between position, number, and driver, and etc. Um, it's uh, you look at it in the 16 um, Audis it was when it was in the leading or class leading car. It'll flash blue uh, behind cars approaching, like a blue flag. Which is obviously to let, warn you that a blue flag is a faster car is approaching and you're not allowed to ignore it any more than three marshals posts. But again, it's just one of those little aids for safety that you know, as you're driving in, let's say let's say the Dacia Logan at the back, which is obviously a different pace car to a GT3 car, if you see that car coming around and it's got a blue light effectively flashing in the windscreen, you're not about to be arrested or breath tested. It just means it's a far, far, far quicker car and you'd be advised to stick to your racing line and let them get round you, which is one of the things that you, you always want as a driver in those quick cars. It's, you actually want the car in front to stay where they are. It is always the faster drivers and cars' responsibility to get around the slower car. The worst thing they can do is change speed and direction, and that just that causes all sorts of problems. Stay where you are. Oh, they are absolutely together, and Chris Haaser is with them. It's Backler for Fulton, Stippler and Haaser for Sheriff Sport Phoenix. And they are in fifth, sixth and seventh at the moment with all the cars in front of them yet to make their last pit stop. Now, there's some big gaps between them and particularly um, the 44 fault in the Sven Muller car. So this is not over. This is not over yet by any stretch of the imagination as we've got a beautiful sunset over on the mountains and hillsides to the west of the Nürburgring. And this one has yet to play out. Uh, Backler, Stippler and Haaser cannot afford to hold each other up. Backler would be very happy to hold them up because he could help his teammate Sven Müller win this race. Just 38 minutes to go. As you say, John, though, just absolutely not over yet. And we, we saw it, didn't we, only last week that, uh, that Van Tour win by, was it the closest finish in NLS history? 0.42 of a second, was it? 0.041. 0.041. Okay, my apologies. Yeah, exactly. No, no, yes. 0.041. <laughs> yes, yeah. sorry, yes. 41 hundredths uh, of a second. Um, whilst we're waiting for these guys to come round and Muller to pit at the end of this uh, lap, uh, Muller, Guven, I think Olsen, will pit as well, the top three. Uh, Lucas R should pit as well, as we've got the uh, number seven in the pit lane at the moment, which is the Conrad Motorsport Lamborghini Huracan in the Conrad, the famous Conrad colours. It's the Sufi Vermeulen and Paul driven car. And that looks like it's ready to go. That's a very early version of the Huracan. Johnny and I were looking at the homologations and working out how that car, the original car fell out of homologation in the back end of last year. And that is definitely not an Evo 2. So, interesting. So ready to go there. Code 60 on the Donninger Hoa. This is very interesting. Now, who does this help? Well, it'll depend how quickly it is taken away. Muller is in that area now, coming to the pit lane. If it goes whilst he is in the pit lane and the chasing cars come through, Backler is the first of the cars that have stopped. It's that car, the 33, Klaus Backler driven machine for Falcon Porsche is through the carousel, the Caracciola carousel. So a good halfway round at the moment. Dennis Marshall, when he handed over to Chris Haase, said, a pleasant drive into the night. I was a bit unlucky with traffic in the first few laps, but the Porsche, uh, the Porsche in particular looks very fast. We still need to improve our car a bit. So I'm not giving too much away there. Driver's never happy, a... eh? No, never, mate. <laughs> could be 20 seconds ahead. Yeah, and they won't be 21 Moving seconds ahead. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, still haven't had fastest lap yet. Yeah. Can I go for fastest? Right, stand by. Waiting 
And here is the leader in the pits. The leader is in the pits now. So how quickly will they turn this number 44 car around? The 33 coming back towards us now. And that is the leader of the cars that have stopped. So, who that has got in? That, is that Sven Muller got out? Is it Raganger that's got in? Can't say the helmet. If, if it's a red and white helmet, I think that's Raginger. Because that would be the Austrian Aust colours, wouldn't it? Yeah. Austrian colours, yes, correct. Um, extraordinary. This is going to be tight. Sven Muller out. I think that is Raginger getting in. I think those are the only two. Oh, no, Heinemann's driven that car as well. So is that Heinemann's helmet? Um, I don't think there was any need for all four drivers to drive it. I uh, can't remember seeing Nico um, for that. Here we go. Here we go. The 33 Falcon is stuck in the Code 60. There's a lot of traffic and a lot of carnage up there. There's a Porsche off to driver's right. So this is going to even itself out. Heinemann it was, it was yep. Heinemann's helmet and he's out and he's retained the lead. The 44 car then for Fulton by dint of going two laps further than Frank Stippler has got the lead and I think by dint of going one lap further the Klaus back the 33 car is going to have second. Yes he is. They're, only, they're not even up to the tourist fire and entrance and the Bilstein Bridge. This is huge. This is going to be a huge lead for Tim Heinemann. This is over a minute and this all comes down to them getting that longer run, Peter, and going two laps further into the race. Well, it's played out a bit. It's rolling the dice early on, isn't it? So as you said, John, quite a few teams elect to go for a shorter first run. Um, and just see how that pans out. It, it, it's a gamble going for that longer run to start with, and it can it can work against you, but it hasn't in this case. As you say, we're going to have, um, yeah, 53 seconds at the moment. So eight laps for Muller, eight laps for Heinemann, eight laps for Muller. Um, we stand by. Where did they... So where did they win? That, that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. 27 laps predicted, so with 33 minutes to go. I think uh, 37 is 20, uh, 38 is 24. I, I think there might be one more than that. So the better have got the fuel calculations right. This is what happened last weekend. The car that was leading, coming to the line, had to slow down because they did not have fuel to do the extra lap. And so they had to let time elapse. And in doing so, the Porsche in second place, Florence Van Tor on board, who did have enough lap fuel for the extra lap, made up 20 seconds over the space of a couple of laps. Uh, talked to him on... Tuesday and he didn't know that he'd won it until the team went wild in his ear as they crossed the line <laughs> they were telling him to push and he was thinking why am I going to push I'm never going to catch him and then they started giving me the gap and it was coming down and even going on the last lap he wasn't sure and he asked the team do you want me to push do you want me to push and they went yeah 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 he can't do it and we don't think he can do it in the lap you've got to push you've got to push you've got to push so he did and fortune favoured the brave. Could have thrown it off, you know, could have happened. And that, that's, that's always a problem, isn't it? The, the, the risk-reward ratio of, you know, you, we forget that these drivers are, are driving pretty hard at the best of times around here. You know, we, we, we talk about strategy in this and we just casually say, oh, the team say push. Well, you, you're already driving it, you know, it takes a lot to, I saw that, yes. Um, uh, but, you know, you, you're told to push, you're thinking, why should I? Why, why am I going to risk it at this point when they're so far ahead? But it's the intel you've just said there, John, where the team tell them what the gap is and then say, 
we don't think it's got enough fuel, that's that's a sniff to a driver of, oh, right, I need so, to push them. So the exclamation there was for Frank Stippler, who was battling with Klaus Backler for third place, um, which is a genuine third place now. So by the way, not only did Tim Heinemann get out without losing the place, but I Chan Guven got out without losing second for Grello. Some time ago, I seem to remember we said, never count out the Manti. And that car's right in the mix there. Stippler had to, I think he may have locked up actually, because he was so close to the back of the car, he picked one way and the car moved. Backler, as Backler went one way, the car moved and blocked Stippler. And if he didn't lock up, he must have been very close. And if he didn't hit the back of the car in front of him, uh, in fact, I know he didn't hit the back of the car in front of him because he's still got all his headlights. Um, and if he'd hit him at all, it, that would have gone. But now it is the Porsche that is held up in Adenar Forest and a much better exit from Stippler as they gently climb up the hill, the two left-handers coming up. You don't have to worry about the apex for the first one so much. The second one's way more important. Let the hill slow you down a little bit. Get on the brakes over the top of the brow, head down towards Callenhardt. That long right-hander, heavy braking downhill. Get the car tucked in. Now let the car run, short shift, short shift. Set the car up and get it settled for Vipama. Now there's been code 60 down here for such a long part of the race. Right, right and right. The big right. Yes, it's clear now. Where the BMW went over early on, now diving down to the bridge at Adana at Breitscheid, lowest part of the circuit here. Across the bridge. Stippler's got it fully lit here. Doesn't use quite as much road as they head towards that critical uphill right-hander. Such a patient corner at Bergwerk as well. Late Apex. Porsche didn't get anywhere near the Apex, but it doesn't matter. It's about taking the pace up the hill. Three left-handers. The first two barely corners. You don't, again, you don't have to get to the apex, but the third one you've got to absolutely nail because it tightens and there's no runoff on the right-hand side. They're climbing up towards Mood Curve now. That is not over. And we've still got the sharp end of half an hour to go. Marvellous. Yeah, I just noticed that there was a few minutes ago, there was a number 33, the um, the second of the two Falcon Porsches in third place with House, House Black with the wheel. That was uh, under investigation for the clock. The course that's just come up with, uh, well, the uh, race director that's come up with no further action. Uh, so I don't know what was, what was going on there. I just spotted that one. I, I kept quiet. It's there. Um, uh, there was a great one earlier for number 35, which, of course, is the um, uh, Welkenhorst Aston. Uh, which yep. uh, said, please come to the clock of the course with video described in email. I'd love to have read that email. Uh, oh, that was the, that yeah. was the accident. Correct, causing, exactly. Uh, uh, the accident, yeah. yeah. Uh, and what I, what I do like is then, it's a little bit later, it just said, um, uh, no further action, but there, there was a lovely phrase for it, which I now can't see on the... That's right. Uh, it's done, stroke, no longer necessary. Yeah. Ah, yeah, but they did get a 127 yeah, yeah. penalty for... for um, for avoidable contact. A big puff of smoke or dust being thrown up as the Glickenhaus heads out towards the Vidal chicane and out onto the North Loop, just diving down the hill on the Grand Prix track at the moment. Um, Luca Ludwig has been installed in the Frigatelli Ferrari. He's got 23 seconds to make up on Chris Harzer if he's going to get in the top five. For the car that wears, proudly wears the number one. From its win here last year, the Ravenol ADAC 24 hours of the Nürburgring. There's nothing in it at the moment. A minute between first and second, not even that, 50 seconds, let's call it. Then a bit of a gap between Heinemann, Guven and Bachler in that titanic struggle for the final place on the podium between Bachler and Stippler for 
Falcon and Shearer Sport. Then the second of the Shearer Sport car, Chris Haas are back in that one and charging. They're all trading tenths at the moment. Oh, here we have an English interview. Let's have a listen. Uh, in case you hadn't worked that out, that was Coleman Ledegar from the Glicken House. Talked to Patrick Simon down in the pit lane. Just under uh, 24 minutes to go here. And it's 53 and a half seconds between Tim Heineman and Ayachan Guven for the lead. Falcon versus Michelin versus Falcon in third place with Klaus Backler just under three seconds ahead of the first non-Porsche. Audis in fourth and fifth position for Shara Sport, both of them 16th and 15th. Stippler from Haza. They're separated by a dozen seconds and then there's 25 seconds back to Luca Ludwig in the Fricatelli Ferrari. Number one car then makes up the top six. Uh, very quickly, whilst this is playing out. Let's quickly run through the class leaders. Uh, Glickenhaus lead SPX in 18th. Cup 2, K. Kramer Racing. It's back to the 121 again now. Just outside the top 20, by the way. Di Martino versus Muller from uh, Molly Krantz in third for Muller Motorsport. So K. Kramer, Black Falcon, Team 48, and Muller Motorsport. Then Avia in fourth. Uh, Mulder Motorsport in fifth and sixth. So three Mulder cars in the top six in Cup 2. In SP, in uh, Cup 3 rather, it's the Porsche of Avia W and S Motorsport. That's a 962. It's the GT4 Cayman. They're in 38th and 39th door Motorsport uh, with the 169 SP8T leader. Uh, where did I say that was? 38th. So that is the GT, effectively the GT4 leader, is it not? Uh, oh no, that's the that's the the uh, advantage. Yeah, in uh, in GT4, correct. And where's the next bar? Jimmy Broadbent's finishing off the team Bilstein, Bill Stein by the Black Falcon. BMW run, they're in second place at the moment in that category in the number 150. 
Next up in the class, ladies and 42nd, is the leading TCR, as it has been throughout the whole race. The Hyundai number 830, SP11 is the KTM, uh, which Fabian uh, Vettel has now given over to his teammate. And that's 43rd. Toyota is with Ring Racing, SP10. Uh, that number 170 uh, leads. Uh, in 45th position overall, SP40 is the Subaru, number 88, and uh, 49th position, Max Cruiser Racing, I think has led the AT class pretty much all the way through. It's been the 10 or the triple three, hasn't it? Uh, 65th position. The Plus Line Racing Team in SP7 leads uh, that class in 67th. In 70th, it's the first of the uh, abundantly multiple Adrenaline Motorsport class leaders. The 650 leads the 240i class, two places behind in 72nd. The 500 leads the VT2 rear wheel drive. Uh, then another four places further back, their 396 leads V6. And the triple four leads V5. All four of those Adrenaline Motorsport team in Hatton Wheels. SP6 is Hoffa Racing's 207 in 86th position in 88th. The VT2 front wheel drive leader is Team Mets Motorsport, which seems to have been there for pretty much all the race, the 491 car. The V4 is the 702. That's their leader. They've been there pretty much all the way uh, through the race as well. That 702 car, I don't think, has been headed that 325i BMW. Uh, Hoffer Racing have their BMW 885 leading uh, the BMW class, the small BMW class, which is the position 1105. And the Dacia continues to run. Kreiser back in, start the car, will finish the car. 115th position for the Saul SP3T car. However, you know, you can joke, you can have a laugh, you can point a finger but they've finished in front of nearly 20 cars. Now, some of those haven't finished, some of them have had problems, but to finish first, first you have to finish, and they have. So, well done for them. So, meantime, at the front of the field of Peter. Where's your money, Peter? It's a, it's a difficult one. There's still, we've got eight, we've just had 18 minutes to go, haven't we? It's, um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a Porsche podium at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, um, only just. With, only, uh, exactly, Schindler I was going right to say only just. Tractor. Did he notice the times by the fastest laps for the second and third place cars are identical? 816.971. Um, yeah. Quite extraordinary. Um, they've, only, they've all done three pit stops. Um, it, it, I, I think it's anyway, I'm, I'm not a betting man, you see. So, um, I'll bet other people's money. <laughs> I, I, th there's a couple of things. Somebody asked if we, we thought the. Uh, it was tyres um, that was making the difference. I don't think it is. No, I agree. Um, I think this is big tactics, possibly a little bit of, ta uh, of traffic. Um, Great strategies. Great strategies. Yeah, and, and it just happened. Where it will all, I think when we break this down, it will all be down to where people hit traffic or yellows or code 60s on their in or out lap with this slightly offset pit strategy. The two laps that Fulton had at the end certainly seemed to work in their favour. They had track position and they, and they came out absolutely perfectly. Um, I, I knew it was going to be a lead. I didn't think it was going to be that big a lead. They just about, I think they must have just about squeaked past the Donnie Her incident. Either it was yellows before it went 60 and they might have already been past it. And that's what's, that's what's given them that minute. And, and it, on such small things to, you know, races turn, quite frankly. Uh, Klaus Backler, by the way, 17 seconds in a rear and Arias from second, so he's just on a minute away from the lead, but he's only got three seconds on Stippy. Frank Stippler, um, eons of experience, millions of laps and kilometres around here. He will be pushing that car very hard indeed. Right, we're into the area of code 60. Uh, which one is that? Is that still... 
That's the dotting of her, isn't it, still? Right, this. it's the dotting of her, and the vehicles are moving away. Yeah. So the vehicles are moving away from that, so that's gone back to yellow rather than code 60, I think. Correct, absolutely right, yeah, just coming out of Schwalbenschwanz, yeah, onto the dotting of her, goes from 60 down to uh, a yellow flag, so it's just, it's the vehicles returning, isn't it? Although there's something, there's still yellows going on ahead at... Uh, it goes green at Marshall Post 197. Right. Which is just before they approach, start to approach up to Tiergarten. Correct. That's because they've got people still moving on yeah. the track, I reckon, at that point. And they've had to do some... Uh, there was a car, I think it was a Porsche, that looked quite badly damaged there. And uh, that car was being put onto a flatbed. Still yellows again this is for course vehicles but stipler now waiting for the green where is the green he's in the tear garden now he's right up the tailpipes of third place klaus backler and it's a clear run down the start finish line 15 minutes to go tim heileman has started what will be his penultimate lap Here comes Stippy, right underneath, goes to the right-hand side. That looks good. He'll have to break really late. Might be able to use one of the Milner cars ahead of him as a pick. Can he get to the inside for the first left-hander onto the Grand Prix straight? I think he can, and I think that's a new third position. Stippler, I think, has gone through on Backler. Has he? Or was that another Porsche? That's another Porsche. That was, that was a, a, a GT Cup car, I think. A Cup 2 car, my apologies. I'm, I don't think he was that close. It's still... No, it's still... Yeah, yeah. you're right. He's yeah. still showing his three, yes. three seconds back. My yeah. apologies. Uh, Axel Randolph, the team boss from Share of Phoenix, says, I think you can see today that we couldn't keep up with the Porsches. We're at the front and drove a good race. The Porsches are better in terms of speed. Uh, that is probably for the BOP committee that he's saying that, um, I think. So apologies for getting overly excited about what I thought was third position. It was punched up on our main screen. Stippy is just a, the epitome of calm behind the steering wheel. And I often think, Peter, that you know all arms and elbows looks great behind the wheel, but you just... Nah. You know, for, for long, you're just wasting energy, aren't you? Ex exactly, and it's it's it's, huge. it's not very efficient usually. Um, and it's it, it, we've often said we've seen it through the ages of different different levels of racing. It's those that make it look easy that that are, you know doing the nice in the comment. You know, Formula One. Look at look at the Alan Prosts. You know, the professor. He got that name for a reason because it didn't look like he was trying very hard, but boy, was it was successful and efficient. And I think Stippler's of, of that ilk. Yeah, and. You know, Sterling Moss in particular, yeah. he, he deliberately tried to psych people out by looking like he wasn't trying. <laughs> uh, even if he was completely sideways, he would be very relaxed behind the wheel. Guy Smith is another one who is very relaxed behind the wheel. Stippy having to deal with another of the cup cars. They are showing green flags everywhere other than in Schwalbenschwanz, the swallow's tail. And... So that's a long way around. The lead has gone up a couple of seconds, and that happened in sector two. But uh, Ai Guvin lost a couple of seconds to Tim Heinemann. And he's grabbed tenths back, but nothing like that. Klaus Backler's pushing on here. Took time out of the leader and the second place driver. Now, the Rover BMW involved in an incident earlier on and now back in the pits. This was the number 98 car, you'll remember. And, and this is going to be in English as well, so let's have a listen. Exactly, it's part of the north line, but we know you need to be a 
Max Marta, um, with a little, little bit of bobby work damage on the right front of that number 98 Rover BMW. And now purely a single yellow flag at Bergwerk. The rest of the track is clear. And two seconds taken, two seconds and more taken out the leader there by Ayachan Guven. It will be the last lap the next time around. Backler is closing in on Guven. That's why Guven's having to hustle a little bit. It's down to 13 seconds. It was over 15. Stippler holding it about 3.8 seconds behind a step on the podium at the moment. 17 seconds ahead of his teammate, Chris Harzer in the 15 share of sport. Phoenix car. Then Luca Ludwig, he's only another 19 seconds further back and he's fairly pushing on as well. It's just about where you hit traffic. Giving up two seconds in a zone here, Peter, is, you know, it's not unusual to see that, um, but it's way better to give up that time getting stuck behind someone than ending up in the wall. What, what exactly so, and that's and that's where the experience you talked about, Frank Schnipler, we've got to remember that Schnipler's coming up to, to, to 50 years age. He's, he's done a lot of this, and he's still, still at the top of his game. The age is irrelevant. What it does suggest is, amount of experience that he's done and got under his belt and he, he's seen it all before and it's it's exactly as you just just said john you know, don't don't throw it all away for you know a moment of matters Ma maxime martin just said there that you know it, it's not ideal what happened you know he was behind another car he chose to go one side and the car came back and that's it, it, it it's the wrong side and it's you think the amount of times that we don't see that happen it's amazing so it's good, law of averages, it's going to happen sometimes, isn't it? I'm not suggesting for one minute the other guy did anything wrong, so don't get me, don't get me wrong on no, that. No, no, just, no. It, just... it was the bonk BMW. Yeah, well, the, well, the well there you go, reigning champions time and time again. So of all, yeah. they're not going to do that, are they? So it's just, it's the look of the draw. It happens sometimes, and, you know, as, um, as, as uh, Patrick Peter said, it's not, it's one of the things you can't help it. Frustrating, though. Oh, very. Uh... And you do feel terrible when you've got to go back to the team. It's not. It's not a lull moment. Put it that way. Uh, no. Not to have ever been there, of course. But oh, everybody's been there. <laughs> yeah. Somebody trying once said. Had, you... Somebody once said to me, that "It's very rare. I've, I've I've crashed a race car twice in my life. Um, both times I did a pretty good. Well, no, actually, the first time I didn't." Uh, hardly did any damage the second time I did a bit more damage um, and in a race uh, I've never lost um, so uh, you know, but somebody says said to me when I apologized about I was doing a test it was when I uh, when I shouldn't have the master mx5 um, and it was it was my stupid fault because I got overconfident on tyres that I should have pitted two or three laps before on. But I was having too much fun. And, you know, literally last five minutes of the day. And uh, went off at the top of the hill at Road Atlanta and uh, did the right-hand side of the car, looped it to the right-hand side, did the right-hand side of the car. And somebody said, don't worry, you never expect a race. You put a car out on a racetrack, you, you always have to be ready for the fact, to have the expectation that it will come back bent or broken or in pieces or all of the above. That, yeah. Because that is the nature of what happens on a racetrack. Prepare for the and worst. It didn't make me feel best. any better, in fairness. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, no, but it's not. Yeah, but you, you say you, you've got to, it, it's it's the nature of the game, isn't it? You know, and it's equally if you if you're not trying or, or whatever, then these things aren't going to happen. It's it's, uh, it's 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 unfortunate as long as people aren't hurt. But you know, cars can be repaired. But yeah. um, it's, uh, it's it's not ideal. But it's you, uh, from a driving point of view, you you a feel bad damaging the vehicle as you were just describing there, 
John, but also then if it's it's in position or race or whatever, you, you feel bad for a team. And that, that's one of the things I love about endurance racing. Is it's such a team effort. It's not so singular. Um, amongst your drivers, your team, the whole setting that car up, as we talked about earlier, to all be able to drive the car to within a certain window. And it's, it's such a team effort. So when it does go wrong, it, it feels quadruply more irking that you've let everybody else down. Yeah, totally. Totally agree. Six minutes to go. Our leader, Tim Heineman, has started what will be his last lap, I reckon. We are on lap 26. We will finish on lap 27. My computer prediction was spot on. I thought it was going to be a lap out, if I'm honest. The blue flashing light of the number 44 Falcon, easily seen in the top right-hand side of the windscreen of that car, i.e. opposite the driver, so it doesn't the so it doesn't uh, disturb the driver. David Edwards racing tweets at RSL underscore studio, hashtag RSL underscore N24. You go faster not crashing than by going faster and crashing. That's a very, very, um, that's going into my book as well. Excellent. Very good. Um, it's about, especially as well, as well, for people who don't drive a lot, like me, um, when I get the opportunity to race, I take it with both hands, of course I do. But you've got to approach it and be sensible. You are not going to be as quick as your teammates who've driven that car all year, or the people around you who've been in that championship all year. It's not up to you to get involved in deciding a championship by trying to pull off a ridiculous manoeuvre and then trying to justify it with the most ridiculous thing of all time. If I didn't go for a gap, I wouldn't be a racing driver. That's a nonsense. That is an absolute nonsense thing. Sorry, it winds me up. Um, however, you want to go out and have fun and make sure you're not a danger. Yeah, absolutely right. But there's no point in doing it. We, this comes back to consistency. We talked about this earlier, weren't we, Peter? Um, it, do a good lap, then make a mistake. Do a good lap, make two mistakes. You know, that's that's no point. You'd be much better backing it off 5% and doing finding a, a, a pace that you can do comfortably you'll take less out of the car less out the tires you might even be able to do a lap or a couple of laps more on your fuel allowance um, you might even be able to double stint a set of tires which will ultimately save you time etc 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 and and that's what it's about not crashing is a good thing <laughs> but it, it is it, that, that's what that's what team principles uh, and all the team want is when when they're up there on on the on the perch on the on the pit wall that you almost certainly in this this level of our, our sphere of racing sports car racing um, endurance stuff you, you you almost want to forget about your driver on track as in that phrase of a safe pair of hands that yeah, they know good. they'll they'll do it obviously they've got to have a certain amount of pace but there's a, there's only going to be a few you know a few people that ride to the top, you know, the, the Nicky teams, Pittard, Stiplers, etc. And I'm, I'm counting, not mentioning a lot of people there unfairly, but of those people, you know, the Kevin Estras, etc., that are exceptional all the time. There's a reason why they're talented. There's a reason why they win races and win championships. Yeah. Not everybody does, but there's nothing wrong with being. And in fact, you're, you're a stronger team member if you can just sit there at within a percentage of the pace, but keep the car on the on the black base between the barriers, do a job. Um, and that's what's needed. And it's it, it's not to worry, not let your ego get in the way. Yeah. Is it that Nick Tandy says to everybody, including his son Felix now, mm. who's already won a race in his nascent karting career. Don't. don't. Uh, no, he has. I, I know, he has. I know. He won his second ever race. He was on the podium in his first race, won his second ever race. Um, he always says, uh, black bit grippy, green bit slippy. Yeah. And, you know, uh, very good. Uh, news of a uh, penalty coming in here, and it's significant uh, in terms of the class position, at least. This is the 171 Toyota tyres with ring. Uh, the Toyota Supra GT4, it's running second in SP10, and they're going to get um, a 50-5-0 second penalty for ignoring flag signals 
So where's the next car back? That's the Schmickler Porsche. Uh, they're more than 50 back, but it's gonna, it's gonna take a dent out of that. And also, uh, pit lane speeding, two of these, 9, 950. Uh, the number 950 Cayman GT4 Club Sport, 30 seconds, time replacement penalty, so that'll go on after the race. Uh, 30 seconds for the 119 Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car, uh, and 45 seconds for another GT3 Cup car, so these are all Cup 2 cars, uh, for ignoring a code 60, so that's 45 there. So let's, I'm going to have a quick look at Cup 2 and see if they're it's going to do anything at the moment in Cup 2. It's Black Falcon from Mulner by about a minute. Third is the Avia car. Fourth, K. Kramer. Fifth, Mulner. Um, and ninth, Kramer, uh, uh, Mulner as well. They had to make a late pit stop there in SP80. It's the Door Motorsport number one. 6-9 Aston that is racing. I have a feeling that was the one of the cars that didn't even turn a lap this morning. Uh, the SP80 car. Listed as Frank Weischer and Sven Schadler, but it's got Oliver Sandberg behind the wheel at the moment. That leads Jimmy Broadbent is what have we got there? 13... 39, that's a minute, minute and seven, about a minute and a half uh, in arrears. But that looks like another podium for the 150 BMW. As all of a sudden we have yellow flags from Klostertal through to Steilstrecker and on the Grand Prix circuit as well. is not slowing down our leader who is on the Dottiger Hur and this is the last lap time has elapsed Tim Heinemann will bring home the win in the first of two races this weekend remember Sven Muller Nico Menzel and Martin Raginger listed in that car I think it's only been Sven and Tim who have driven two corners now as the Number 44, Falcon Porsche, will lead home a Porsche lockout of the podium. And he comes through, flashing his lights. He knows the team are up on the wall. And at just a minute after half past nine, here in the Eiffel Mountains, our first race of the weekend and the first competitive part of the Ravenel ADAC, 24 hours of the Nürburgring, goes to Falcon. Manti in second. Uh, no, no, Falcon in second. Ayachan Guven has just been passed for second place. Klaus Backner has dragged up to Guven. I said it was being caught. Where did he lose that time? He's right there and he's gone through. It's going to be a 1 2 for Falcon Motorsports. That is absolutely crazy again on the last lap it's still a one two three for porsche but it's a one two for the 44 and the 33 of falcon motorsport as klaus backler comes through drove with sven muller and julian andlau was in that car i don't think alicia piccariello was he may drive tomorrow chan guven then where did he lose the time on that last lap I was just going to say, where did Backler come from? I mean, it just, I, I didn't even see that happen. Great spot, John, but I, just, I didn't even see that happen at all. Well, there was five seconds in sector six. Uh, there was a second in sector five, five seconds in sector six. There was three seconds in sector seven. And that was it. He was on the tail end of the car then at that point. Well, sector so six is, is a short bit, and that's the that's from basically Bergwerk up to Kaschelschen. And then sector seven is uh, Kaschel Kostel onwards right through to Galkenkopf. Well, so that's where we've that made the, the ground, yeah. Th this is a provisional result. There were some yellow flags out 
around the circuit on that last lap. Share of Sport ha had a good run early on, and their two Audi, 16 and 15, come home fourth and fifth, ahead of Fricadelli, quietly moving into sixth position um, early on in the race, and, and obviously, depending on the pit stop cycles, uh, we're going up and down, but that is a genuine top six finish for Fricadelli in the number one Ferrari, the only Ferrari 296 GT3. Uh, today, Adam Christodoulou started and finished the get speed number 130. He finished in seventh. Uh, the sports line, the yeah, Abt sports line, Lamborghini Huracan, the number 27, finishes in eighth. Mick Grenier anchored the team get speed number nine, AMG home to ninth, tenth. For Charles Vets, who did a really good job for BMW team RMG, did a couple of stints from memory. 72 car is tenth. Robert Renard. Owner driver of Herbert Motorsport brought the red and white number five, the fat turbo colour car through to 11th in the end. Head of Lucas at Hour for Team Get Speeds, Mercedes number eight, the AMG car. Then the Raw Racing number 99, its team car, remember, did make the finish after that incident with the Bonk Racing BMW. Uh, no, um, no. Sorry, I'm just waiting to see things changing over. Uh, no responsibility uh, to either of the drivers involved there. It was a spin by the bunk car that couldn't be avoided by Max Martin. Uh, so 13th for hour now, actually. So that's Van der Linde and the 99 car, the 12th. 13th for Team Getsby, the 8th. Then Holzer bringing home the Dynamic GT Porsche, the 54. Then Lucas Stoltz for Mercedes in the number four. That car started right at the back, so they made up half of the field of SP9 in four hours. Team Advance, Mercedes was in 16th, 17th for Pro Sports, Aston Martin. Was that the best of the Astons? Yes, it was. Mixed day for Pro Sport, I would say, 17th for the seven. SPX winner for the fourth placed qualifying Glickenhaus SCG 004. Uh, and the 706 finishes 18th overall, ahead of Conrad Motorsports, Lamborghini Huracan in 19th. Then it was the Lion Speed Porsche, uh, Patrick Niederhauser bringing that car home in 24th, so they made up positions as well. Let's get down into the park for me and see if we can get some interviews. I think this one's going to be in German. So we'll just keep an ear on that as I keep running down. Uh, 20th uh, in class, 21st overall, Jutta Racing for Audi in the number 71. Then the Cup 2 battle, Black Falcon win it by 41 seconds from Merlin Motorsport, the 148 from the 124. Then in third, Avia with the number 120. Keir Kramer with the 121 in fourth. Mulder in fifth with their 122. Uh, and in sixth, Black Falcon. Keir Kramer Racing's 112. Next up, seventh in Cup 2. Then click the Sikarung's team uh, in the 119 in eighth. Ninth for Mulder Motorsport and tenth for Huber Motorsport. That's how they finished. The other class winners then in uh, SPAT, Door Motorsport in the 169 Aston. Uh, ahead of the 150 BMW, that's a Jimmy Broadbent car, another podium for them. Cup 3, Avia, WNS Motorsports, they were 38th with their 962. Hyundai won in a very credible 40th overall in the 830. The Toyota tyres with Ring Racing, uh, 170 car took SP10 and 43rd. SP11 was the uh, SP11 was the KTM from Doe Motorsport. That was 46th overall, 51st overall. The Subaru, the number 88, won SP14. AT Alternative Fuels in 61st position for Max Kreuzer Racing, their number 10. Plus Line Racing held on to SP7 in 64th with their number 80 car. Then the uh, Adrenaline Motorsport team, Manhattan Wheels winning cars, all in the 70s actually, 70th position for the 650 which won the 240i class, the 500 was one place further back and won the rear wheel drive VT2, and I've just realised he's speaking in English, so I should have shut up, sorry, P of course I missed that because I was too busy reading down, apologies for that. 
this is the third place car talking to now I think um, I was in the middle of the adrenaline cars um, 396 was in 74th one V6 triple four was in 79th place and one V5 that's your four adrenaline winners Hoffer racing finished 82nd and one SP6 with their 207 the front wheel drive VT2 winner was team Mertens Motorsport in the 491 V4 was the 702 uh, in 93rd, they weren't headed either. Hoffer by Bonk won the BMW class in 103rd. And 115th position was the Dacia. Still cars coming through, so important to keep an eye on what's going on down through the field. We're still waiting for the second place car in BMW 240i class. The adrenaline, that which is another adrenaline car. For actually, both of those two cars have not yet finished. So I might have been a bit previous there. Let's have a look at those two. So what a race, Peter, for and what a result for Falkland Motorsports beating the mites of the what they would say were the bigger tyre companies. Uh, that is a landmark result for Falkland Motorsports and Porsche, first and second. Well, it's just it's just dream, isn't it? And and bagging that second place, you say on the on the on the last lap. I mean, it was a, a Porsche lockout, as we said, but it was um, Manti with Grello that was in second place, and just just to be pipped on that that, that the very last little bit, uh, just just extraordinary. Um, as you say, where he made up the time there, uh, a backlot was through that you know the, the fastest bit to the circuit, out at the back the cluster shell cluster shell up to the carousel, etc., and just got that run. Uh, to down to the dotting hoa and then that draft down there and just just pulled away absolutely extraordinary but you you can't get a, a better result can you one two i mean why, why turn up tomorrow they've proven it well <laughs> they will other, of course the drivers but... to cycle through i yes, would have thought of course yes. well that's uh, exactly tim why. Heineman, yeah tim Heineman, by the way saying my first victory ever on the nord schleifer it's a special feeling now all we have to do is do it again in the 24-hour race very quickly this is part of a championship so in the fight for the NLS championship, the Hyundai number 491 and the number 650 BMW M240 are both now three Peters. They have won each of the three races in the championship. Remember, this unusually is a round of the VLN, as is tomorrow's race. So those two are perfect in their championships and remember it's an overall championship throughout all the classes so they jointly lead the classes at the moment a reminder of the top three all porsches 44 and 33 year two falcons then the manti ema car in third two audis for sherish sport phoenix 16 and 15 then the ferrari of fricadelli the Ferrari, best of the Mercs, down in seventh. Lamborghini, a quiet run to eighth position for Abt Sports Line. Get speed with two cars in the top ten. They're ninth as well for the number nine. And then the first BMW, tenth position. And nearly three minutes away from the leader on a four-hour race. That will not go down well in Munich, will it? Let's be honest about that. I think one of the things, I've, well, we've said this before with the, the BMWs, that they're either right at the front or they're just not. They don't ever seem to be, we've mentioned that. Did I mentioned seem that. to be a factor today, Peter, did they? No, exactly, exactly. They just weren't a consideration, were they? Which they don't they won't want us to hear us saying, and no, nobody's criticising them. But you know, we said about the, you know, the Porsches, they're always there or thereabouts, whether it be Manti or Falcon, in this case, one, two, and three for, for Manti. But the BMWs, it's, it's either, it's, it's sort of the, Feast or famine with them, and I can't quite work out why. Yes, uh, the rest of the results for you watching the screen, we've done all of the class winners. I'm just having a quick glance down to make sure nothing changed at the end there. Just with, on that uh, note, John, the, the Lamborghini that you said was quite the older spec one, the uh, number seven car, that is still slowly making its way through. It's only just come through... Uh, and you just got onto the dotting of Hoa now. That's that, Salman Sufi. Correct, yeah. Uh, behind that. Um, and 
Uh, at eight twenty, he's had a problem. Yeah. Oh, on yeah. that last lap, because he's he was slow, 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 and then desperately slow in a sector that should have been two and a half minutes. He was eight and a half minutes. Yeah. So, um, and I, well, I know there's yellow flags out there, but that is very slow. Let's uh, make sure he gets to the end, uh, yeah. just inside the top 20. Um, and it's, at the moment, of course, has shown a lap down. Because it was on the lead um, lap, yeah. Yeah, he, it will be on the lead lap when it finishes, but where will it drop down to? That's the question. Waiting for that car to come through. Post-race technical uh, inspections to come. Um, the 124 has been given a penalty for non-respect of the flag signals. These are all coming in right now. Um, and so there will there will be some slight changes, but not in the top positions. Uh, the best front wheel drive car in 40th position overall. And uh, that again is the 830 uh, Hyundai Elantra. Really, uh, really good. Let's see. Uh, Klaus Backler saying congratulations to the sister car. He's in the 33. We were unlucky with the Code 60 fears. We got in a lap earlier, then hit the Code 60. That took about 30 seconds, but the performance was good. In the end, we passed the Grello, uh, even though it was difficult with the traffic. So a little bit of news there. Just a quick word about tomorrow, because we have another four-hour race. But uh, before that, make sure you set your alarms because we are going to be doing the top qualifying, as it is called. And that is 10.30 Central uh, European Summertime, 9.30 in the UK. That will take about an hour. Then we'll have an hour's break and be back for the four-hour race which is at, I think, Green Flag is one o'clock in the afternoon, isn't it? So, yeah, that's about right. Um, so the usual build-up, but remember, that's quick start in the morning, half nine in the UK, half ten Central European summertime um, for the top qualifying, where we line up the cars and send them off at intervals. Got the podium ceremonies to come. It was not a day to be driving VW Scirocco's. They both had problems, but in the darkness here with the uh, night closing in, uh, some final thoughts from... Oh, well, in fact, we don't even have time for that because it sounds like Patrick Simon is about to do the podium celebration. So let's hand over uh, to the formalities. Und freuen uns auf die ersten drei im Gesamt. Los geht's mit den Drittplatzierten für Mantai EMA, Ayacan Güven und Thomas Preining. Das sind die Drittplatzierten nach der Distanz von vier Stunden und Teil Nummer eins. Wir machen weiter mit Platz Nummer 2 für Falken Motorsport, Julia Andlauer und Klaus Bachler. Und Sieg beim ADAC 24 Stunden Nürburgring Qualifiers ebenfalls für das Team von Falken Motorsport. Der Doppelsieg. Und er geht an Sven Müller und Tim Heinemann. Und zu Ehren der Gesamtsieger die Hymne der Bundesrepublik Deutschland.
Trinkin, Andrea Schmitz, Adia C. Norka, die Vorstandsvorsitzende mit den Trophäen für unsere Platzierten. Und da starten wir mit den Drittplatzierten, da starten wir mit den Mantai ema piloten Und das sind Ayatjan Güven und Thomas Breining, die Drittplatzierten mit dem Porsche 911 GT3. Ayatjan, easy, you get a second trophy. Ja, das ist auch noch für den dritten, genau. Sehr schön. Heute bekommt jeder einen Pokal. <lacht> Platz 2 und das falken Auto mit der 33. Julian Blauer und Klaus Bachler, die Trophäe mit der 2. Der dreifach Sieg aus dem Hause Porsche, den macht Falke Motorsport komplett mit den Gesamtsiegern Sven Müller und Tim Heinemann. Die Trophäe. für das Foto. Verabschieden werden wir uns gleich. Und dann gibt es die Champagnerdusche für die erfolgreichen Piloten. Sagen wir Danke für Teil 1 heute und freuen uns auf morgen. Ein sichtlich begrüßender Eiertschan, die Rennen kommt vorbeigelaufen. Schön, dass Sie mit uns waren an diesem ersten Renntag. Und dann freuen wir uns auf morgen 10.30 Uhr geht es wieder los hier in der grünen Hölle mit dem ADAC 24 Stunden Qualifiers. Habt einen schönen Abend. Dankeschön.
Nürburgring Nordschleife, die längste Rennstrecke der Welt. Eins der Top-Rennen, was man in seinem Leben einmal gefahren haben muss. Das 24-Stunden-Rennen ist für mich persönlich das härteste und auch schwierigste Rennen der Welt. Die größte Sportveranstaltung Deutschlands. Die Hütte ist brechend voll. Das wird eine ganz große Party. Die Ampel ist grün. Es geht los. Es geht rein in die grüne Hölle. Motorsport vom Allerfeinsten. Und ich glaube, der, der wird sich jetzt entwickeln. In jeder Phase des Rennens geht es um jede Sekunde, um jedes Detail. Diese Bilder immer wieder faszinieren oder verliert das Auto. Achtung, der nächste Einschlag. Mann, oh Mann, oh Mann, oh Mann. Lecco mio. Ich zuck da immer zusammen. Also ich habe ja im Motorsport schon alles erlebt. Aber das habe ich ja noch nie erlebt. Und hier, das sind die Bilder, auf die wir gewartet haben. Das ist der absolute Hammer. Also ganz im Ernst, die Fans auf der Nürburgring Nordschleife sind ganz, ganz, ganz besonders. Ja. 200 Blutdruck würde ich sagen, ne? aber ansonsten geht es mir gut. Was für ein Moment hier in der Boxengasse, alle liegen sich in den Armen, es wird gefeiert. Jeder, der bis jetzt rausgekommen ist, war begeistert und spricht davon, was er hier Tolles bislang erlebt.